The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, sir! Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. Nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat the McAfee Show doing? starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Hello, beautiful people. It is Championship Overreaction Monday, January 31st, 2022. This sports show with overreactions begins now. Yeah! Thank you for watching at youtube.com forward slash the Pat McAfee Show. So much magic to happen today because we have Now two teams going to SoFi Stadium in two weeks to battle it out to go down in history as Super Bowl champions. Will it be the Cincinnati Bengals representing the AFC after beating Don the Kansas City Chiefs in Kansas City with a kicker that doesn't seem to know how to miss in the postseason? 12 for 12. Joey B, by the way, a fucking guy. Yeah. Or will it be the Los Angeles Rams, who have gone all in this year business-wise, sacrificing future first-round picks like they're absolute nothing? Give us Matthew fucking Stafford. Give us Vaughn Miller. Give us Odell Beckham Jr. And all of those guys and more are making plays to propel the Los Angeles Rams to be in the Super Bowl in their home stadium against the Cincinnati Bengals squad that is coming in there ready to fight. Hell yeah. I'm excited for everything. I can't wait to chat about the games that were yesterday. What the hell happened in the second half to the Kansas City Chiefs offense? Was that because of the Cincinnati Bengals defense? And what happened to the this Niners team that we thought for sure was going to go on to go on to have a win. Well, there was an interception that almost took place late. Mm. That thing was dropped. I think every person that knows football immediately said, oh, 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 that was your chance. That was your chance. The football gods were on the Niners side throughout the entire game, whether it was grit plays or kicks or penalties or fourth downs. It felt like the football gods were on the Niners side. They dropped that pick. No, no, can't have it. Here we go. Odell Beckham Jr. Boom, boom, boom. Los Angeles gets a win. What an electrifying Sunday. We can't thank you enough for overreacting with us here today. Can't wait to chat with you on the five hour energy phone line 1833 for McAfee and can't wait to get through the hashtag PMS I don't want to overreact but, but tweets that we made a bird call for this morning on the beautiful Twitter we have incredible guests today Darius Butler Ian Rappaport and will somebody text Shregs to see if he wants to stop by Ooh. today to chit chat about his best friend and Podcast co-host Sean McVay back in the Super Bowl at the young age of 36, getting a team all the way back. The boys are here at Ty Schmidt, at Boston Connor, at Tone Diggs. We had two Super Boosts oh, hit oh, yesterday. Wow, we yeah. went back to back. Back to back. That was fucking awesome. Hit him for like $16 million yesterday with our Super <laughs> Boost. It felt like, now this is going to sound arrogant, and I don't want to ever sound that way, but it felt like when I logged in to FanDuel to pick out what both parlays were going to be, the bets were just falling right in front of my face. I would scroll, I would see something, boom, that's definitely going to happen. You're telling me Debo Samuel to score a touchdown? What? Cooper <laughs> Cup to score a touchdown? <laughs> what? And Matthew Stafford to throw for 250 is plus 500? Give me that, please. Yeah. You're telling me Travis Kelsey to score a touchdown? What? Jamar Chase to score what? a touchdown? What? Tyreek Hill to record 50 yards? What? And then Joe Burrow to throw for exactly <laughs> 250 <laughs> yards is plus 600 in this Super Bowl? Fucking give me that. Cash we it. hit plus 600, plus 500 yesterday in the Super Boost. And although the week before we won 0 for 2, yesterday we won 2 and 0. Who's harder than us? Nobody. And we're going in the Super Bowl to continue to rake this mm-hmm. goddamn money. It's better to be hot late than to not be hot at all. I'm excited about what we did yesterday at Tone Diggs. You also were accurate in your predictions on who's going to win, who's going to cover, how things are going to go. What was the weekend like gambling wise? And what was some surprises that you seen and learned yesterday? Yeah, first off, hats off to you because Thank plus you. 600 is a 14% chance to win a bet. Well, it was boost. It was actually plus something lower, but I still, yeah, yeah, still, still had pretty I good. Mean, count. I mean, that's pretty a, good. for you to hit two of those is absolutely absurd. Thank you. I will take my uh, 
Thank you. I thought it was. Thank you. There were some tough beats this year on these super booths. Yeah. Very. There were some tough goes, some tough downfalls, a lot of hope, and oh shit, we're close, and then bang, we're down. And then championship Sunday for two of those to hit. Yeah. Thank you. I, I needed it. I think it was something that the entire season called upon, really, in my eyes, for me uh, personally. But the only thing that's good is we took them for $16 million. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. 16, 15.8 something, 15.9, whatever the case, let's round it up. We took them for $16 million yesterday. And if I know anything about anything, heaters don't just stop. No, 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 no. What's the next game? Super Bowl. That's good news. Wow. Because we're about to hit him for big. And wait till yeah. this coin toss thing. I'm oh, definitely getting that right. Oh, yeah. Definitely getting that right. Oh, yeah. I mean, what are we even talking about? I'm all the way back out here. Yeah, but you thank gotta, you. You got to shout out T. Higgins for getting that extra yard because in the past he would have got one yard short. That that was the story of this year. Not, not for him, but for our boosts and parlays. Yes, 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 yes. Correct. And then that was huge. So Fangle got, Fangle got taken there. And then some fucking guy put $20 and won 570000 on the correct score this weekend at Fandle. Hit him back to back. Yeah. And so I don't know damn. if we've gone through the entire hashtag PMS Feel Good Friday scores. I'd assume somebody would have guessed these, this score. Mm -hmm. But somebody actually put the bet in on Fandle yeah. for the two exactas. This guy went exacta, exacta. Yeah, 500 and some thousand dollars. He won off a $20 bet. Damn. Jeez. Shout out to that dude winning yeah. Fandle. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Great bet. All right, let's start talking about these games a little bit because there was a lot that had happened yesterday. It appeared as if everybody on earth, including writers, reporters, family members of team uh, players, right. everybody thought the Chiefs was winning that one. 18-point mm -hmm. lead at one point. Halftime celebrations were high. Applebee songs were being sung. <laughs> yeah. Everything was popping off. The CBS crew at their halftime show couldn't hear a goddamn word any of them saying because how happy the Chiefs' kingdom was. How happy Kansas City was. They're up. They got Patty Mahomes. It's the Bengals take a fucking hike, Bengals. I actually took Cincinnati Bengals plus seven and a half. Felt very good about it. Then I was watching the first half. I think like a lot of people, and uh, of course, this is what the Chiefs do. When the Chiefs is vibing, the Chiefs is tough to stop. And then whatever the Bengals did at halftime, I don't know what they drank, what they did, what they said, who hugged what, and who decided when. They came out and flipped the script on that thing completely. Patrick Mahomes' QBR was like 100 and something in the first half, zero in the second half. Yeah. That's lower than what Carson Wentz had against the Jacksonville Jaguars in the last week of the season. Yeah. Zero QBR at the end. Yeah, NFL on CBS tweeted, Patrick Mahomes QB rating by the half, 149.9 in the first half. Awesome. Holy shit, this yeah. is the Chiefs. This is exactly what we saw this Chiefs offense look like against the Bills defense last week. They've continued it right into this week. This is going to be a problem for everybody. Second half, zero. Cincinnati Bengals somehow took out the fire extinguisher. <laughs> Blew that thing down mm -hmm. and shut off the entire fire that was the Chiefs' offense. Congrats to that Cincinnati Bengals team for doing that. Now the whole conversation is going to revolve around what the fuck happened to Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. That wasn't like, that pick. Obviously, incredible play. I mean, Bates is a mm. hey, Bates is a menace. Yeah, dude. very good. He is a hell of a ball player. I, I did not know he existed before a few weeks ago. That's on me. I have a football show. I talk about the NFL. <laughs> I should at least talk about that guy. It looked like he did that on purpose. The little oh, yeah. ball tap, but then the fumble by Patrick Mahomes on third down to lose like 35 yards for a game-tying field goal back there. He didn't look anything like what we had seen from him in his greatest moments, what we had seen from him in past AFC Championship games, in which I think he's 2-1 and one or 3-1. and one, Three and one, I think. Nah. Two and two now because he lost to Brady and then yesterday. So he's two. Mm -hmm. He was two and one, but the Brady lost. He didn't get to go back on the field for right. the no. overtime. Right. So he. Everybody's just assuming he would have went out there and had a gr another great drive and had a great game. He had always done well in these biggest games, mm -hmm. and then the second half just complete fall apart. Let's assume it's the entire offense. Let's do that whole thing and not just blame it completely on him, but maybe it was. Jackson and Brittany. Absolutely. It's possible. I mean, it's I mean, certainly possible. I mean, it's certainly yeah. possible. I don't wanna I don't wanna spotlight, gaslight, anything <laughs> like that, but I mean, I, th it's going to be a long off season for those two. I think. I, I think yeah. there's going to be some personal growth this off season. A lot of soul search. I think there is. Hopefully. I think there's going to be some personal growth this off season. And this is not just about Patrick losing in the AFC Championship. There's only four teams left, right? Mm -hmm. They should be pumped that they even made it to the AFC Championship. That feeling will not happen until they retire. By the way, they, like next week, they're not happy they made it to the AFC Championship. Nobody's openly allowed to be happy you made it to the AFC Championship. Anyways, it's just one of those things where if you don't make it to the Super Bowl, you stink. Especially when that team 
is littered with Ferraris and it's like built to go to the Super Bowl. But I think there's a lot of personal growth that happens after losing and, you know, not a, not attaining whatever everybody else is expecting and not reaching the goals that you have in front of you that you could have definitely got. And then you start thinking about what could you change? How can we change? What do we do? I wonder if we will see the same tag team duo off the field around the Mahomes family next season as we saw this season. I would take a strong guess at no. Mm. Just, just a strong guess at no. I might be wrong. There are some people in this studio that are Team Brittany, and this is sure. not one of those things, but they've been thrusted into the spotlight as well at a young age, right? Oh, Off yeah. the field, mm -hmm. Patrick Mahomes. Mm -hmm. Then there's videos obviously surfacing from yesterday from the tag team of oh, insufferability yeah. yep. over there. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is just a lot of stuff, but I think next season we'll see a very different group. But I am bummed for the Chiefs who had a hell of a run, hell of a team, and uh, looked like they were going to be able to go. But what a fucking play by the Bengals defense turned around. And Joey Burrow. Oh, oh man. This guy. Everybody's talking Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, which I appreciate and respect, and I was a part of the conversation. I even asked Josh Allen, like, hey, when you and Patrick Mahomes look at each other and chat with each other, do you know that you guys are potentially the next Tom Brady, Peyton Manning in the AFC? You two are going to see each other. You two are going to be running into each other probably the next 10 years. I wonder if Joey Burrow heard all of that and was like, what the fuck is all this conversation about? Now, he's basically at the end of his rookie year. Now, everybody's going to say he's not a rookie, he's not a rookie. He got hurt last year, and we missed a large portion of his rookie season with him. When we saw him playing, holy shit, this guy's a guy. Oh, he just dies every other play, though. There was games last year where he would literally look like he was beheaded. He was getting hit yeah. so hard in his shoulder. His head mm -hmm. would be bouncing a different direction. He'd get out there and play. He'd make great decisions. He'd be able to, you know, kind of break down a defense and do his thing. But now he's back. I feel like he learned from that whole thing. He doesn't take as many big shots. He's still mobile. He still extends plays. He has this ability to break down defenses, and it feels like you know, the moment is the moment. He knows it, and he seizes it. He makes big-time plays. Plays, that entire team rallies around him. What a fucking baller that guy is. I cannot wait to see what he becomes. And the way he dresses the games, oh, oh man. He knows it. Yeah. Top tier. He knows it. And, and I got too much money for these diamonds to be fake, he said, yeah. in a very oh. professional manner. Uh, he, he, I don't think he wanted to say, don't you ever ask that question <laughs> to me again. But his style, his swag, his moxie, his intelligence, his grit, and his talent are just something that we are incredibly lucky that we are about to witness this in the NFL. NFL, I think, and I apologize to Joey Burr, Joey Shiesty, Joe B. I apologize to the moxie god of Cincinnati that literally I fed into the conversation too that the future of the AFC is running through two places. I think this dude won't let it. Like, yeah. mm -hmm. I, to be transparent, this show mm -hmm. has talked copious amounts of shit. Mm -hmm. That's right. About the Bengals organization. Right. Yeah. Rightfully so. Or is it not the players? No. No, 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 no. Not the coaches? No. Not the fans? No. The organization? Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, like Bill Nindorf facility, you're in a state that has four seasons, very cold four seasons. There's yeah. actually a very large dong-shaped snowstorm that's about to come through <laughs> yeah. the Midwest and probably uh -huh. dump on Cincinnati, True. okay? Mm -hmm. Los Angeles is able to practice in Los Angeles this week. Now, granted, Cincinnati will be out there next week for the Super Bowl week. That's an entire thing. But this week leading up to it, everybody's just trying to get healthy. You're not trying to do too much. You, they're going to be trying to practice underneath the highway. There might be a foot of snow yeah. on the ground in Cincinnati. But, uh, hey, listen, they've gotten this far without it. Mm -hmm. And maybe because they don't have an indoor facility, the amount of grit and callus that they've been able to build up has made them be able to weather any storm, like an 18-point deficit in the middle of the AFC Championship game. At the home <laughs> of the Chiefs! With the kingdom loud as shit. Maybe it is because there's no indoor practice facility. Maybe it is because ownership spends less money than everybody else. Maybe it is the reason why they're great. Or maybe this team is fucking great. And let's go ahead and try to make them. Let's, let's give them every it, opportunity. Yeah. Let's go and do it. Whatever the case, I fucking love that the Bengals are out there. Not great for us because we do bury the Bengals organization often. Sure. So it's not like we have much access. I mean, Money Max, our guy. Right. I got a text from Hubes, uh, Kevin Huber nice. last night. Uh, he pointed out that, you know, I was in uh, Nashville the night before that game. Okay. Uh, Titans. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And oh, then he uh, pointed out that I was in Kansas City the night before. Uh -huh. Kansas City. Hey. Hey. Hey, that was the text he sent. He said, uh -huh. hey, man, just want to, you know. I said, good news for you. I think I'm at an event in L.A. on Saturday night. <laughs> How about that? And yeah. I, I do believe I'm going to yeah. be speaking. 
So I will give a Rams. I will give it. Yeah, <laughs> go Rams, go. I got good. Let the boys in there know that, I, you know, the old SmackDown McAfee minute hype curse mm -hmm. is coming to L.A. I, I ain't missing it. You know, I'm doing the whole thing. That's how the Bengals have gotten to the Super Bowl. They have literally gone through every city that we've been in. In Kansas City, it felt like Nashville, it felt oh, like, yeah. oh, shit, we're hosting this massive game. Kansas City, oh, shit, we're at, it feels big. And, like, you know, it felt large in the Super Bowl. I don't know how much bigger a moment can be than what Joey and them have already experienced. Like, I don't know how more nervous you can get mm -hmm. because it's a Super Bowl. I don't think they're going. I think that team is going to be very comfortable going into SoFi, as they should be, by the but way. But out in L.A., I mean – they will be the Bengals will be the home team out there. I know it's technically the Rams stadium, but the Bengals are going to have more fans there than the Rams. So the secondary markets are cooking. Yeah, yeah, I assume. I guess the secondary markets are cooking because a lot of people and a lot of different teams bought their Super Bowl tickets ahead of time. You know, the wealthy folk yeah. who have access to buying five thousand dollar tickets or whatever because they hope that their team is going to make it. They had eyes that their team was going to make it. So we're going to go ahead and get out in front of this. We're going to buy these ridiculously priced tickets uh, to a game. Now that their team hasn't made it, oh shit, now you gotta unload these tickets. Mm -hmm. Secondary markets are cooking right now. We only know that because SeatGeek is in the house. In oh, hey, 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 boy, SeatGeek. Hey, 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 Welcome. So we're getting a little stats and whatever. His secondary markets are big right now. And for Rams uh, players, they have to know that's not great news for us. You know, secondary mm -hmm. markets cooking. That means probably a lot of outsiders, although Super Bowls are very interestingly fanned. And I got I was very lucky to play in a Super Bowl my rookie year. It was interesting down in Miami, it was Colts, obviously Saints at the time for the game. There's so many people that are there just because they go to our Super Bowl. Like, oh, we just go to every Super Bowl. So you got, like, people in suits sitting out there. You got people mm -hmm. that don't give a fuck about the game at all. So it's nowhere near, in my experience, like, as intense or as whatever. It's just all the pageantry and the bullshit that you have to kind of get through to get to the game. And I'm not saying I didn't do any of that. Nobody had a clue who I was. I was able to walk through media day and everything. People thought I worked for the team. It was not a problem. But I'm just saying your stars, getting through the week of Super Bowl bullshit, I think is the most difficult part. And then once the game finally starts, I think it's like almost like a relaxing feeling for everybody that plays in it. But what a moment for the Los Angeles Rams who are built for the big moment. Oh, yeah. yeah. Kroenke, I seen him. He was holding that NFC Championship in uh, SoFi Stadium trophy in SoFi Stadium while the con confetti was raining down. Mm -hmm. And next week, the Super Bowl was in L.A. and his team's in. I actually saw in his face, he said, I just won the fan base of Los Angeles. Yeah. I did it. The Chargers are fucking dead in the water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Chargers have their loyal fans or yeah. whatever. But not many independents, you know, especially in the city of L.A., who I think like good things, like yeah. good times. Yeah, like winners. I don't know if they weather the storm much, the people that go no, to L.A. No, no, no. Not that L.A. locals don't do it. I'm just talking about normally the people that flock to L.A. are trying to get away from something or get into something. So I think they enjoy good times just naturally. Yeah. And that might be a broad brush painting. I'm not 100% sure. But I think that is why I feel the way I feel. I've been there. I felt that in the humans that I interacted as well. They like good shit. That guy who spent, what, $6 billion on that stadium? Yeah. yeah, at least. And then he paid another billion or whatever to St. Louis to get mm -hmm. out there. Holding that NFC Championship trophy it was just like, yeah, fucking well worth it. it my time, right? Fuck you, St. Louis. I knew more. it. And then walked off there. That guy, they won. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Even though Niners fans were definitely in there. And oh, there was a lot, a lot oh, yeah. <laughs> of red. Kroenke won. Hosting the NFC Championship and then the Super Bowl. Winning the NFC Champion. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is. What a winner for him. And then, obviously, we have to turn our attention to the guy that was held captive in Detroit for all yeah. those years. Uh -huh. yeah. Matthew Stafford doing that interview with Terry Bradshaw, who's holding everybody weirdly close. Yeah. Terry, was, I mean, it was weirdly close. Well, he's getting old, so he's got to do the arm grab thing so they don't run away. Well, yeah. the well, ears maybe? I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't know. He was doing arm. Yeah. There was actually, he put that thing up on somebody. Uh -huh. I forget who, he had his thing up on somebody while he was talking. And I enjoyed it because, hey, it's hard to hear up there, and I, I get it. But it was a very – it was a close conversation with oh, yeah. the people. But when Matt Stafford got up there and they started talking and the confetti was falling and Sean McVay cut a promo, like, how about our quarterback? Yeah. <laughs> how about our players? <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, that was Unbelievable. Awesome. But Matthew Stafford sitting up there talking about it, and there was this, like, shot looking up, and he, the trophy was there, and then the confetti was falling. It's like that guy – he knew it all along. Yeah. Yeah. Matthew Storm. Stafford, his family, everybody was like, hey, this guy's a guy. We're just, for whatever reason, 
it's not working. And then he goes to a new team first year. Oh, yeah. He's in the Super Bowl, just like what happened with Tom and Peyton and everybody yeah. else who had the same type of thoughts. Like, if I had a little bit more say <laughs> and I had some more oh. weapons around me and maybe I was in a different situation, it would work out perfectly every single time. And we go from one Mexican vacation to now – he is in the fucking Super Bowl representing the NFC. After all of those years of hard work in Detroit, congrats to Matty Staff. Yes, congrats, Matthew. You did it. It's like a piece of the lines in the Super Bowl, I feel like. If I'm yeah. reading the Detroit fan base well off of my Twitter interactions, yep. it does feel as if Detroit is happy for Matthew Stafford. And you know what? That's great because that guy... I mean, he's balling out right yeah. now. Yeah. He fucking deserves it, Pat. Yeah, he's doing everything he did in Detroit now in L.A. and in front of brighter lights. You guys are like the minor league, you know? Yeah, yeah. Right. You got him ready. Yeah. You, got, you got him ready for the big stage. Yeah, we gave him a lot of great. He, been, he went through a lot in Detroit. I'm happy for him. I mean, I'm happy for us. We've been saying all along Stafford's a dog. A.J. Hawk's been saying it. Aaron Rodgers has been saying it. Pretty much every former player we talked to says Matthew Stafford is a dog. And also, happy for us because – the Lions are definitely cursed. This yeah. just proves we are definitely cursed. There's an easy answer. You just pay Calvin Johnson. Oh, yeah. Easy. Simple. Just pay Calvin Johnson his money, and then you move along, hopefully, and MCDC might be able to turn it around. Yeah. But I was so happy for Matty Stafford. Oh. His wife, how about up when they shot up in the group? Oh, yeah. The yeah. hug with the group. Mm -hmm. Like, just so Crying. happy about it all. Yeah, real emotion and yeah. happiness and genuine, you know, because she has had probably conversations with people who maybe have doubted Matt. It has said Matthew hasn't been able to win. She's heard all the shit that he has heard. She has been there through all of the chatter that he has had to withstand, which is a a lot and then now he's fucking wheeling and dealing Let's into the go. super yeah. bowl yeah unreal and, and odell like even uh, you gotta oh, feel yeah. great about odell because he was you know in the worst situation possible and he got out yes. and now he's going uh, to the baker super bowl. baker may or not baker i'm sorry johnny manzel <laughs> yeah uh, johnny manzel last night did come out and say like hey uh, my Heisman's better than bronze. And also <laughs> uh cleveland is the worst place on earth yeah he, so he, not the people he said not the people not the organization, just Cleveland as a whole, mm -hmm. worst place on earth. That's what Johnny Manziel said last night a couple times on Twitter, obviously had the people going. I think it was probably in defense of Odell Beckham Jr. getting out of there, going into L.A. and seeing – you know, absolute success early and quick, and it feels like everybody is bought in over there and all in on the ram it up the ass, you know, hashtag yeah. R-I-U-T-A. Oh, yeah. But Odell Beckham Sr., I think last night probably smoking a cigar bigger than uh, Joey Burrow dad and uh, Jamar Chase's uh, dad. Oh, yeah. I think Odell Beckham Sr. was probably like, my editing skills. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> should be a my kid, yeah. goddamn Super Bowl, man. I mean, it was that entire Vaughn Miller's back, Aaron yeah, Donald's yeah. back. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stories. Jalen getting an opportunity. Well, I mean, here we. I mean, he almost Bob Gold almost ripped Jalen's head off last night. He's lucky yeah. he's, he's playing in the Super Bowl. I think my favorite <laughs> thing about Jalen is he wears a mask over his mouth, and then he has his mouth guard hanging from his thing. Mm -hmm. Like there, there's actually no chance that thing could get in because it is attached. It's yeah. just a part mm -hmm. of the look. But him getting in Bob Gold's face, what was that all about? That wasn't because Bob Gold was kicking over the kickoff team. No, because that happened after. Second half. That happened in the afterwards. So I Bob mean, Gold was Bob Gold is just someone who, you know, gets in guys' heads. Yeah. Fiery. I think Jalen was trying to get in Bob Gold's head. Yeah. Oh, but I think so. no, that's not but Bob Gold did say yeah, like it's possible, Hey, yeah. there's gonna be more Niners fans here. Like this is our house now. So maybe Jalen uh, Ramsey took some of uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, Bob. Oh, whose house? They said it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they did. yeah, yeah. They're covering the uh, sign in the end zone. Did you see that? Because it says Rams house. Like when you when they were kicking field goals, and Niners fans put like a Niners sign in front of the Rams. I mean, it was pretty good. The, the Niners fans uh, faithful also infiltrated the NFL game day morning show which is filmed at SoFi. Mm -hmm. They almost had a CBS halftime incident oh, on man. the morning show because of Debo, there's a chant, I guess, a sing-along Debo, and they were singing it, I, I guess, directly into the microphones <laughs> of the game day morning people, nice. and they were trying to talk and have their thing, and the Niners faithful were definitely there. It looked like a college game day type set up there for a little bit with the amount of Niners people that are out on that outside field. So I thought, oh, this is going to be a Niners night. And you looked at the stadium – there's a lot of red scattered in there. Oh, yeah. But at the end, when it was celebration time, it felt like there was a lot of Rams yeah. fans in there as well. That's just good. Hey, that's good NFC West battle. That's, that's right. right. That's just good NFC yeah. West battle. It was the Niners' night for a long time. and then The football gods were on the Niners' side. Yeah. That, dro the, that dropped the third, pick. The second one, third and one, and then Shanahan punted. 
And then the next play was uh, Stafford trying to punt back to the Niners, and they dropped it. And then that was that was once that happened. Yeah, that was curtains, dude, as yeah. Mike Vick will call it. Yeah. And then there was the Odell. It was the Odell for the over in the Super Boost, and then the 15 yard penalty after that too. Yeah. And all of a sudden they were you know on the Niners like 40 yard line. That mm-hmm. second and one, third and one there. Trent Williams as a decoy was interesting. The third and one. Yeah, there. yeah, the third and one. What are they doing? Because they did that twice against the Packers. Yeah, a lot yeah. Of, and I mean you can see why they would run it. Because film study would say, as yeah. soon as Trent comes, they're probably shifting, going this way. But I bet you, huh? 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 Uh, McVeigh's like, oh, Kyle always thinks he's so smart. <laughs> Kyle always thinks he's so smart. Look for the decoy. Look for the gut. They were like, it's almost like they knew it was coming, which is great. That's the type of chess shit that's going on between play caller and defensive coordinator there at all times. What a fucking day of football. Hey, thank you to the NFL team. Thank, thank you, you Red NFL. Matt Stafford's always been a guy. We, we just chatted about that. I mean, that is um, – I'm pumped for him. That pick drop. Oh, man. Huge. That's what's, huge. That was huge. That's that was huge. what's crazy is can you imagine if yeah. that is an interception and they lose, like, the way oh, people are talking man. about him today. Like, he's done. You know, he has a chance now still to win a Super Bowl and win, like, a Super Bowl MVP. But if he does throw a pick there and then the Niners march down and score, like – so you're saying legacies are all kind of bullshit because you never know what happened to literally the play before? I mean, yeah. you could argue that. Yeah. Because, Bur- I mean, Burrow Tom Brady also. in the last year's NFC Championship threw three interceptions. Yeah. They yeah. beat Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is the joker mm-hmm. in the NFC, in the playoffs. Tom Brady's greatest of all time. You don't remember that, though. Only the bangers survive. Let's That's keep right. it yeah. moving. When they beat the Chiefs, D Ford lined up offsides. Game's over. Brady throws a pick and... Instead, they're running it back, and then the Patriots end up winning in overtime. Isn't it crazy how one little throwaway play is literally the game changer? Speaking of Tom Brady, this weekend some news broke, and then it didn't break, and then it was walked back, and then it was set as stone in one network, and then questioned in every other network. Uh, Sometime during the beautiful Saturday that was, Mm -hmm. Jeff Darlington and Adam Schefter, and somehow Darlington is kind of – kind of drifted off into the stratosphere of this one, and Schefter is the only one that ended up breaking this news, I guess, at some point during Saturday. Um, You know, just the coverage leading into Championship Sunday. So Schefter and Darlington say that someone close to Tom Brady is saying that a retirement is imminent, basically. Tom Brady is hanging it up after 20-some years. Congratulations to Tom Brady. And everybody that covers the NFL on a regular basis goes, oh, Jeff Darlington said it, not Schefter. By the way, no. Schefter no, normally knows his shit, but the fact that Darlington was tagged in there, co-signed in there, Jeff Darlington has had ins with the Tom Brady camp for a long time. Oh, yeah. So as soon as you see Darlington and Schefter, maybe that's why Schefter added Darlington into the tweet per me and Jeff Darlington, because he knew that if you stack the Jeff Darlington on there, that's a little combo mm-hmm. from Schefter. So Schefter hits you with the jab, and then he adds. Uh, and also, Darlington's a part of that. That's like, huh? Huh? How about some fucking, huh? That's what... He's in the team. Yeah, right. this is per me and Jeff Darlington that he's going to retire. So I think everybody that read that automatically assumed, okay, so it is official. Now, we, on this particular program, as soon as there was any scent that he was retiring, said, oh, he's retiring. Yeah. This yeah. is not just a maybe retirement. This is a definite retirement. Everything we've learned about Tom Brady through the documentary or any conversation he has or any of his former teammates, this is not something that Tom would want to do, have it be bigger than anything else, dance around with, or even leak out without getting chopped off at the head and still continue to go. So there was no answer from Brady's team when these reports were going. And if any doubt sets in and a guy at that level, you'd think he'd step away, but you would also think that he would answer that immediate with shadow lion in his social media and everything so we immediately said oh he's retiring then and we just kind of sat back then the Schefter Darlington thing comes through it's like oh he's definitely retiring his statement is imminent and then Brady's team has to step in and say no no not yet because Tom Brady wanted to do his retirement on his own fucking terms Mm -hmm. probably through some incredible video that was made by Shadow Lion with clips and thank yous and an entire thing, maybe on the Let's Go podcast that he has, Mm -hmm. maybe the final man in the arena. Somehow Tom wanted to do it himself, and now somebody who has been in his camp for a long time, Jeff Darlington, who was also added in that release, is a part of the potential message getting out there beforehand. Jeff Darlington probably kicked out of the Brady camp, if I had to guess, if this isn't real, Uh but I do assume that there's going to be something epic coming in the short 
future here from Tom Brady. And the thing that fueled the fire on Saturday was there was a TB12 Sports uh, tweet that was deleted that was congratulating him on retirement, and then it was deleted. So it was Tom like, hey, delete that, that, delete that tweet. That's not a thing yet. And then the Bucks came out and said, we haven't heard anything yet. So. Okay, and B.A. said, well, he hasn't told us, and we don't know what's going on. Joining us now is an insider uh, from the NFL and NFL Network. Okay. okay. And the reason why we – I talked about the Tom Brady thing there is because oh, maybe we can get some clarification here from a guy who watched somebody else uh, shovel his entire uh, walkway, driveway, and house this weekend after yeah. a nor'easter his dropped son? a few feet down. I don't believe it was his kids. No. In joining us, uh, the man who's with the weekly wrap-up with Rap Sheet and Friends host, us being the friends, he being Rap Sheet, Ian Rappaport. Hey, hey Rap Sheet! What's going on, dude? You can't lift um, the shovel? What's going on? It was, it was my wife. Come yeah, on, yeah, yeah. rap sheet. Made, oh well, my God. well, hold on. In my defense, she was the one who was smoking the ribs, so she needed to shovel it <laughs> to make sure that we had a trail to go to the trigger. <laughs> I don't. And she was the only one eating the ribs, too, right? She was just her ribs? Uh, oh, no, well, she was making ribs for racks, you. So like yeah. She can't eat four racks of ribs for by herself. Plus, there was beans, <laughs> there was mac and cheese. Oh. So she's making this incredible feast for you. And uh, you thought, so, well, since you're doing the making of the feast, yeah, I'm, I'm going to benefit from it. But since you're doing the work, might as well. That's what you said? Well, I mean, she's going there anyway. So it's not like she has to, like, leave the house and, like, <laughs> this go guy. somewhere else. She's literally Holy walking shit. there regardless. Yeah. I anyway, see. the ribs were great, by the way. <laughs> I bet, I bet they were, and I'm sure the narrative has been painted that you are a terrible husband. But you, hey, you do what you got to do. You know what I mean? You eat those ribs and beans and everything that that Traeger is. That what you said it was a Traeger grill? Yeah, oh yeah. I'm sure they were pumped too. You know, like oh, oh yeah, yeah. they thanks. were pumped. Yeah. It's a new thing they're doing. Traeger provisions. It's really quite delicious, actually. Well, I'm sure, and they're like, thank you, Ian, for telling the world in the middle of one of the biggest snowstorms. Uh, yeah. That you refuse to do anything, but yeah. you will, uh, you know, receive the benefit of how good the Traeger Grill is. That's I'm sure they were pumped for that, yeah. Ian. As are we. Hey, tell your wife she's a fucking angel. Yeah. Dude. yeah. Thank you, Mrs. Rapsheet. Thank you, Mrs. Thank Rapsheet. You. Thank you, Mrs. Sheet. She's great. All right. Yeah, clearly, you dirtbag. Yeah, I mean, she's <laughs> shoving for you. Yeah. All right, anyways, let's get to the football. Uh, the Tom Brady situation. So he wanted to release his own message. He didn't want anybody else to do it for him. Darlington, who's inside of his camp, and Schefter decide to release that he's retiring before he can release his statement. Is that an accurate assessment of what's going on? And do you think Darlington's getting kicked out of the camp? And have you ever been in this type of situation before? Um, okay. Uh, I would say, first of all, as far as like the veracity of the reports and what, like, I believe he plans to retire. So I don't, I don't think the story is wrong. And it's hard to imagine it would be, honestly. Like once, I mean, we talked about it last week. Once someone starts talking about, I gotta do his best for my family. I want to see my kids. Like, I feel like most people knew that this was it and the greatest who ever played was probably not going to play again. Um, I would say my sense of it is Brady wanted to do this himself. There is an as-yet-unreleased episode of Man in the Arena, which is incidentally also on ESPN, ESPN Plus, oh, uh, that geez. may or may not contain a retirement speech from Tom Brady. I'll be interested to see if it does, but everything Brady does is prepared and polished and really perfect. I mean, he's great at social media. His shows are great. He surrounds himself with a really good team, and I imagine that this would have been very, very good um, and this is how we want, he wanted to do it himself, which is great. I mean, I, I feel like he should, you know, he sort of earned it. Um, mm. and you know, life yeah, happens like that sometimes, you know, so it, it just wasn't the case. And Hold it on, got no. out, can we go and back? Can we go back? He's extremely upset about yeah, it. Yeah. I think, I don't think he's happy, but let's go back to what you said there. You said, it feels like everybody knew he was going to retire. That was kind of new. Like we literally did talk about it last week. And I think yeah. you said that. Are you saying that Schefter and Darlington kind of, you know, they kind of piece something as breaking news that everybody kind of assumed and almost just no, cut Tom no, no, Brady no. right out no. of his knees? Or, what, what is that? Yeah. Why, why would they do that? Why would Darlington do that, you think? I mean, I I don't want to talk for Jeff because he's Jeff, a by the way, probably a good guy. Him. Probably a good guy. We don't know. I don't know him that he, well. He is, a, he is a very good guy. Um, and so, so it is news. I mean – it is news. It, Tom Brady retiring is news, and it's big news. So I, I don't I don't know what went into their thought process. ESPN has said they stand by the reporting. I believe the reporting is right. Um, 
but but it is news, and I'm sure they had the discussion of like clearly Brady wants to do this himself. We know it's true. Should we just do it? I assume they had that. Oh. Um, I was surprised at the reaction from Brady's camp hey, Tom. because it was pretty. I mean, his dad was pretty upset. The agent, everybody seemed to be upset. But I, I mean, I imagine they reached out to them beforehand too. So it was, you know, I'm, from my standpoint, like it was. Of course, it was frustrating. Someone else is a very big story, but it was also fascinating to see how it played out, just from the initial splash and then the denials. But it's also going to be true and Brady wanted to release it himself and the people who reported it this is, this is all very very interesting weekend accumulation of information right is that what we're saying I mean well I also want to say something else you mentioned like you know did I think it was something well we all kind of knew yes I think we all did kind of know but to be the one to say this is happening is big like that okay. it happens in trades and stuff too like to got be, it like, oh yeah we all kind of think you know Carson's going to the Colts or whatever, sorry. And but to be the one to say like this is happening <laughs> in our world's a big deal. All right. Well, this is <laughs> you know, I mean, there's a lot to dive into there. Okay. Just like I'm not gonna allow you just because you were the bearer bad news. Did you see that? Yeah. <laughs> when the lights <laughs> go <laughs> down That's on funny. a scumbag. <laughs> All right, we're back. That's great. Who forces wife to show snow because he wanted those ribs now on his so Traeger ground. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Scum. Lights good? Um, also, by the way, okay, the good. best thing about the ribs <laughs> is you put them face down in like honey and then a little bit of brown sugar and then you wrap them up and it all kind of soaks in it's like who so does nice. your wife does you don't what are you saying no, you're saying I you do come sometimes on. this time i happen not to oh because there was a blizzard snow. outside yeah. yeah of course it cold it was very cold hey those ribs are delicious oh, yeah. top notch so the beans as well at what point are you allowed to be the person that definitively breaks a story that everybody knows about? Because this is very similar to the accumulation of information about yeah, Aaron yeah. Rodgers on draft day. Because you said, I think we talked to you afterwards, and also everybody behind the scenes was like, yeah, we all kind of knew that there was something brewing, but none of us wanted to be the people that, or were the people that were able to definitively say something. It's just, right. how much of that I mean, happens? How do you know when the right time is to go with that thing? Good question. I would say my... The way I generally handle it is I will try very hard, and this is after years of doing it the opposite way, but I will try very hard to reach out to the people involved and get them, either get to them and say, this is what I'm reporting, I must, or let's, you know, I'm going to report this, give me your feedback, I'll do it all together. You know, so like the Aaron Rodgers thing, a lot, and a lot of times there's like a news peg that comes with it. Like let's say for Rodgers, the news peg was, could he have been traded before the draft? Now, we all know now, like, that was never going to happen. It was basically a phone call, a hang-up, like, that was never going to happen. But I think some of us thought at the time that it might. So that was sort of the news peg. The thing with Brady was, you know, when was he going to announce it and would you want to beat his announcement? If that was me, I, you know, I, you try to reach out to Brady and be like, I have this, you know, let's wrap it all in once together and try to do it at once. Now, the other part of it is at some point in a story, you say, I must go with this because it is true or it is timely or someone else is going to have it. So I have it. I, sh I should be the one to do it. Like at some point you say, I just am going to roll with this, whether or not you're on board or whatever. And like that is, that's a tough decision. It goes, you know, that's the kind of thing you talk to your editors about and you weigh a lot of factors. But at some point. You just have to say, I know this, it is a fact, and I'm going to report it, and I will deal with whatever the repercussions are. That's awesome. At a much smaller level, by the way, yeah, it's an awesome insight into how you guys all have to operate. I appreciate you doing that. In a much smaller way, Ian was a part of my retirement press uh, conference that mm -hmm. was filmed hours and hours and hours before it was released. And I think it, you didn't think it was going to be news or whatever the case was. You hold you held that thing in and had a great performance in oh, the yeah. retirement press conference. Yeah, as well. it really did. Yeah, it was really good. Everybody thought actually, hey, there's a guy who'll make his wife go shovel snow right there. Yeah, that's that's right. It was it was good acting. Yeah. It was great. It was acting. me and Greg Olson, if I remember correctly, right? Yeah, Vinatieri was in there as well. Big Cat yeah. got a couple good questions in, I think. 
It was good. I mean, it wasn't bad. It was it was a good little retirement. But you were a man of your word, though. You said, uh, obviously, whenever you guys have this thing go, just let me know. That has to be a fine balance, especially when Darlington's name's attached to it. Let's get to some of the coaching searches here. Harbaugh, we mentioned last week, wasn't – Interest wasn't coming from the uh, Raiders organization, but Harbaugh, there was interest for him to get back into the NFL. Now, I, I didn't know if you thought that was what you were feeling, what you knew, or what the story was. I think that's starting to come out a little bit more, yeah. that the NFL is getting interesting for Harbaugh. The Raiders hire the Patriots. Congrats to Ziegler and McDaniels. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck, boys. They're now to Las Vegas. Who knows how that's going to work out? Derek Carr is the quarterback of the future or not. There's a lot of questions to, to remain there. But Harbaugh, interviews with the Vikings. Vikings. Now he's interviewing with the Dolphins. Is he the one that has generated this entire thing? And is that how it works? People just get loud and say, I want back, and then they get opportunities? Because this coaching cycle thing seems to be very interesting. It's kind of dragging out at this point, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's painful. It's like a slow bleed. And this is like, you know, I, I love it because it's fun and breaking news is fun. And we did it during our show game day morning yesterday, which is always great. Because, um, you know, you have your hit time scheduled, like, all right, I'm on at, you know, 11.05 and 12.10, whatever. We got breaking news. It's like, all right, sit down, let's go. That's always fun. Lights on here. Um, Lights but on here. it really Ian. is mm-hmm. dragging, like, unbelievably. The Harbaugh thing, I had not heard that he is meeting with the Dolphins today. Um, they are meeting with other finalists, so uh, possible I got scooped. But I have not heard at all that there's interest from the Dolphins. Who are the other finalists uh, down there? Because I know Dayball just went to the Giants, right? Congrats to Dayball. Yeah, yeah. Brian. Going to the Giants. Showed up in his, his Ford truck. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right out there in New York, Ford truck. Let's go to work. Why? Why? We need to turn this place around. Why? Why? This is a hard hat. Why? Why? We got some beers. Why? New York, New Jersey. Probably look at me and say, oh, we got another big white doofus in here. Why? But this, this white <laughs> one's a little bit different. Why? Why? He's super smart. Why? Had a good off hands. Why? People show up in Benzos in Chicago. Why? Not here, right? Oh, yeah. was that, a, that was a Benz in Chicago? Uh, Proud partner. Two of them, yeah. G, oh. G-Wagon. Eberflus shows up in a G-Wagon. Must be nice. Yeah, that's G-Wagon, cool. baby. Yeah. Well, I don't know what Eberflus was whipping around town here in Indy, but I know oh, up there man. he's got this Ooh. Matt Gray G-Wagon he yeah. showed up. Nice. Let's get to work, he said. I'm like, well, it's going to be a little bit too comfortable in your car. Maybe no, get to no, work. No, Fucking no. Dayball showing up in F-150. What? Right. Anyways, I thought he was maybe going to Miami because he was going to go back with Tua. Who are the finalists down in Miami now? Yeah, I, you know, there's a lot of secrets in this coaching world because no one wants to get sort of trumped on a hire that they have. So no one, you know, they don't always tell the truth. So it's tough to get a feel on it until it's like it's happening. But I kind of felt like Dayball might go to Miami too because of Tua, because he's got a great relationship with Stephen Ross. And I'd hear, oh, whenever Dayball's teams come there, he talks with Stephen Ross. And I kind of thought it was happening. And then the Giants basically made a move. Uh, Giants basically made a move saying, all right, we're going to lock in Dayball. And I wondered, like, would Miami respond? And they didn't. They were like, we're taking our time. We are good. So they are going to interview Mike McDaniel, who is a very brilliant offensive coordinator for the San Francisco 49ers. Not a household name, but a really smart dude. And then Kellen Moore, the offensive coordinator for the Cowboys. As far as I can tell, those are the two finalists in Miami. They got a really good defensive side of the ball. They probably keep those guys. And then that, and the, that will be it. Okay, so let's talk about the former head coach there, Brian Flores. Is he still interviewing in places? Is he going to end up in places? What are some hirings that you predict or project in this prognostication of coaching in the NFL world? Uh, so Flores has an interview tomorrow with the Saints, which I would think it's fair to say Dennis Allen is the front runner there. But that's, you know, Flores is pretty dynamic in the room, apparently. So we'll see how that goes. Apparently. Doug Peterson interview with the Saints yesterday, and they got a couple others. Um, and then Flores is still in play in Houston. And that's talk about slow searches. That's been sort of slow played as well. They had Josh McCown in waiting on Jesus for, yeah. Yeah. for a second interview. And then they had uh, Gannon for a second interview on Rich Saturday, I believe. Rich Gannon? Don- Jonathan Gannon. Okay. Uh, so you think, damn. is there a room that Easterby sits in that has a skylight or something? And you think that's maybe next to McNair's office? And he, like, opens the door um, and he's like, has Jesus come through with an answer yet? And Easterby's like, tomorrow. And he just <laughs> stares back at the Lord waiting oh. for him. Who's making the decision down there? Is it Easterby deciding? Or McNair family? Is there a third party uh, ad, uh, like, like, consultant firm? Who do you think's making the decisions <laughs> down there? Nick Casario is making the decisions. And, you know, Easterby gets a lot of publicity. He does have say. 
So I'm not going to say he doesn't have yeah. say, but Casario is making the decisions. Well, and that is, you know, he relies on the influence of Easterby, he relies on the expertise as far as the kind of people that they are bringing in. I believe that is what Easterby does along with some other functional things. But Casario is making the decision. And, you know, I think last year with David Culley, you could go, you know, a couple different ways on how that worked out. They decided not to retain him despite the team playing really hard and say playing pretty well at the end. Um, You're telling me Easterby consults with Nick, Nick Casario? Yes. So he he basically he deals with a lot of like character and the kind of people that they're bringing in and all sorts of stuff like that. Oh, so he doesn't make like on field decisions. He's just no, about, no, 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 no. So I, Nick Casario isn't going like uh, Mr. Easterby. What are your thoughts on this? Like that's not happening, right? Because that would be tough for us to all respect Casario. I think at this I, point that is most certainly not happening. Okay, good, good, good. <laughs> all right, thank God because I had, I was really excited to hear this because Casario he's on the headset, he's on the field, he's making deci- He might be like a. Um, I don't want to say the future of that general manager position, especially if things start opening up, but he might be like a newer mold, right, with a more hands-on yeah. general manager. This might actually take place. So if he's going to Easterby to ask him for strategy yeah. questions, I was about to say, all right, let's get that guy out of the, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean, the conversation. But I don't know what Easterby knows, and who knows when Jesus comes, you know? Yeah, I also – I can't speak to that. Uh, it's definitely not – I'm Jewish, so um, – but anyway, well, uh, he was technically, as, yeah, I yeah, guess. Right. I, don't, I don't know which book you're reading. Well, you guys didn't read the sequel, but I think it's in both of them. First one. Yeah, but the sequel, I'm saying, I think in both of them, he is, you know. Uh, I read the sequel pretty good. Had you watch it or read it? I read it. The whole a lot, a lot of it. I read a lot of it. Some, uh, some of it. I read some of it. It's a lot um, of ages. Wow. Right. A lot of ages. You read both of them? Uh, I've read the a lot one. of both of them, yes. The uh, but as far as wow, the Casario that's thing, that's a lot of reading, it is man. interesting to see if he does reshape the model a little bit. Because I know people think he's crazy being on the headset. I kind of don't see what's that big of a deal. Like, he runs the whole operation. He should know what's being said. It's not like he's pushing the button and going, all right, let's run it to the left. Like, he needs to know what's happening. I kind of think he should be on the headset. Yeah, and if it works, hey, if it works, nobody will care. If it doesn't, he'll get buried for it, and then people will ask other questions as well. Hindsight oh, yeah. is always 100%. the biggest determiner about, you know, forward-thinking humans and people. Go ahead, Ty. Repshi, what the hell's going on in Jacksonville? It seems like they reported that Leftwich was for sure getting it and that Balky was out, and now it's like Leftwich isn't the coach necessarily and Balky might still be there. Like, what the hell is going on in Jacksonville? They're interviewing Rich Basaccia today. Hey, how's your family? Hey. How you doing? Good Very good. Uh, and I would say this, like the players with the Raiders, like they they love them some Rich Basaccia. Like they, I, I, everyone's excited for a new coach, but I could feel it in Vegas. Like they were feeling for their guy, Basaccia. Um, so I, think that's, wagon. I get it. I definitely get it, but it's too bad. Um, and so anyway, so. Leftwich Zito, not he's not getting hired. a G-Wagon if he's a special teams coordinator for the Chicago Bears. We're giving him one. Yes, right. we are. I mean, maybe. Right. He's, getting, he's interviewing in Jacksonville, though. He's not looking at special teams jobs anymore. No. He's a fucking head coach. That guy took a team. He's our guy already. He's a head he's coach. What, what do you think's happening? You think somebody told Khan, though, like, hey, you should maybe think about somebody who's coached before uh, being in the NFL? Like, what do you think is I, the big – I mean, was that all lies? Was there, Byron never close to being the guy? There's nothing wrong with just interviewing guys to see – I, so they have they put in a request for Kevin O'Connell, the Rams offensive coordinator. I think it was on Friday. It was it Friday or Saturday? And because of the rules, because they didn't interview him the first time around, kind of when that early window opened, they have to wait until after the Super Bowl because the Rams are good and they won. So the Jaguars may actually just wait. And so they have nothing but time. So interviewing Rich Passaccia and see if it sticks is not a bad thing. Uh, go ahead, Connor. Yeah, Rap Sheet, uh, with McDaniels leaving, is there a chance we see Billy O'Brien come home to New England? And also, if b doesn't end up getting a head coaching job, could you see he him going back as well? It's like Saban up there. Yep. Just, um, come on back. I mean, that basically could be like, what do they call the Alabama, like the rehabilitation? Coaching rehab. Coach yeah. rehab, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so we could see Bill O'Brien. Coaching, you know, I, I wouldn't be, hold I wouldn't on, be coaching surprised. reputation, I mean, like, the problem rehabilitation. With, when Josh yes. left last time or – when he was supposed to leave last time and then didn't, and then Frank Wright came in to save the day. (laughs) Part of the issue was they had no one to replace him, so New England made him this huge contract offer. Bill O'Brien is available now. That actually does make sense if O'Brien wants to do it, if they can get all on the same page. Um, So I would probably keep an eye on that. Uh, And then Flores, you know, going back to New England, 
I, I guess anything's possible. I have not heard that that is in his plans. It is, I don't know what he wants to do, and he still may get a job. But to me, there is all benefit and no downside to taking a year off and like consulting and just like, just, just letting it all decompress a little bit. Yeah, I mean decompression. You know, you know, kind of reassessing what's going on. Always a good move. Every time we get to chat with you, Ian, it's always great. Uh, we got about ten seconds here for hour one to wrap up on Sirius XM. We'll be back in ten minutes after that with more heat and AJ Hawk and Ooh. Darius Butler. Be a friend, tell a friend. Ooh. See ya. Okay, so we're off serious. Fucking right on it, by yeah, the way. Yeah, yeah. On the screws. I'm talking about I thought that was good. Mark Thanks. McGuire. See ya. Bang. You know what I mean? Summer I mean, it was. Hey, I mean, that was. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hanging curve. Barry Bonds. Yeah, because Ian was giving an answer, too, so we didn't fully know. And like, hey, you, you, you hitting lefty is just so weird to me. I get it, but it's just weird. Dude, you didn't shovel snow this weekend. You made your wife shovel. So. <laughs> That's well, weird. Connor bro. has a so. real problem. Yeah, Connor's not happy about it, dude. Yeah. It's fucking Nor'easter, dude. Yeah, come on. Come on, man. Take a little Columbia out of your backpack and pick up a little blue car. <laughs> Jesus. Jeez Louise, dude. What's, you know what I mean? The internet was coming out. Maybe after. next time, if I'm here and not away on the various trips that I have coming up, maybe I'll shovel snow next time, but hopefully I'll be away. So. Now, to, <laughs> to be clear. <laughs> hopefully. Hopefully I'll be away. I'm saying, I'm Buy a <laughs> snowblower, <laughs> dude. That's what I was about to say. I, I, I couldn't tell you the last time I shoveled, but there ain't no way like Sam's going to shovel either. Yeah. You, you just get somebody to do it. Ian, like there's, it has to be some neighborhood Neighbor kid. kids? Oh, but he has I'm, a, I'm a man of the people. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah where he's at. There's probably no kids. No, 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 no. There's no kids going out. Easy. No way. Not a chance. On this day and age. No way. Not everywhere he lives. No. no. Oh, oh, my God. God. Um, what do you think? I hate to like, say this, but I have to go do some. Yeah, there we go. Look Ooh. at those ribs. All right, last thing before you go. I understand you probably have to do some TV. We appreciate all your time. Those gr those ribs look great. Thanks to Traeger and Mrs. Rappaport. Thank, Thank you, Mrs. Rappaport. Um, real quick, Aaron Rodgers, you've been writing a lot. What do you know? Who's giving you information? And when should we expect whatever to happen to happen? Um, I'll be tuning in to your show. Uh, by tuning in, I mean I'll be waiting outside the door watching for him to watching him arrive. Okay. Um, just real quick, because I do have to run and do my other job. Um, this was interesting to me because I kind of thought he would peace out after the season, say goodbyes, and just go. Sounds like he stuck around for a couple days and worked with LaFleur and planned for the future. Nothing definitive, and I know that no one in the world, oh. certainly no one in the Packers oh. building is kind of hey. like, no one in the Packers building is kind of like, we got it or whatever, but they want him back badly, and they were at least encouraged by what happened. At least encourage cautious optimism, I would say. That's amazing to hear. Packers fan in the building just got very excited. I assume all Packers are going to be thankful to hear that. We appreciate you. Good luck on TV. Good luck breaking whatever news you're about to break. Ladies and gentlemen, Ian Rappaport. Hey! I mean, him just posting that, acting as if he wasn't going to get buried. Yeah. Uh -huh. Absurd. Like, I'm sure Traeger was like, that. that, that he lives in a yeah, thank you, but take that down. Place. It's not funny, right? His ribs definitely look good. Just make it a photo instead. Yeah. Please. You climb. How about Rap Sheet, though? Getting a Traeger deal, though. Kind of. Yeah, pretty awesome. Awesome. Kind of uh, happy. Rap. But then, yeah. But yeah. the way he yeah. follows it up with. Plus, if we know anything about Rap Sheet and these IG deals, that one's probably going to go south on him at some well, point. But I already did here, and I was in business. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. What was it, Manscaped he put oh, in there? Oh, yeah. yeah. Got suspended. <laughs> Trim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 He wasn't allowed to be on his phone. Thank you, Ian. Thank you, Ian, for soldiering through there. Yeah. <laughs> Funny guy. I do fucking love Ian Rappaport. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, what did we not talk about? Uh, oh, Brock Lesnar won the Royal Rumble. Oh, wow. Had a baby, Brock. Had a baby, Brock. Tip of the cap to old Brock Lesnar. He got fucking screwed over. Yeah, he did. Earlier tonight by that rat, Paul Heyman. Yeah. Uh -huh. But also, Paul helped my guy, so. True. You know, I don't know what to do. Yeah, 50 50. I'm pretty torn here, but I do know Bobby Lashley, friend of the show, beat Brock Lesnar. Yeah. Yeah, kind of. Beat Brock Lesnar. Mm -hmm. And then Brock came back at the end of the night, 10 hours later, and said, Listen, <laughs> I hit, now I'm back <laughs> in the main event yeah. of WrestleMania. Came out and let the bodies hit the floor. Let the bodies hit the floor. Let the bodies hit the floor. <laughs> One. Uh, that's bad. Two. Two. That's Drew McIntyre. That's Shane No Man. Four. Four. That is another person that got eliminated by Brock. <laughs> Randy Five. Orton. Right. Yeah. Johnny Knoxville. Johnny Knoxville got kicked in the face by Sami Zayn, I believe, to get eliminated. It was a nice full circle moment yeah. there between those two. Sweet revenge. Yeah, yeah. I thought Johnny Knoxville was gonna, maybe going to win. Me too. Especially one day after. 
he and Wee Man and the yeah. boys were in a bar and Brock Lesnar picked up the Wee Man and put him through a table. I'm hearing reports that that was not like a, uh, a not scheduled moment. Okay. okay. Oh, shoot. Yeah. I, well, I don't know. I don't know if, if any of that is. I'm being told, though, that nobody in there expected that to take place. Wow. Okay. okay. That's what my reports are telling me. But what a moment. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome. I'm thinking about the other people in that bar, wherever it was. Oh. They see the biggest white of all time, <laughs> Brock Lesnar. Yeah. And then they see Wee Man standing there. And uh, who knows what happened before? Did Wee Man entice mm. Brock? I mean, who knows that how that... That would be smart. Yeah, bold move. That would not be smart. But, I mean, these Wee are Man. jackasses. Like, yeah. That's their actual name. Yeah. And, and then, then it all went down. I, I'm hearing reports that... I don't think anybody expected that to take place. But what a moment. I wish I was in there. Those oh, yuppies oh, at that man. bar had to be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Holy shit. Oh, my God. Telling that story to friends. Yeah. This big, gigantic. Neanderthal. Viking. Viking. <laughs> <laughs> he was so big. What was his name? What was his name? Tell him. Tell him what his name was. We looked it up afterwards. He's very accomplished. He's a, And then he picked up Wee Man. And he just he threw Wee, Wee Man is from the... Jack Hole. Jack Hole series. Jack Hole series. <laughs> Part of my friend. And then way puts him through a fucking glass table. That's awesome. Well, it's a wooden table with glasses on top of it, I guess. Okay. Yeah. So my sources are telling me, though, that was not a planned thing. That's not for the movie. That was just a couple guys horsing around. <laughs> that was just for Brock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, what a moment. Unreal. Amazing. Yeah. And then next night goes on to win the Royal Rumble. Now TBD on what the fuck Brock does next. Yeah. yeah. That dude, when you see him, yeah, big it's SLB. like, oh, fuck. Okay, this dude is the beginning of yeah. uh -huh. the ev evolution of, like, humans. Mm -hmm. His head, his arms, his fucking hands. He's a, he was literally crafted to beat people up. Yeah. yeah. Just fuck him. <laughs> Imagine him walking up to Wee Man. What's that? Fucking poop. <laughs> All right, shut the fuck up. <laughs> see you guys tomorrow. See you later. Yeah. It's amazing. Absolutely. When you see how, when you know how big he is, then you see Drew standing like at the end. That's a big motherfucker, too. Who, Drew yeah. McIntyre? Yeah. yeah, Kevin Owens was able to get him up. Yeah, pretty crazy. Well, Kevin Owens is a freak of nature. Who's, yeah, you're right. Whose moves did he steal for that? No, no, it's his. Kevin Nash. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all these moves, all these moves, you know. Bad Bunny put on a fucking show. He did. Yeah. Unbelievable. I didn't get a chance to meet him ever in his entire WWE run. Didn't meet him on uh, Saturday night either, but watching him, I was very impressed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You see his crew? It was like 12 deep. Yeah, hey, hilarious looking crew. <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. Hilarious looking crew, though. Uh, but him doing this in front of Brock's face, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. That is fucking awesome. I uh, I enjoyed And then he hit that destroyer on Riddle. Mm -hmm. Amazing. I was just happy those scumbags, Corbin and Madcap, got tossed out. Yeah, they were bullying early there, weren't they? Oh, yeah. Everybody. Those guys stink. They do, Whoa. don't they? They're bad mm -hmm. joke tellers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hate them. Oh, Zito likes them. Zito was, I, I caught Zito one time backstage having a full ha ha chuckle fest with them. No, he's no. not. Oh. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's so fast and so ginormous. Yeah. Oh, he's so funny. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Yes. Zito's giving him a good pop. Sure. All right. We got to get to a, we gotta get to a break. Um, hour two will be on the other side with AJ Hawk. Darius Butler will join us as well. Uh, is anybody texting Shregs and say, hey, we need uh, McVay's guy on the show? Not yet. No, I'll no. do that when I run to the back. <laughs> See you in two minutes. <laughs> You're the best. Um, thank you all so much. Bye. Damn it! The hell are we gonna do now that football's over? This guy doesn't get us. What are you talking about? What? Are you kidding me? We got fucking Morgan State and Norfolk State on right now. Who cares about that? Let me tell you something. Tell that, me. Tell that we found me. out tell a long time ago, okay? Okay. You win $50 on football? Yeah. Does that make you feel good? Yeah. Okay? Yeah, that's why I'm bummed it's over. Guess what? That same $50, you can win on Morgan State versus Norfolk State. It all pays the same. What? Connor, they're right. $50 won in college basketball is the same as $50 won in pro football. We're back! <laughs> Yes!
walk into any hall at the moon and go, wish you were straight from that ledge, my friend. Jumper. We Love could cut ties with all the lies that we've been living in. And if you do not want to see me again, I will Uh-huh. How at the moon is just pianos usually. Oh, no, no, no. no. You wouldn't get it. The Pat McAfee Show. There'll be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, sir! Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. <laughs> Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat the McAfee Show doing? starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to Championship Overreaction Monday, January 31st already. Holy wow. shit. Hour two begins. Right. Meow! Yeah! Can't thank you enough for joining us here at youtube.com forward slash the Pat McAfee Show. How about that one buffer uh, talking right over Robbie Gold's <laughs> kickoff? Oh, yeah. Hey, let's get ready. And the kick from Bob Gold is a touch me. Uh, talks to tables here at Ty Schmidt, at Boston Connor, at Tone Diggs, one half of the hammer. Done. Cowboys is here. How was the weekend gambling for you guys? Really good for everybody in the office, it feels like. Oh, yeah, yeah, we all did really well. Yes, yeah. we did. Hell yeah. It was like... Two super boosts in one day. Why? 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 A pow, bang, 16 million out of FanDuel from our yes. super boost. How you doing? Keep it moving. A pow, bang. Joining us now is a man who went one and one this weekend on his picks. Not too shabby. Not bad. Not too shabby. Oh, it's pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. But all year he's been a prognosticating son of a bitch. Uh-huh. Oh, this yeah. guy's won a college football national champion, a Super Bowl champion. He's won the Ryder Cup as a football player somehow, and he survived COVID. Ladies and gentlemen, AJ Hahn. Yeah, AJ! AJ, what's going on, dude? What's up? I went one and one. I didn't go two and zero. Nah, yeah, you had Rams. Yeah, they won. They did win. Yeah, it wasn't money three line. And a half? Yeah, it, it wasn't was a money line thing. Half. Yeah, it was three and a half. So. Oh, okay, that's fine. Whatever. Hey, the two teams. Well, I guess I didn't say the Bengals would win, but yeah, <laughs> fun weekend of football, wasn't it? Hey, fun, fun <laughs> day of football. Fun day. <laughs> Hot start here on the server reaction Monday. Uh, it was awesome. And we'll chat about both games. I want to talk about you being in Ohio, though. And I've seen a lot of love for Cincinnati out of the entire state of Ohio. You and I have talked about uh, on this show about the frenzy behind Ohio guy, Joey Burrow, being just this unflappable moxie having gunslinger who I think maybe has had to hear everybody talk about Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen being the next Peyton and Tom Brady in the AFC. And although I'm not 100% sure he'll ever come out and say that, there's probably him and a lot of people around him saying, hey, this motherfucker's different. Joey Burrow seems to be an absolute stud. He doesn't blink. The plays he makes when he has to make them, unbelievable. And that entire squad, the defense in the second half, Money Mack making kicks as if Pressure doesn't exist in that world. He's four for four in the last three games, trying to get Adam Vinatieri's record. He has 40 points going into the Super Bowl, which is obviously the most ever entering a Super Bowl. He could potentially break a lot of records that Adam Vinatieri holds in his first year as a kicker in the NFL. But this Bengals team doesn't appear to be going anywhere, AJ. How's the feeling in Ohio? Let's go to the fucking Super Bowl, dude. Yeah, I would say people are uh, are pretty juiced up here in Ohio in the Columbus area, especially. I mean, the thing is, like, the range of emotions that comes from watching playoff games, especially huge playoff games. So I got – I don't know how many texts I got during the first half of that Bengals game. Like, well, it was a good run, wasn't it? We just ran into a tougher – you know, these Chiefs are serious. And Pete and I, like, I never responded to anybody because I, I, I do. I, I know what Joe Burrow is capable of, what that defense is capable of. And, hey, he showed us again. Like, is he going to have to go – and when a come from behind win in the Super Bowl to prove to people finally, like, hey, we're we're a legit team. Listen, I mean, maybe I'm not 100 percent sure, but this is still, and I said this earlier, and it's almost disrespectful to Joey Burrow, but with how many games he missed in his first year, rookie year, and then this team just kind of flipping the switch and becoming what they're becoming, he's so young. It is so early in his career, especially with the games missed from the blown out knee because he was taking so many hits. 
He's a him showing up in the outfits and the costumes that he shows up into. Oh. <laughs> this motherfucker, this dude is awesome. Like I, I bet you, everybody in that Bengals organization is pumped that they have this guy. There's no other guy. And and they're saying there's no human that's ever won the Heisman national title and the Super Bowl. Let me tell you why I think so. If you win the Heisman, obviously at the quarterback position, probably how you won it, your entire life you've been kind of propped up. So your life is much different than everybody else's. You win a national title and you win a Heisman, let's assume you are God amongst yeah. some college places. Joey Burrow, what, had to transfer? Only got to play one mm -hmm. year, does his whole thing, has that built-up natural grit already because he's been looked over. Very similar. Now, he wasn't pick 199, but if you figure out a way to kind of, you know, get pissed off and add chips to your shoulder, Joey Burrow, very similar to Tom Brady, has not had a lot of expectation, I think, unless, except for the last three years of his entire life. I am... So thankful that we get to talk about football with this guy being in it. And I can't wait to see what they do over there. Well, don't you think just not only like what he does on the field is unbelievable for the NFL, for anybody that's a football fan, but then the character that he is, like the moxie he has and the fact he's doing it for the Cincinnati Bengals, the state that he grew up in like that. It's like a, it's a movie that you wouldn't believe if you wrote this thing out. So if they go and find a way to win the Super Bowl, yeah, like this is a, it's a pretty special time for them. I'm, I'm happy for them and everyone with the Bengals. But the thing, too, like this, this shouldn't slow down anytime soon. Like technically, they should become a dynasty somehow with Joe Burrow or be competing with the Chiefs and any the other great teams in the AFC. Like, hey, we're going to be around for the next 15 years, guys. That's exactly like the beginning of this whole thing, what I meant whenever, you know, the conversation's like, oh, the Bills and the Chiefs are about to be the Bills and the Chiefs, the Bills and the Chiefs, the Bills and the Chiefs. Why not Joey B and the boys in Cincinnati? Probably because they don't have an indoor facility. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it could be. I don't know, it's like 18 inches of They're smoke. not getting one now. They're not getting one now, and they they make this unbelievable run to the Super Bowl, and they're going to be practicing outside before they go to L.A. Well, listen, in like negative 20 degrees. Listen, everybody can practice outside. This isn't about practicing outside or inside. This is just about a commitment to us being able to work whenever fucking Mother Nature says today's a terrible day. You're in Cincinnati. There's four seasons. You're practicing under a highway. There's 18 inches coming on a Wednesday. Come on. Anyways, that yeah. grit might be what propelled them to this point, where they can withstand an 18-point deficit in the AFC Championship in Kansas City with Patrick Mahomes on the other side and not even blink. What did the defense do, you think, that made Patrick Mahomes play his worst football we've seen in a long time? First half QBR, like 149.9, unbelievable. They're all dancing, celebrating. Second half, zero QBR is what NFL on CBS is reporting on their Twitter account. That pick... That fumble, the decision-making, the look in his eyes looked like he had lost it, like he wasn't confident anymore. It was like a live bet we get with Goff or Kyler yeah. mm -hmm. or any of these other guys that you can see how they are feeling just by the look in their eyes. He looked like it completely – was it because Brittany and Jackson? Is that – what do you think it was? What, what do you uh, – so I didn't watch uh, Pat's post-game presser. I'm not sure if he referenced his brother and his wife or fiance. Did he? Did, did I miss that? <sighs> I, I, do I not don't know. believe he did, but he might have. He, 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 he might have been like, I heard her and him yeah. at halftime. Yeah. They're dancing <laughs> yep. and celebrating yeah. mm -hmm. and all that. The, I, the most surprising thing, I think, Pat, though, was when Sam Hubbard, like he's buying time, buying time forever down there. And when Sam Hubbard gets him down and Pat fumbled, and that would have ended the game, like right there pretty much. I'm like, geez, like the fact that he, he – let that ball go and they backed up the field goal and everything. But the fact that he fumbled right there, I'm like, man, that's not a Patrick Mahomes type thing. Like, you know, hey, if I bought time for an hour, I'm the last thing I could do is fumble or throw a pick right here. Yeah, and he could have, could have thrown it away. I mean, there is – I know you said he lost 30 yards on the field goal or whatever, but if I'm Butker, I'm also like, hey, dude, like this thing's yeah. a 25 fucking yarder. Now I got to hit a 40-something to send this thing to overtime in the AFC Championship. Do your job. Okay, do your fucking job, Harrison Bucker. I get it. But that, there was just numerous things that were like, oh, that's not the that's not the showtime, you know? And, and since his defense, though, stepped up big in the second half, made a lot of third down stops when they needed it, too. And they got tons of, like, the pressure. Hendrickson, what an unbelievable signing. Like, how smart do yeah, they yeah. look? Sam Hubbard's playing very well. Like, these guys, they have some studs, though. They're not just they're not just overachieving. Like, they have some really good players. Hey, that Bates dude, who I didn't know existed yeah. until a few weeks ago, he is a ball hawk. That He did that on purpose, too. I think he literally, I think he, he jabbed yeah. that ball to his teammate there. Right? Like, yeah. 
What a play. That is not the, what we've seen out of Patrick Mahomes. And Josh Allen tweeted pain immediately upon the heads coming <laughs> and Kansas City winning it. And Joe Burrow, you saw him go fuck. And everybody said, oh, here we go again. But Patrick didn't have the same look. Uh -oh. You know, it's just it's crazy how that can happen. I don't know what it is, how it is, why it is. But I, I mentioned in the first hour, and I'd like to get your take on this. This offseason, there's going to be a lot of reflection, right? They were one of the final four teams, Kansas City. Like, hell of a year. Like, they'll never say that. But, like, hell of a year. You get to yeah. the AFC Championship, and the expectation that they've kind of set for themselves and the standard is much higher than everybody else. you got to get to the Super Bowl. If you don't get to the Super Bowl, you're a terrible team. It's like a lot of great teams don't make it to the Super Bowl. That's just kind of the nature of the beast. But they'll do an entire reflection. And I wonder, you know, if they'll have a family sit down and just be like, it feels like everybody likes me, mm -hmm. okay, personally. And I know this is very selfish to say because – uh, football is a team sport and a family is a family thing. But, boy, it does feel like the only bullshit I really deal with is be it's because of you two right there. Like, is there – you? Maybe differently this year, you know. Maybe, maybe do we, we don't. Please. Maybe we grow. Hey, you, you guys are thrusted into a spotlight too. You got handed a bunch of money. You could have never known. We all make mistakes, but maybe, maybe you two stop making the, about you two. You know, maybe, yeah. maybe Pipe like you're, down. you're actually not that good of a dancer. Okay. <laughs> and you like nobody's really, you know, like I, I appreciate what you guys are doing, but do it to your friends. Send group texts to your friends. Mm -hmm. Kind of enjoy this yeah. thing. Don't need the story to be about you two every fucking game, it feels like. And once again, Brittany and Jackson, they're thrusted into the spotlight as well. They're young. They're going through their shit. But I do think we'll see an entirely new operation coming out of Kansas City next season, personally, out of the quarterback camp. I think so. And that'll be an, an off-season conversation that'll probably happen. Do you agree with that? I mean, I guess I, Patrick's just in a weird spot. He's in a very tough spot right there. If he does, like, I don't know how he feels about them, you know, on the field pregame, doing all this stuff, bringing attention to themselves. I mean, he loves her, by the way. This is oh, not yeah. like oh, yeah. we're not it's questioning great. their love at all. We're not questioning that at all. We think it's awesome, but that's almost why I feel like we we should bring it up. You really? know, like you got to like tell him, hey, I think we should I think we should have a conversation here, Pat. Is yeah. that what you would do? No, I'm just saying maybe Patrick doesn't want to have the conversation, but yeah. somehow, some way, I wouldn't want. Would you want to have that conversation? No, but let's just say there's <laughs> a couple of people on the internet that are having that conversation for him, like. Hey, why don't you two like maybe think this off season? Oh, let's help our our brother or our, our the father of our child. Uh -huh. Don't you think that they think they they probably friend? think they are helping him? Like, oh, we're just growing the brand. We're just you know everyone everyone's fans. Yeah, like he could say that to Jackson, <laughs> but Jackson has so many TikTok followers that are waiting with bated breath to see uh -huh. you know what. Yeah, he's not he's stopping that. Doing. Listen, I'm a fan. Okay, I'm a fan of his TikTok. Oh, right? I'm yeah. not. I hate it. Yeah, I mean, it's I mean so everybody's annoying. a fan of his TikTok, no. dude. Everybody. Too, I am. Yeah, we all are. We all love his TikTok. No. Hey, just do your thing. Just do your thing. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Just do your... Uh, it's... Hey, congrats to all of them. And maybe they are just taking attention away from Patrick Mahomes. Everybody likes Patrick. It's like the Russell Wilson Team 3 thing. Mm -hmm. Team 3 wants a trade. Team 3 wants a new offensive line. Team 3 wants a new offensive coordinator. Russell, I didn't say any of that stuff. No. And then when you look at the Kansas City Chiefs, it's like, okay, everybody hates Brittany. Brittany is trending. Okay, Brittany is trending. What's it for? Uh, it's all terrible. Okay, oh, no, Jackson no. Mahomes is now trending. What's uh, it's all terrible. Patrick Mahomes is trending. Man, we love that guy. Okay, yeah. so maybe they are doing it right. Maybe that is 100% a thing, but the Kansas City Chiefs should be happy with what they accomplished. Cincinnati Bengals, though, can't wait to see what they do in SoFi. Don't you think, though, that that defense for the Rams, who Aaron that D line, That D-line is what scares me. Like they, Yeah. They have a lot of very explosive, very strong athletic players, especially in that front seven. And Zach now and Joe and them have two weeks to prepare for that. How do we take care of this front, you know, four that they could potentially just get pressure with because everybody yeah. else has proved that they can get pressure with just the front four and then be able to drop back in there and take away what Joey Burrow does best, which is figure out what the defense is in and make the right decision. I mean, that is something that he does way beyond his years. And I don't think anybody truly is talking about how cerebral he is on the field because of how young he is and the moxie he has. But his football IQ is through the fucking roof, Joey Burrow. It's very obvious. But if you got four dogs getting to you every single time like you did in Tennessee, I think that might be tough to get over. That defense, 
yesterday making fucking some big plays for the Rams. Matthew Stafford with that pick that was dropped. That's when the football god said, all right, enough. We tried to give you the goddamn game. Now we're going to do this thing. And his legacy is much different if that ball is caught. But I'm so happy for Matthew Stafford and that Rams squad. But that entire team, I mean, Vaughn Miller's got to be pumped. Aaron Donald's back in the Super Whitworth. Bowl. Whitworth is what, 40 yeah. now, right? 40-something. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I don't think he's just 40. Man. I think he's 40-something. He was with yeah, the Bengals. Playing he his four, he, then he was, yeah, he was the Bengals forever. That's the first thing I thought, wow, Witt's going to play against the Bengals in the Super Bowl. It's pretty awesome. Well, and then Odell Beckham Jr. after the OBS stuff. Odell Beckham Sr. puts together that clip. I mean, that that team is riddled with stories Weddle. like yeah. trying to make yeah. Weddle was yeah. playing pickup <laughs> basketball all season. He had nine tackles yesterday. He, By the way, he went head up with somebody. Oh, oh yeah. Just oh, three yeah. weeks ago. He's probably on the beach. Like, he's just chilling on the beach <laughs> yeah. four, four weeks ago, and now he's boom in the NFC Championship game. There's just so many stories in there, let alone McVay getting dunked on in his last Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. There's just... I'm happy for that Ram squad as well, man. I honestly am. I thought the football gods were on Niners' side, team of destiny type feel, after what, especially what they did to Green Bay and the way they were coming together, Jimmy G story and everything like that. But that Ram squad just two weeks in a row, just stealing hearts, dude. Boom, bang, let's get to the Super Bowl. And Kroenke stood up there with the NFC Championship, so pumped about the billions. Hey! Billions. He invested in the stadium and paying off St. Louis because now they are the kings of L.A. The NFC Championship and the Super Bowl. Rams are representing there with all the stars. It's going to be tough for the Chargers to catch up business-wise. But I'm pumped for that Rams team, AJ. Man, you're right. I didn't think about the Chargers. Like, okay, so here we go. We know the, the, the two L.A. teams, the Rams, probably already had the advantage coming in oh, yeah. with having more fans, obviously. And now they're going to the Super Bowl in SoFi. So, yeah, it's going to be a lot of catch-up for the Chargers moving forward. But – yeah, it's uh, I started. You know what started popping up my YouTube uh, algorithms are videos that people are shooting of them cleaning up around the stadium out at SoFi, so it doesn't look too bad. Like of all, you know, people living around the streets yeah. and stuff. Like, I don't know where they're moving people. Of course, they're trying why to clean would... things up. I, saw I don't know why that came up. <laughs> why? That's, that's they, we're talking about the Rams. You. How happy we are for the Rams. <laughs> yeah, right. You just can't have you like. Well, you okay. know, the Cecil oh, Hotel is yeah. actually got too many bums living around. Let the me city. know. Uh, the Cecil Hotel, you know, where those bums are killing people. That's actually right next to SoFi, and then they. That's what you just said. And then what's nope. that row? Uh, Skid Row. Skid Row is actually the street too, so yeah. far. So they're trying to clean up. What I'm trying to tell you, we've been talking about all the different weird metaverse things. I'm not, I'm not straying away from football. I'm saying all of a sudden this morning, I'm working out, I'm watching different recaps and different things. Uh, on on YouTube, and all of a sudden, these videos pop up in my algorithms of them cleaning up around the stadium. I'm like, man, this is Bro, something's think, up. Think about what your algorithm goes through. Oh man, please oh, on a geez. daily basis, your algorithm's just like back there, like, all right. This one did good. What was it? Terrible. Mm. Toxic. No, you have not. You would be very bored by the majority of stuff I watch. No shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not toxic. It's not illegal. I watch like I illegal. love watching dudes. What? What? Like, I didn't even know there is illegal no, content. Toxic. I'm saying like what I enjoy you watching. You know? What should even be? I'll watch dudes dig a five-acre pond. I like watching guys install <laughs> French drains in people's yards. Like, for what bodies. I really do. Oh, sure. Lucas Lagoons. You're a nut yeah, job. Lucas yeah. Lagoons definitely. Certainly. Serious. Do you big, like into that, big into a French drain. I enjoy watching one particular Paisan lay concrete. You know, I don't mind oh, that. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah, shout out Frank Morales. Shout, 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 shout out. He's in that mud, and he's kind of shaping a, mm -hmm. a balcony. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> awesome. Anyways, let's get back to it. All right, the bums are going to be in L.A. I mean, they are clear. It's the way it is. Welcome Period. To the modern world. <laughs> Where though? Where are they going? That's what I'm worried about. Where are I, they going to move the them? The beach. Hey, we have too many in Indy. Actually, we were thinking maybe send a get couple a bus. down. I thought they all go to Huntington. Don't think it's Huntington that has vastly different rules than everybody else. That like they even have like the most friendly rules. I read an article well, that there was some some outrage because they did move a massive community that is near SoFi. They like just took their entire shit and just threw it away. So. Oh no! That's crazy. No box left behind. What are we Come even on. doing? Have that was that Cronky's doing? Who who did that? Oh, Cronky was holding that trophy. <laughs> He's like, yeah, fucking get them out of here. Mm -hmm. Give them Chargers. <laughs> well, I'm giving this speech to Terry Bradshaw, who's very close to my face. <laughs> there is two street sweepers at right outside. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That is something I guess to figure out because L.A. does have a massive homeless population because the weather is always nice and I think they have some laws that are very welcoming and I guess there's that going on and that's certainly the convo you want to have whenever you first come on the show and you get a chance to chat about the Rams for the first time yeah. going to the Super Bowl. That is certainly... Quick sidebar. It was just a quick sidebar. I didn't try to derail anything. You know that. 
What do you think about that Rams team, though? I, I mean, honestly, whenever you think about that game yesterday in SoFi, there was a lot of red in that crowd. And there was obviously a lot of conversation about the Niners faithful traveling and NFL game day morning live from SoFi Stadium was in invaded by the 49ers faithful. It looked like college game day out on the uh, field set there for a little bit with how loud the Niners fans were on the game. It seemed like there was a lot. Then for the ceremony, it looked like there was a lot of Rams fans in there. It looked like everybody was kind of pumped. I think they're all excited for what they're building out there. But, boy, if they don't win the Super Bowl in their stadium, is that going to be a heartbreaker for them? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Joey Burrow is completely okay with going in there and dunking on all their fucking yeah. dreams and money for sure. Yeah. And we know, like, the Super Bowl – yeah, the Rams would technically have home field advantage. We know it's largely a corporate situation where these companies have these tickets because they're so expensive. Now, the real fans that do get to come for the Rams and the Bengals, like, I promise you, Bengals fans are going to do whatever they possibly can to get out there and get in that stadium. And they will be very, very excited and very loud. If they'll do whatever they can, here we have an announcement to make from our friends at SeatGeek. SeatGeek will be giving away two tickets, hotel and airfare. Wow. Whoa. To the big game. The Ooh, big game? What? Yeah, SeatGeek says, hey, you want to go to the big game? We got two tickets, flight and hotel for you. Wow. All you got to do is download the SeatGeek app. Okay. okay. Fair. Then Makes you go sense. to the promo code section and you type in, thank you, SeatGeek. No spaces. T-H-A-N-K-Y-E-W-S-E-A-T-G-E-E-K. Okay, don't have to buy anything. You just have to go in there, download the app, go to the promo section, type in thank you, SeatGeek, with no spaces, screenshot that thing, tweet hashtag PMS, thank you, SeatGeek. You're automatically entered. They'll be sending at least two people to the Super Bowl with flight and hotel. He's in the office for the next day. We'll try to get that up to at least mm -hmm. another one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Current yeah. moment, a couple tickets, flight and hotel from your friends at SeatGeek. All you got to do is download the SeatGeek app, open the app, go to the promo code, type in thank you SeatGeek, T-H-A-N-K-Y-E-W-S-E-A-T-G-E-E-K in the promos thing, no, uh, mm -hmm. no spaces, screenshot it, then tweet the screenshot of that hashtag PMS, thank you SeatGeek, P-M-S, T-H-A-N-K-Y-E-W-S-E-A-T, G E E K, and you could potentially win. Seems like a lot of steps. I mean, we did have that conversation before we, did, we came yeah. on air. We did. Seemed like that's a lot, but it is two tickets, airfare, and a hotel. Hashtag PMS. Thank you, Seeky. Yeah, this is the big game we're talking about. You this know? is the big yeah. game. Yeah. If there are a few extra steps, what are you going to do? This is the big freaking game. This is the big game, <laughs> yeah. dude. Yeah. The biggest freaking game. It's no joke. Are the homeless eligible to answer? Uh, they would have to download the Seeky app. Go into the promo code section, type in thank you, SeatGeek, uh, take a screenshot of that, tweet it with the hashtag PMS thank you, SeatGeek, mm -hmm. and the homeless person could potentially win. Nice. Here we go. Probably not, though. What's what that? You, what, what you Why you that? Probably not. Well, you know? what is he well, you're saying Why? luck doesn't seem to be on their side often. And Luck's might not be on their side. I assume if Kroenke gets one of that, he's saying absolutely not. I tried to move these bums out of here. I'm not letting now them you come to my he's oh. trying to send them back. <laughs> yeah, you shitting me? Send them to Oregon. Okay, <laughs> done with this shit. All right, so once again, download the SeatGeek app. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go into the promo code section. Yeah. Uh -huh. Type in, thank you, SeatGeek. Okay. Thank you, SeatGeek. No spaces. Screenshot that. Right. Tweet out hashtag PMS. Thank, thank you, SeatGeek. Seat Geek. And you'll be automatically entered to potentially win two tickets, flight, and hotel does the big game. The Let's biggest game. Go. That's awesome. The Shout biggest, story. baddest Shout game. Shout out to Seat Geek. That is kind of a lot of steps now that you repeated it. <laughs> you don't say it. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> but you know what? Hey, what's the what did these tickets resell for? Five grand? Like, what are they going for? Six got, is the lowest. Yeah, they're, but Damn. who knows what that's going to do over the next couple of weeks. People yeah, are talking yeah. about Bengals, Rams. You know, how interested are people going to be? Well, I think if you go Matthew Stafford versus Joey Burrow, that's a big-time story. I had a Twitter uh, poll that I put up last night, actually, and I was excited to see the early reactions. I was excited to see who people thought it was going to be. I asked, is it Burrow in them or is it Stafford in them? Mm. Who do you think is going to win the Super Bowl? Only put it up for 14 hours, and it felt like there was a lot of action early. I think we got like 39,000 votes within the first couple hours, Whoa. or first 10 hours maybe. I'm not sure what the final four added up. Uh, 78,000 votes. Burrow in them. Wow. 61.5% to Stafford in them. 
with 38.5%. I'm surprised by this. AJ, are you surprised by this? Or do you just expect that since I put this out, every Rams fan was in Rams sta in SoFi Stadium. Uh, sure. So they didn't get to vote on this poll and Cincinnati was watching along on the internet. Or do you think this is going to be uh, a telling story for the next couple of weeks that people like the Bengals? Well, I think it's going to go up and down over the next two weeks, how people like who they think will win. I'm, I'm a bit surprised, 61% to 38%. I'm surprised at the gap. I thought it'd be a little closer to 50-50 here with people. But uh, so who are the are there any lines out yet? Are the Bengals a favorite or the Rams favorite? What's going on? Uh, I'm assuming the Rams are favored. So the Rams opened three and a half and it immediately went to minus four for the Rams. Do you think the, the pool would have been different, though, if you would have put Bengals, Rams versus Burrow, Stafford? Oh, you think people are strictly yeah. picking Burrow over uh, Stafford? Try another one. Do another one today, Pat. No, but what about in them? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was the team. It wasn't yeah. just. Oh, uh, you know. People, people don't always understand. What? I got a lot of credit for using NM right, actually, by the way, by a lot of people. Pretty pumped about it. No big deal. But a Burrow in them, that heavy over Stafford in them, whenever it's a four point favorite for the LA Rams in their stadium, is fascinating. I think the issue that the Bengals might run into, and it's. These graphics, by the way, for the next two weeks from Dirty, who is a yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. diehard Rams fan, yeah. strap in, are going to be yeah. next level. Right. I mean, we're talking about some great Rams stats and mm -hmm. graphics that are going to be coming out of Dirty, and we're all very happy for Dirty. Oh yeah, yeah. Thank you, Dirty. Boy, Dirty. Yeah. Yeah. Gonna be what? Couldn't be happy. What happens? What? What are you talking about? I Hi. just, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm over it. It's okay, but the Packers should be in the fucking Super Bowl. They don't choke two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. Stafford's got to go play in the cold, and they're probably playing the Bengals. Well, unfortunately, but they, ain't. but they, ain't. Yeah. but they, ain't. they, yeah, choked. they choked. So yeah, so you know, you're mad I'm at had, Dirty for that? No, it's just you know, I mean, hey, there's the team goes all in, gets all the guys that everybody wanted throughout the season, you know, and and here it they was those are, quarterback so. graphics he was making. He, was, he kept airing off them. Yeah, yeah, yeah he did. Derek <laughs> Carr on there <laughs> instead of you know, Rogers. It's just interesting. I'm very happy for Dirty. Hey, let's talk about it, though. Peyton goes to Denver, goes to the Super Bowl. Tom goes to Tampa, goes to the Super Bowl. Now you got fucking the thought that Matthew Stafford gets traded to L.A., goes to the Super Bowl. How come every other team doesn't just be like, you know what? It seems like the teams that are most, you know, aggressive and try to make plays are actually winning. Mm -hmm. And it's good for a business to be seen in front of 200 million people at the Super Bowl. <laughs> How come we don't do that more regularly? And do you think this is going to make a lot of quarterbacks get antsy about their next home, even though some reports are saying that all is hunkadory right. at home? And uh, I'm not talking directly about Aaron Rodgers, but like Russell Wilson, you think about who it's been kind of uh, glimmered and talked about. Aaron Rodgers, it's been talked about a little bit. There's a lot of success being painted in other places when quarterbacks get up, go on, and do their thing their way. I mean, that that's right in front of our eyes. It's happening right here. Yeah, I, guess, I mean, Stafford, he got traded. So he didn't like, he didn't. But he asked for his trade, which is yeah. a. Bingo. Which is, yeah. I mean, I agree, though. I understand yeah. what you're saying. Similar yeah. situation. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't have the power. He didn't like, he wasn't able to go tell him like, hey, this is what I wanted. This is what I'm doing. Well, but Tom opted yeah. out of a deal. So he yeah, actually he had to go yeah. do that and do his own oh, thing. Peyton got time cut, time. I guess. So it is. So like, Aaron would have to demand a trade if he wants out, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Coincidence, McVay was in Mexico and that's where he went. Okay. Who, Stafford? Yeah. I mean, that was the first time I, they met. I think oh, all those crazy. rich whites have like that one place they all go Cop to. Cop all? I think they all have, the, I think they all have <laughs> that tight circle they, of they, friends. They, yeah, they, are, they do. I've seen a lot of people in the uh, suites that we know up there in oh, Stafford. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. 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 That's funny. Hey, how about people thinking the Lions won that trade when it happened? That's <laughs> awesome. Was so Who did? A lot of people. Everybody but us, dude. What are you even talking about? Really? I'm not saying we're the only ones that were on Stafford's side because obviously there's other people that are on yeah. Stafford's side, but we were one of the only places, and it's documented. You can go fucking check it, dude. Yep. Where as soon as I was forced to watch these Lions games because Foxy's a Lions <laughs> fan, so I'd be forced to watch this guy. He's unbelievable. If the, the Rams land, I was trying to get him to fucking Indianapolis, and allegedly that was almost happening. And then obviously the whole Carson Wentz thing where he walks in and he heard some stuff. I mean, whatever mm -hmm. the case is. But if he goes to that Rams team, he has McVay, he has those weapons. We were very quickly like, oh, this guy's this is awesome. Good for the Rams going all in. Oh, the Detroit Lions get three picks. 
and they get a little cap space yeah. save about their future, and they get an aging Stafford who's never won a playoff game. People up. were saying Goff was straight up better than Stafford in this office. People were saying that. Yeah, there was actually oh, people man. saying, oh, look at old Gofford up there. Yeah. In, wow. yeah. That's in, not what I said. Goffard, yeah, that's what you said. The Gofford no, no, originator no. is actually a Rams fan. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, because Stafford had a couple bad games that's there. That's right. This is the first year in that offense with Stafford. First year and everybody's like, all new players, everyone around him. Yeah, I mean, Odell halfway through. Joining us now is a man who I think uh, was maybe on our side, but there's a chance he sent this guy no, stinks. No, no, he said he stinks. Uh, okay, yeah, joining I us remember. now Joining us now is a man who we have a lot of respect for, high football acumen, host of the Man to Man podcast alongside Antoine Bethay. Nine years in the NFL in the secondary at corner, nickel, and safety. Potential defense coordinator for a team near you, ladies and gentlemen, Darius Butler. Yeah. Thank you guys. What's up, fellas? What's up? Hey, no suit today. What's going on? I had to switch it up. My 5G's tripping. Every, everything's, you know, fucking going. Who did I say stinks? Who did I say you said stinks? Stafford stinks. Yeah, you said it. Let's get right I into it. I did not say Stafford stinks. That's a lie. I did not say Stafford stinks. Foxy I'm said it's talking about it. Dude, Fox, but I'm pretty sure you said it. I'm pretty sure Connor said it. I'm pretty sure Tone said it. I'm pretty sure Gump said it. I'm pretty sure Nick said it. Nick did shake my hand today, though. Let me sh- I want to shake his hand. All I said was I don't understand <laughs> why you love him so much oh, yeah, when he yeah. left now Detroit. Now narratives are changing. By now we know. Yeah, now we know. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't say he stinks, but shout out to Gertie. Shout out to the Ram. <laughs> I'm happy for Matt Stafford, man. Same, you know, same draft, obviously, the number one pick. And it, it, he's rewriting his narrative, you know, in front of all of us. I think everybody would have looked at his career and said a lot of pat, uh, stat patter. Uh, you know, not a winner in the playoffs. Went a long time not getting a win in the playoffs, which I, I did. You know, I was tough in that regard. But now you're seeing with a good team. Obviously, the Rams went all in, chips all in the middle. Um, and he's, he's, he's punched his ticket to the Super Bowl. So uh, he's definitely rewriting. Even if he doesn't win this game, I think he's rewriting his narrative for a lot of people. I agree. And it's only the first year there. It's only going to grow, you would think. Who knows how the cap will work out, but they'll make it work over there in L.A. They seem to be a team that can do that. I assume it'll come to a crashing end at some point, like the Saints have $71 million over the cap, and they got to figure that out. But let's talk about that Rams team. Let's talk about Stafford here before we dive into that defense, maybe being a massive problem for that Cincinnati Bengals team and protecting Joe Burrow. But Joe Burrow has the moxie to get through it. I'm excited to get your take on that. Matthew Stafford almost throws that pick. It was a punt. Ooh. Yeah, it is dropped. Does your entire defense and secondary know, oh, we're fucked now? You get you drop? <laughs> Does Is that something that is natural that kind of just rains on everybody? Because that's the football gods almost saying, hey, here's the game. You give it away. And it almost yeah. automatically turns the shift of the way the game is going to go. Is that something you guys feel and know? And how terrible do you feel for old Cuzzy right now? He's thinking about that Man. for what, the next four months probably? Forever. Forever. I mean, that was a chance to go to the Super Bowl, obviously. Uh, it's a big, and honestly, those are, the, those are the toughest ones to catch. You know, the ones they seem like they're in the air forever. Nobody's around. Like you said, it, it feels like a punt. Uh, but uh, he was dropping. As players, you know, it's, it's about 60 plays out of the 65. That's kind of a sparring match. You're going back and forth. And then it's like three or four or five plays. That is, that's the difference in the game. That's obviously one of them, man. It sucks for him. And that's a part of the reason I was tough on Stafford, too. He's going to give you a couple of those. You know every game, but um, Tart man, that 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 really, you know, really sucks. I, I I can remember vividly every interception I dropped, never on that type of stage. So I can imagine what he's what he's going through. You even saw when he was playing the game, like a couple plays after, he was still kind of like, oh, damn, you know, still shaky. You got to have short term memory and not let that same uh, play, you know, beat you more than that play. But uh, it, that, that's tough to get over. See, but what's this uh this Rams defense gonna do to Cincy? And like, what can Cincy do? To beat him, like what do they? What do they have to do? They got to keep what six, seven man protection. Like how are they going to keep Joe upright? And how do they win? Man, this this you got Von Miller, you got Aaron Donald up front, um, and this offensive line they've been getting beat up, you know, all, all playoffs. So that's going to be the key to the game is trying their best to protect uh, Burrow. And that you know you lost CJ as well at the tight end position for um, for Cincinnati, but you can't count this guy out, man. Uh, every game, you know, this is a I can't remember another two-year turnaround like this. You got unbelievable weapons on the outside. Um, you've had some injuries in that Rams secondary, but they they play well um, down the stretch. Eric Weddle is living, you know, every retired DB's dream. <laughs> you know, you get off the couch, you go in there, play a few games, and now you're going to the Super Bowl. Uh, but it, it, that's going to be the biggest thing uh, for the Bengals is how do you how do we protect now? How do we keep him upright? Um, he shows some elusiveness uh, in this AFC Championship. Uh, against this Chiefs front, but um, that, that's going to be the biggest thing. Is Aaron Donald 
This is the one thing that he doesn't have on, on his resume. A lot of people already call him the greatest uh, defensive player ever. So uh, he'll be he'll be fully stoked for this. When the last Super Bowl he was in, he he didn't make much much of an impact. Um, so I'll be excited to watch uh, ninety nine. Hey, Eric Weddle said he's playing pickup basketball, too, you know, just a few weeks ago. And now he's leading the Rams in tackles and a tackle for loss. And Unbelievable. Now he's in a Super Bowl in L.A. And he's the last image, I think, of when Tom Brady walked off the field was him and Weddle having like a 45-minute conversation. I mean, Weddle's a legend, obviously. Hopefully he goes out there and enjoys this, which I would assume he is. Let's talk about that Bengals team. What did they do in the second half? That made Patrick Mahomes look like he was like Jared Goff or Kyler or one of these guys. <laughs> he just seemed like he lost all of his confidence. I don't know if it, like a defense can sense that when you see it, but what did they do that made him look like a vastly different quarterback than we had ever seen Patrick Mahomes look like in that biggest stage? You think? Uh, uh, I would. I would have loved to see what his uh, his whoop, his rating, his heart rating, all that shit that they were putting out. What it was in that second half because. Uh, Momentum. A lot of people that never played the game, obviously, say momentum isn't a real thing. But the, uh, the, the Bengals had momentum going into that halftime, even though they had given up 21 points. They almost gave up another touchdown. Eli Apple, who put that target on his back in his chest, made one of the biggest plays of the game right before the half, keeping Hill out of the end zone. He didn't get any points. And situationally, you rarely see the Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes, you know, fail in those, in those uh, situations. But they did, and I feel like that gave – that Bengals team, that momentum going into the second half. They got to stop coming out of the second half. Chiefs got the ball first. It was kind of downhill for there. You know, they, they got the rush lanes. You know, Patrick Mahomes, that first half, he was scrambling, making unbelievable plays outside of the pocket, which on the back end, you can't cover those guys for that long. And up front, the Bengals, I, 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 most likely a big point of emphasis at halftime was rush lanes, keep 15 contained, keep them in the pocket as much as possible. Obviously, let's eliminate the big plays from 10 uh, with Hill. And uh, they made those plays. And to hold those guys to three points for an entire half, they scored those three as time expired in regulation and then actually played defense after the Chiefs won the toss and went on offense first, got a stop, and then uh, went down and got the win. I mean, just an unbelievable job by that team. And obviously Joe Burrow, you know, making plays down the stretch as well. Let's talk about Joey Burrow. Whenever you see this photo of him before he gets to the stadium and he's dressed, whenever you see this dude get on the bus or get on the plane, <laughs> dressed like a fucking G. I assume that everybody in Cincinnati's locker room loves him, but they talk about that culture that they're building over there. They're young. They seem to get along very well, incredibly confident. And this guy oozes moxie, D. But I, I mean, he has to have heard everybody talking about Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen for the next 10, 15 years in the AFC. Yeah. And down in Cincinnati, I mean, there is a whole different conversation around this guy, I assume, in that locker room. They, they, I'd assume they think they got one of the guys, like, hey, we got a goat in the making yeah. right now. And there's no reason not to think that, especially when he looks like this on fucking game day. I love this. I mean, th this dude is unbelievable. I mean, it's swear. I mean, and they asked about the chain after, asked him if the diamonds are real, his answer. I mean, just listening to him talk after, obviously, you know, showing up with the swag and the way that he plays, um, you know, he's been telling guys all along, like, hey, like, you better get used to this shit. You know, let's get rid of that <laughs> underdog mentality, you know, not having an indoor facility and all, you know, yeah. our owner being cheap as hell, all this other shit. Let's get the winning games and let's let this be, you know, the expectation. Um, you saw what he did at LSU and he's brought it right, right into uh, the NFL. And uh, you look at his numbers against teams over 500, Against the spread, I want to say it's like 15 and 6 or something crazy like that in the NFL. Um, so uh, this guy, man, he's special. Um, and the Rams are favored by four right now. That's going to be that's gonna be interesting to see uh, see which way that goes. But I'm excited for him uh, and excited for the city of Cincinnati, man. They, they, they deserve it. Uh, those fans deserve it out there. And this is a, a team that nobody expected to even win their division this year, let alone be in the Super Bowl. So yep. uh, I love it. Love to see it. It's not a great Super Bowl for this particular show. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Not the best. No. I mean, the Rams have the worst PR guy <laughs> by in, the in the NFL. In yeah, the by NFL. Far, that yeah. guy, he stinks. We got no access there. And oh, then, we've been burying the Bengals organization <laughs> this fucking <laughs> entire season. <laughs> I mean, it's tough. And you just brought it back up. I was hoping we could just skirt right by it. But we'll cover this thing stern but fair. Yeah, yeah uh -huh. has to. Sir, right. Fans, has everybody, to. Hey, go have good football. That's, That's right. right. Go ahead, Ty. D, but it seems like Cooper Cup has 10 plus catches and like 150 plus yards every single week. And he has for the last like 10 weeks. What can the Bengals do to make sure he doesn't just like single-handedly take them out of the game and, and kill them i mean he's a guy you gotta 
you got to double team this dude as soon as he gets off the bus. Like I, I don't, I don't understand how coaches, how secondaries continue to let this guy. I, I don't, I literally don't know what it is. You look at his numbers on just third down alone last week. He had like seven catches, one hundred eight, two touchdowns on just the money down. Like he's a guy. Like you, you can't give him fair ones. There are no one on ones. We have to jump this guy. We got a guy have two two guys four four eyes on him. Every play, especially in the crucial downs, red zone, third down, uh, he, he's that good. And then you bring a guy like Odell um, over, he's it's clear he wasn't an issue in Cleveland. Um, you know, you got a quarterback like Matt Stafford. They're still not all the way on the same page yet. But uh, Odell's special, so even leaving him one-on-one. But at this point in the game, Odell got to beat me. Van Jefferson, like the, those guys got to beat me right now. I can't let the offensive player of the year should potentially be the MVP with his playoff performance. Uh, Cooper Cup, I can't let number 10 beat us. I just can't let that happen. I feel like he's just on the same page as Matthew said. They talk about that 6 a.m. meeting where they're together every single day. They're reading, yeah. they're reading different plays, I think. Stafford's calling a play, but I think there's a good chance that whatever the pre-snap read is by Cooper Cup and Stafford, I don't know if there's anything yep. that they can really fucking do. The Odell Beckham Jr., you mentioned it there. Adding him is massive to that entire success at Cooper Cup, right? Because who got hurt? Somebody got oh, yeah. hurt. Who got hurt? Robert there? Woods. Yeah. Robert Woods gets Robert hurt. Woods. And then yep. all of a sudden, it's like, well, uh, OBJ is now stepping into a different role. But having that fleet of weapons at Blanton. Blanton. Yeah, Blanton, yeah. Blanton, Blanton, got hurt. yeah, Blanton's become a guy in this entire thing. Having that fleet is a big deal, right? That's why you can't just double a guy right off the bus because you got to worry about everybody else. And is that what D coordinators are damn, thinking? Damn, hey, damn that, Pat. We still got a double cup. <laughs> like I said, I mean, they, they, they got to beat us at this point. Like this dude, because like you said, when it, when, I, when you play a zone coverage, a soft zone coverage, Cup is going to get open. He's going to he's gonna produce. It's very similar to what uh, Travis Kelsey does in Kansas City. Like you have a play. But when you have that type of rapport with your quarterback, like you're going to find a soft area in the zone and you're going to get, you know, the quarterback's going to put the ball on him. So he's going to be productive. It's just specifically on those money downs, third down and red area. That's where we have to allocate however many resources we need to the stop 10. And somebody else got to beat us. I can sleep at night if Van Jefferson, you know, has a 10 catch, 150 yard performance to beat us. But I can't let Cooper Cup have another 12 catch, 180 yards. And you know, convert nine third downs in the Super Bowl. Like you, you, that's that would be inexcusable, and it has been all the way throughout the playoffs. Uh, it, it is unbelievable. But but uh, Odell, shout out to Odell Senior, man. He took care oh, of the yeah. thing. He did what had to be done. Oh. Got him the hell out of Cleveland, and now his son is headed to the Super Bowl. Man, I love to see it. That's good for the family. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Keep, uh, for the family. What about this family. Rams defense? So what what should their plan be in the secondary? Well, obviously, Jamar Chase, all the other weapons the Bengals Ooh. offense has. Can you see him doubling Chase? Does Ramsey, does he travel? Like, what do you? What would you do? Man, I, I would – man, you, you're paying a guy 20 million a year at corner. I would I – would, you travel with one. You know, you go over with one. And then Higgins his, Higgins is a guy – Does he that normally do that, you. though? He, he's done it. He's done it. I mean, you've seen it. He plays in the slot a lot as well. But um, and bringing Weddle over, I'm sure Weddle will have a lot of input, even though he's not even been there a month. He'll have a ton of input when it comes to this defensive game plan. Weddle, I mean, he's one of the smartest players. Just seeing him from the outside looking in, we had an opportunity to interview him on the Man to Man pod last year. And uh, just his, his FBI, his football intellect, uh, he'll have those guys in good positions. And you put, you put Ramsey on, you got it. And that's not – I don't know which way I would go in that matchup right now because Jamar Chase, he's special, man. And if he's one-on-one with Ramsey, Burrow's still going to test him. He's going to have to win those. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that's what I would do. I would put Ramsey on Chase and then, you know, lean that safety help a little bit on the Higgins and the other guys. And then if Chase becomes a problem, we got to put in a little safety help with Ramsey too. So we got to get this bowl by any means necessary. And those guys are front. Aaron Donald, this is what we brought Von Miller in for. This is why you brought Odell in for. You went – Chips all in. You have no first or second round picks till whenever. But this is why you do it. If you win the Super Bowl, you know none of that matters. Uzama, by the way, hell of a run yeah, all yeah. season. Sorry about it. Hated seeing that. That's not good. Said he might come back though. He said he could possibly come back. It's an MCO. Okay, let's go. Here we go. Here we go. He hopes all to come right, back. Hey, let's tough. go. Yeah, he hopes tough. Uzama. Shout out to Super Bowls too, man. To who? The Super Bowls, man. Got back to back. Uh huh. Fifteen yeah. milli. What? 16. Uh, hey. It was like 15 8, so we're saying 16. 16? They're 16 saying, oh, you rounded up. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah. saying oh, yeah. 16. Yeah. yeah, 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 because 
there's probably people that bet that that didn't hit the button too, you know? Yeah, yeah so, for sure. Uh-huh. It's probably yeah. some other money's there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's 15.9. Oh, yeah. We, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you second? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Hey, last week, they got me last week, you know? They did. They got me. I was down. I was out. Called the ambulance, but not for fucking me, dude. I'm coming back next week, championship weekend, going back to the back. back. Bang. 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 Plus 600 and plus 500. Shout out to the Super Boost, man. I guess it's like a, a 14% hit rate on the plus 600 or whatever, even yeah, though the thing was not... boosted. We took a lot of money, and thank you for everybody riding alongside of me. You know, yeah. this year has been a lot of hit, a lot of miss, a little bit more miss, some hit, a lot more miss. But like yesterday, we're getting hot going yep. into the Super Bowl, D. But go ahead, uh, Connor. Yeah, D. But you just mentioned the Rams' defensive front. Do you think they'll just be able to rush three guys and then drop eight, so they won't really have to, you know, worry too much about you know the Ramsey Chase matchup, and they could actually probably just double him and Higgins at the same time? Uh, you could do that as a switch up. That drop eight, you know, that's when you get towards the red zone. You saw um, the Bengals made a huge play. What was that when? Uh, when uh, Mahomes fumble, yeah, yeah, you drop, you drop eight, and it's hard for that because the field, you're not worried about guys running by you. The quarterbacks are looking for windows. You got eight guys, and you have that spot that triggers late, so you can do that. But you can't, you can't make a living off that. You want to apply pressure as much as possible to these quarterback, make them make quick reads and accurate throws, and um, you know, got guys like Burrow and Stafford can do it. But they're also going to give you opportunities to make plays on the ball. So. When they do, just like when the Bengals did last week with uh, B.J. Hill, big fella got that pick. Um, you just got these, these turnovers, man. They are huge in these uh, in these games. But now nah, you can't make a living off off dropping eight or you know blitzing the house. You know those are kind of switch ups that you want to do at, at the right time. Okay, well I can't wait to hear more from you. Hopefully as these. This week, kind of, we might need you back this week again. It's going to be a boring week. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Pro Let's Bowl. do it. Pro Bowl. Oh, Pro Bowl, yeah. Pro Bowl. Yeah. Pro yeah. Bowl. Yeah. Hey, we'll talk Pro Bowl strategy Thursday, mm-hmm. Friday. And then, obviously, can't wait to see you in L.A. at Radio yes, Row when you join us in person. You're the best. Ladies and gentlemen, host of the Man to Man podcast, Everything DB, nine years in the NFL in the secondary, Super Football IQ, friend of the show, Darius Butler. Thank you, yeah. buddy. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate you, fellas. See you, man. Let's get to a break here, uh, and then we'll come back on the other side with some um, five-hour energy phone line calls. Ooh, yeah. Once again, SeatGeek is sending two, t- two people yes. to this big game yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. with flight and hotel included. All wow. you have to do, download the SeatGeek app, go to the promo code section, type in thank you SeatGeek. That's T-H-A-N-K-Y-E-W-S-E-A-T-G- E-E-K. Screenshot that. Tweet it with hashtag PMS. Thank you, CG. And you automatically be entered to potentially win. It's already trending, I guess, which is hilarious because that is so many steps. I mean, this this is maybe the most intricate giveaway we have ever been a part of. Mm-hmm. Download the SeatGeek app, go to the promo code, type in thank you SeatGeek, thank you, screenshot thank you. that, tweet hashtag PMS, thank you SeatGeek. You could potentially win tickets, flight, and hotel to the big game from our friends at SeatGeek. We're back in four minutes with some phone calls on a five-hour energy phone line. Can't thank you enough. Good luck out there. Cheers. It really comes down to, and, and uh, pardon my French, but uh, giving less fucks. Uh. I think that it, it's a it's a maturity that comes from aging, from making mistakes, from failing, from being too sensitive at times, from taking things too personal at times. And it's about growth and learning uh, not to be indifferent because I think indifferent people are uh, terrified of, of, of making choices and it's a it's a cold place to live it, it's about choosing what to care about and the things that you do care about it's less things it's not trying to be a part of every conversation or or, or get involved in in, in everything or, or uh, setting yourself up to be offended about certain things it's it's caring more about specific things and less things and and with those things it's it's finding ways to solve the problems because true happiness doesn't come from eliminating all problems in your life, I believe. It comes from solving the problems that you have and dealing with the pain and the suffering that that is natural in life and is a part of life. It's not fleeing from pain and suffering and running from those things and not dealing with the emotional situations. It's looking at those head on and saying, how can I 
solve these problems and make my life a little bit better. And that's what I've tried to do the last couple of years. And I've talked about in the show as well. It's about perspective. And when you, I truly believe this, when you focus on the things that you have more than the things that you don't have, you allow yourself to let gratitude sink in. And when the gratitude sinks in, it, it is always accompanied by joy because you're focusing on the blessings that you have, not on the things that you don't have, the things you wish you had, the way your life, you wish your life was that much better, you wish you had this, you wish you had that. You'll always be unsatisfied. But when you take solace in the fact that you're where you're supposed to be, and that life is gonna come at you with pain and suffering and failure and frustrations and mistakes, and just trying to solve those problems and do a little bit better next time, it allows you to, I think, be a little gentler with yourself and admit that you're a human, you're gonna make mistakes, you're not going to please everybody. There's always going to be a 500-pound elephant of, of uh, you know, possibly hatred and, and malice waiting for you. Whatever decision you make, and that's just part of life. You got to deal with it and and, uh, and and just try and be better the next time. So you feel freer. It feels like, huh? You kind of feel free. Yeah, there's there's a liberation that comes from uh, caring less about the things that don't really matter in this life. I think. And, and I will say, you know, if anything, and I know the two of you. It, it, you know, the best on this show, and I, so I won't speak for the other boys, but I'm sure they're very similar. There's a lot of joy in being unapologetically yourself. And I think in life, we respect people the most often who are that way, who don't try and change or be different or, uh, you know, grow meek in situations that, that require courage, that go quiet in situations that that require communication. And that's what I appreciate in both your friendships is that you guys have always been yourselves. And Pat, I haven't known you as long as I've known AJ. I sat next to AJ for nine years and I had so much love for him and appreciation for the friend that he is. But I always admired and and was inspired by the fact that AJ was always himself. And he believed uh, that who he was uh, was exactly who he was supposed to be. And he didn't have to be different or put on a face for anybody. He was unabashedly himself. And I think there's a lot to be, uh, you know, a lot to be gained from, from doing it that way. And, and what I love about you and the boys is that's who you are. You guys show up every single day, not with an agenda, but with an open mind and, and create conversations around important topics. And then you just be yourselves. Welcome back to the Pat McAfee Show here on Championship Overreaction Monday, January 31st, 2022. AJ Hawk to our left. All the boys are here. Let's go to the 5 Hour Energy phone line. Go to 5 energycom Use promo code McAfee to get 10% off your order of incredibly tasting 5 Hour Energies. I had the orange this morning, first Ooh, time. Okay. How was it? Delightful. Okay. Uh -huh. Delightful. I need a long weekend this weekend, AJ. Long weekend for old Pat McAfee. You had a lot of uh, you had a lot of airtime, didn't you, with the wrestling? Well, I had that first match, and then I had four hours, and then we had the yep. Men's Royal Rumble at uh, the end. Yeah. I'm not good. I'm not built for that, by the way. I've decided. I was chugging coffee. I'm not a coffee guy. No. I was chugging coffee for the first six people of the Men's Royal Rumble. <laughs> Like just trying to wake back up. All right, here we go. Let's <laughs> let's go ahead and enjoy this. I was pumped. It was awesome. It was exciting. But those those premium live events just I can't ever get into a yeah. It's pretty tough. Get into a little groove. Yeah, I'd like to get going here. I'd like to oh my god, <laughs> I'd like to get some shots up. Yeah, I would like to get some shots up. I'm, I'm a Volume I'm a street shoot. shooter, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a, yeah. yeah, let me get up there and get hot. All right, let's go to the phones. Let's go to Mike. <laughs> Mike in Omaha. What's going on, Mike? Hey, Mike, Pat, boys, what's up, guys? Hey, Pat, Mike, boys, what do you want to talk about, brother? I thought you called me Mitt. My bad, man. I misheard you. All right, all good, Mitt. Uh, what's going on, man? What do you want to talk about, brother? Hey, before I get to my question, I just wanted to real quick say uh, the 49ers can beat us for 20 years in a row in the regular season, but when it matters most, they just can't get over. Woo! Fuck off, huh? Six in a row. How about six in no Super Bowl for you? <laughs> Good for the Rams getting a big time win. This is huge for McVay. Oh yeah, honestly. Didn't you see him at the end when it when there was like when they were counting down the last seconds? He had his headset off. He looked so 
like relieved slash excited for what was to come next, I feel like. Well, there was also some terrible decisions made by yeah. McVay in that uh-huh. game. All right. There was a couple challenges that were very dumb. Yeah. Immediately upon seeing the replay of the ball down yeah. and the yeah. fumble was like, he was very sure of that. Like oh, yeah. he threw the flag down, picked it back up and was like, yeah, we got the ball. And I, I like thought to myself, oh shit, they got the ball. This is huge. Go to a commercial break, no replay. Then we get back on the other side. They show the replay. It was like, Sean, you need somebody different in your fucking headset. Yeah, what are you doing? I don't know who's watching these highlights, but that needs to happen. So I think he's relieved to get to the Super Bowl. There's always going to be mistakes made, but good for him getting back. You know, after the last Super Bowl with what the team did, they go all in. A lot of pressure on him because he's saying, hey, you give me Matthew Stafford, you give me Odell Beckham Jr., you give me Vaughn Miller, we'll go on a run. Son of a bitch wasn't lying. Yeah. Rams, Bengals, two weeks, big game. See you in hour three and six. Oh, nailed it. Another one. Let's go. Look how good you're getting at that. That was good. <laughs> I mean, it's fucking overreaction Monday, dude. Yeah. Championship overreaction Monday. Got to hit home runs on, on overreaction Monday, you know? See McVay's dad? He looked oh. like he could hit a couple dingers. Yeah, Tom. Oh, yeah. Tom or Todd? What was his name? Tom? Tom? Tim? 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 I don't know. He was yoked, though. Yeah. How old oh, is yeah. his dad? His dad, like, 52? He's got to be young. Yeah, I guess if Sean's 36, right? Is that old? Tim McVeigh. Yeah. Tim, there it is. Fuck. Not iffy, just Tim. Wow. First name or nickname or? It just says Tim. Probably Tim. Tim McVeigh. Tim. He might be playing linebacker in the Super Bowl. Maybe depending. Tim McVeigh. Are you sure it's Tim McVeigh? I was gonna say that's a tough draw. That's why I said Tim, what? That's why I said the iffy is not on there. Oh, because Timothy McVeigh did the bad guy. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, what did he do? I don't know who that Spelled is. Spelled different, right? Oklahoma. Just T I M. No, oh, the last name. The last name. <laughs> yeah, v- McVeigh at V E for him? He's uh, V E I H, right. I think. Or G H. They've both done very different things with their lives, though. Similar names. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would say oh, so. For all. Similar names. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I love that half this room, though, the only thing they were thinking of whenever they were, you guys were just thinking of the bomber there. Yeah. Well, I, I looked look, over yeah. here, Ty's Hard face was, to. <laughs> Tone's face, <laughs> AJ's thinking about Jeez. the bomb literally as soon as he heard the name McVay, but Tim <laughs> is honestly yoked up. Yeah. He's coach, I assume he was a coach. How did, um, Sean was what, in the Davis Gruden camp, right? Yeah, I think uh-huh. so. His, what, Sean's grandpa used to be like the GM of the 49ers, Tim, right? Tim was a defensive back at IU. Oh, so wow. Sean used to run rots against him all day, every day. Yeah, and his grandfather was the head football coach at University of Dayton. Wow. Tim McVeigh just lifted weights, dude. Sean McBay, McVay played in Miami of Ohio. I know, I know guys that played there with him. Oh, what do they say? Said the dude was super smart, like scrappy, tough, gritty. Classic. What you, what you would think. Yeah. Hand hard hat. Well. Hard hat, yeah. yeah Good pain. motor. Right. Uh-huh. Coach's son. His grandpa. Well, actually. Coach the giant. Coach's grandson. Yeah. <laughs> and was a GM? <laughs> GM's grandson as well. Wow. Mm-hmm. That guy's going to run good routes. He's going to catch the ball. Oh, yeah. He's going to be gritty in the in the paint if he yeah. has to. Block when he needs to. Uh-huh. Yeah. He's going to give maximum effort on it. He's only 36 yep. years old going to a second Super Bowl. Now, now, the pressure is definitely on him much more than Zach Taylor and the Bengals, but it says that's John, pretty awesome. It says, well, Zach Taylor only got hired because of the success that Sean McVay had. No offense, Zach Taylor, but I think that's the outside narrative that he only got hired because of uh, Sean McVay's initial success. Sean McVay said, oh, they hired me when I was 30. That's insane to think about now, looking back. He's like a veteran coach now. Now he's at the age of 36. It says a lot of John Madden feel, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah, it does a little bit. It's weird. John Madden feel, but he sounds like Gruden at times when he speaks. But we're just talking. came up with that. We're talking about maximum success, all in, buy in, young, handed the keys. Man, how weird is it too, though? Like Madden, coach early, success early, retires early, huge success, which the majority of people in America absolutely know John Madden as from the game and as an announcer, not a coach. McVeigh could absolutely have that same path because he's already being courted by network. John John Madden retired when he was 42, right? After 10 years? Yeah. Was that mm-hmm. what it was? Wow. Mm-hmm. 42? Because the loss is in that documentary. Devastating. Yeah. yeah. He was crushed by him. I would assume McVeigh is the same. Yeah. yeah. Whenever you're younger, you just have, mm-hmm. and you get handed a massive title, you go. If you're built in a certain fashion, I guess, like, I'm not going to let down the people that have put this massive amount of pressure and expectation on my young shoulders. And because he was able to handle it, a lot of other people got jobs who maybe aren't the same exact way, but. 
What a stud. He's going to be very good on TV, too, whenever he fucking decides to be. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, I feel bad for him, though, because all these losses, he remembers every play that he's ever been a part of. So you have to think he has to relive these games over and over and over again. Five to ten years from now, I'd like to be like, how about that challenge remember? on that fumble? Mm -hmm. You remember that? Oh, yeah, we were yeah. thinking we had a different Bad angle. Decision. I remember. I never forget. <laughs> Bad decision. Bad decision. You learn from it. You move on. Stafford QB <laughs> sneak challenge, too. It was like, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah. what are you doing? Yeah, he was short. <laughs> Clearly sure. <laughs> yeah. But if you get a challenge right, you should keep a challenge, by the way. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. for sure. The fact that we still have Gene Steratore going on the goddamn air and saying, well, you know, if he gets this one right and the next one right, then maybe he can get another one. Since he lost this one, he won't get another one. He only got one left. It's like, if you get one right, you should be able to keep it. Like, if I said, hey, you're fucking up the game, and then we get it right, I shouldn't be punished potentially for what my next one is. You should like, all Make it, take it. We're shooting hoops. Make it take it. That's exactly. all it is. And I don't know why that isn't a rule already. Uh, everything's stupid. All right. We got a minute until hour three. Shregs might be joining us. Here oh, we go. Come on, Pete. I'm not 100 percent sure. We'll definitely answer some more. He's in. Yeah, okay, so Shregs, Shregs will be here in 19 Shregs. minutes. We'll Boom. ask him about, you know, Sean McVay's thoughts on his challenges from last night. We assume he's been chatting with McVay at some point. Yep. We'll also talk about the Timothy McVay stuff. Okay. All right, we're back in about <laughs> a minute or so with hour three. We'll see you then. Here we go, at the top of the class on the road, and it's time to run it up, yeah, you know, maxed out, put the pedal to the floor, ayy, on the road, here we go, here we go, yeah, we winning by a landslide, never see me coming, I'm a landmine, yeah, I ain't taking orders in command line, yeah, you about to see me on demand line, you know on demand, if you ain't know, you about to understand, yeah. I got the team by my side, right hand. Yeah, take it to a string. The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, sir! Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. <laughs> Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat the McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two. One. <laughs> Welcome back to this Overreaction Monday, January 31st, 2022, hour three shall commence right now. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. Enough here at youtube.com forward slash the Pat McAfee show. The toxic table is here at Ty Schmidt at Boston Connor. Ever so toxic. You guys are great. Hey, Thank no, you. you're great, Pat. Pat. Thank you. Hey, congrats on having a great championship Sunday. But basically, all of us in here predicted the right mm -hmm. bets. Mm -hmm. At Tone Diggs was here. How you doing? How you doing? Keep it moving. Hammer. Done. 15 minutes after this show ends every single day at youtube.com forward slash hammer. Done. And to my left, your right, AJ Hawk, who's a college football national champion, Super Bowl champion. AJ, you've gone into this game that we're going to wait two weeks and overanalyze and won and got a chance to hoist that Lombardi and kiss that thing after all the other dudes kiss it and lick that thing because it's a lot better in person after you've dreamt and fantasized about it forever. You got that big old ring that takes a left turn to get onto your hand. I mean, you've <laughs> been there, done that. What would be your advice be for the Cincinnati Bengals squad who's young and has no idea what the Super Bowl is and the distractions that could potentially arise? And what would you say to them if they asked you to come in and speak in the locker room? Uh, well, I don't think that's uh, going to happen. They probably oh, have enough money. people telling them what? what to do. But what they will do, I know what we did when you have these two weeks, the first, like the early part of this week, you take care of all the garbage that you don't want to handle. Like they even brought in like wives and family and let them know like, hey, this is what the schedule is. This is what we're going to try to do. All of the hotels, like when you're, we're gonna, they're going to charter a plane for the wives like later in the week and try to work out tickets is what you do right now. The first couple, like the first week. They want you to get all your garbage taken care of so it's only football Like once you get to the site. How many rooms do you need? What are the rules of the rooms? Maybe we're going to go to another hotel as well, which I assume Brown will not do. No. no. There will not, no. Be, there will not no. be two hotels, if I had to guess, over there. But all that stuff, it is 
So much to deal with. And you would think that the Rams have a massive advantage in that because they're older. They've been in L.A. all year, so they kind of have distractions as everyday life. It's a Pro Bowl thing. But I don't, I, this Bengals team feels like they don't even know what they're – they have no idea how big the moment is or how hard it is to be where they're at. Go ahead, Tone. Also not shocking to deal with all of that. It looks, sounds like Zach Taylor came out and said, yeah, we're going to try to get there as early as possible because we want to practice in the warm weather and not – Oh, yeah. Here. Well, he's trying to get out there because there is a – Massive shaft oh, yeah. shaped snowstorm coming yeah. through. Uh-huh. And this, hopefully, that highway. You Is know that, that late this week? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Hopefully, it's Wednesday, well Thursday. Hopefully, that highway that's right over the practice facility is coming from the right direction so mm-hmm. that shaft like snowstorm can maybe get, you know, trapped over the right. highway. Uh-huh. You know, so the field has a little bit of room. But Zach Taylor knows, you know. We are at quite a disadvantage. Andrew Brandt actually just put out a tweet, and you know Andrew <laughs> Brandt really well. He was the person that signed you yeah. uh, for your first deal. He said, hey, everybody knows that this Cincinnati Bengals team is the most miserly team, which I had to use context clues. Miserly means cheapest. That's what I'm fucking talking about. <laughs> okay. I've been doing that my whole life right there, and that's awesome. <laughs> at Andrew Brandt, former um, front office yeah, member. Yeah, VP mm-hmm. of finance, I think, was his title. It might be miserly. For that's the right. Oh, that's a great word. Uh, so amazing, Mike Brown and the Bengals are in a Super Bowl, says Andrew Brandt, a man who's been covering and working and an agent in the NFL for a long time. Bengals have always been most miserly team. <laughs> resisted hiring full-time scouts and spending on facilities. Brian and Jerry Jones would have arguments at owners' meetings that were great theater. Ultimate clash of styles and branding. Well, one of them says, hey, we would like to win by, you know, doing business. And the other says, I got a team, fuck off. I ain't doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Two very different styles. And once again, we have been pointing out this all season, maybe the last couple of years, about the Bengals being super cheap and miserly, obviously is a great word to describe that. But that is no offense to the players, the coaches, or the fans. This is just strictly about your ownership, being able to cut the corner financially on everything and having a roster filled with grit and be able to make it. It is an unbelievable tale. It is an unbelievable story over there. Oh, it's it's huge. And and I've said before, Mike Brown's daughter, Katie, is a huge part of running the team right now, so it's going to stay in the family. We know that. But, I, yeah, I mean – is it possible you think if they didn't cut corners and do all this stuff that they would have been to a Super Bowl between the last 30 years and now? Well, I mean, that's certainly one way to look at it. You know, it feels like it's wor- hey, it worked this year. You, they've drafted well as of late. They've signed some key free agents and they got Joe Burrow. So, hey, things are looking up. Greg Olson uh, tweeted us that our stat that wasn't necessarily right, I guess. What? Really? Yeah. They, Which one? Yeah, they are not the first team in 31 years to make it to the Super Bowl without an indoor facility. What? Uh, Greg Olson said the Carolina Panthers team didn't have an indoor facility 2015. Well, they made it or whatever. North. So stat that, we didn't finish the sentence for a city in the north. There right. Yeah. yeah. Four seasons. Bingo. North Carolina. Carolina don't have four seasons. No. Boom. It gets a little chilly, I guess, every chilly. once in a while, and they'll shut down Uptown or whatever it is. And, yeah. All mm-hmm. that stuff, but it's vastly different, Greg. G-Reg. All right. Yeah, come on. Tepper's going to How would he know? Hashtag way. stat that, by the way. Yeah, stat, stat that, that, Greg. Hashtag stat that Tom Brady's retiring. Ooh. Ooh. Is he? I think so. Are we, are we waiting for the video? What are we doing? Yes. I think that Shadow Line is at work right now. Maybe it's the man in the arena finale. Maybe it's the Let's Go podcast that's happening with Jim Gray right now. Yeah. Um, get your mortgage. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the tough All part. right, Tommy. So there was speculation this weekend by Jeff Darlington and Schefter about your retirement. Anything to say there? And then Tom will give some very long answer about, you know, how much the game means to him and loves him. And I think he'll loosely... You know, once again, mm-hmm. loosely address it. I don't think the Let's Go podcast is going to be the finale. I might be wrong, mm-hmm. but I don't think that's going to be the case. There is going to be a banger of a video that's going to hit the internet. Oh, and yeah. it is going to How go, long will it be? Uh, maybe 5, 10, 50, maybe 10. Maybe. Dang, that's long. 10. It's going to have a lot to say. I mean, I mean it, could be, it could be five hours. It's Tom Brady. But, like, how long does he know? Like, oh. okay, how do we condense some of this? Oh, you're saying maybe five minutes, three minutes, something like that. Maybe no, that's... I mean, it should be. Ten would ten is fine. I think ten would be good. I think the interesting thing about it is we all know that he's pissed that he's not getting yeah. a chance to do this himself yeah. and that Jeff Darlington and Schefter just cucked the entire moment right there. I mean, they just cut it off. What's Darling- Shefty saying? What's he been saying, like, with the whole situation? They, ESPN is sticking by their reporting. They, uh-huh. I mean, day after all, there might have been disagreements on other platforms, and we know Tom's dad went and spoke somewhere, and Tom's agent released a message. ESPN has been pretty steadfast. We're confident in our reporting. We're going to stand by. The day afterwards, they actually let off 
Sports Center with the Tom Brady retirement news after Rafa and Medvedev do this five and a half hour clash in Australia where Rafa wins his 21st major more than anybody. I mean, congrats, congrats, Rafa. Rafa. I mean, that whole thing just happened. Had the world talking about tennis. That never happens. I mean, there's only a couple different times. Rafa wins, becomes, you know, the whole big deal. It's a massive ordeal. They lead off Sports Center. Tom Brady to announce his retirement. It's like, well, everybody else is saying that they're not 100% sure if that's the case. They're trying to back off, let Tom have his moment. ESPN and Schefter in Darlington has just kind of, mm -hmm. you know, drifted off. But I think that's the reason why we believed it is because Darlington was tagged in it. And Darlington's been in the Brady camp. So... I think it's imminent, but I think Tom was not exactly, you know, pumped that everybody else got to I, make his. I message. hope, I hope for everybody's sake that likes watching Tom Brady. I hope he is so pissed off that this was leaked. He didn't get to do his own way that he comes back for one Fuck more it. year. One more Just year. like, hey, you know what? Always got to find another chip on my shoulder. This is it. This is my like. How awesome that! What if like Giselle was like Tom? Just play one more year, please. Just do it for them. Just to tell these guys that you get to end it. They don't get to end it for you. Yeah, you go out on your own terms, not on fucking Schefter's. That'd be Bob. awesome. Yeah. How sweet. That, that would be, be so cool if he was like, yeah, you know what? You're right. I mean, Jack and the kids and everybody have missed me for the last 20-some 20, 20 years. I've had, no, you know, I've committed my entire being to this thing. You've sacrificed a lot. But since these fucking cockroaches <laughs> decided to break my story. I will play another year. Yeah. Tell Gronk he ain't retiring. Tell the boys we're back for one more go. Let's go ahead and do this thing. And that's what B.A.'s saying. B.A.'s like, hey, you're going to let these motherfuckers fucking tell you? <laughs> yeah. B.A.'s trying to spin that narrative as well. I, I don't... If This is just like the accumulation of information situation where everybody kind of thought something was happening. But to go on the record and say, no, this is definitive. We talked to Ian Rappaport last hour. Like, that's a big step. Like, that's a huge ordeal. And he said he's reached out to people and said, hey, I have this news. I'm going to break it. I have to break it. And that's normally how it goes with insiders and the sources of the inside information. So I wonder if you reach out to Tom, if they reach out to Tom. I don't think so. It just feels like they had a good beat on what was going on. And once again, Darlington being attached is the reason why the whole world, us mostly, in the sports world was like, oh, this must be real because he's been in a camp. And that's why it's so interesting that this came out because you mentioned it with Ian. Like this this basically, I mean, you would assume that this kind of ends their relationship. And if he, if he is close to Tom and he got the scoop on Tom going to Tampa Bay, like everyone kind of knew no one was going to report it. So they could you would assume that Darlington was going to get that information from Tom. Like it just doesn't make sense that he kind of wouldn't let him just kind of do his own thing. Cause uh, Tom, I, I feel like this is kind of like a, all right, fuck you forever then. But did Shefty do it first? Did Shefty do it and tag Darlington and Darlington's like, Hey man, we weren't ready. That wasn't per, the public yet. He said per me and Jeff mm -hmm. Darlington. Okay. So I assume Darlington's, I'm sure Shefty reached yeah, out to Tom's ahead. camp, right, and said, I'm running with this, and did they just not respond? Yeah, Tom Brady is retiring from football after 22 extraordinary seasons. Multiple sources tell Jeff Darlington and okay. me, says Adam Schefter. More coming on ESPN.com. So as soon as me, personally, I'm not going to talk for everybody. As soon as at Jeff Darlington's in there and it's Tom Brady, your initial report is, or your initial thought is, oh, fuck, all right, that's gospel then. Yeah. Because that's what Darlington does. And then since then, it's all been Schefter's this, Schefter's that, Schefter's this. I wonder if Tom or somebody called Darlington said, what the fuck? How's this all happen? Well, I told Schefter we couldn't release it until Tom. He did it without me even knowing. So maybe that's why Darlington has kind of snuck through the cracks on all of the, you know, it got loud against the Insiders game. Yeah, right? very, it big got time. very loud. Still uh, is, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Luck was trending, too, because, uh, you know, Schefter doing what he did to Luck with his retirement. In the fourth quarter of the preseason. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, that, like that he, he was taking flack big time all weekend. Yeah, it doesn't matter, though. Schefter's still going to be able to break whatever the fuck Schefter wants to break. True. Yeah. And he is a Michigan man, too. So, you know, Brady and him do have that connection as well. So, you know, maybe Brady actually gets Michigan to withdraw Schefter from ever being an alumni. <laughs> And going there because of this, because he's that pissed off. I could see it happening. I honestly, I think, especially with how Tom is like kind of taking control of the narrative of who he is as a person, yeah. podcasts, documentaries, interviews, we're learning more about him now than we ever have. Him not being able to say thank you to his teammates mm -hmm. or his former teammates and his goal and his whole thing, that probably is something that gets a little bit. Oh, yeah. A little pissed off. His agent came out and said, uh, yeah, we'll wait for Tom. Hmm. 
to say it, maybe, mm -hmm. yeah. is kind of what his agent said. I understand the advanced speculation about Tom's future. Without getting into the accuracy or inaccuracy of what's being reported, Tom will be the only person to express his plans with complete accuracy. He knows the realities of the football business and planning calendar as well as anybody, so that should be soon. Or fucking, he was in the lab doing a voiceover for Shannon. Oh, yeah. yeah. He well, steps out of that lab and all of a sudden fucking, oh, Schefter and Darlington just reported that you're retiring. When? Just now. We're not going to be done with this video for what? Another day or so? What is even going on? Tell them to go fuck off. Get my dad on an interview. Yeah. Agent, you get out there. <laughs> well, it's happening though, isn't it? Yeah, but it, it, I'm doing it. Yes. I'm doing it. Then the man in the arena, which Rapport brought up, is on ESPN. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting. Uh -huh. They Seth? dragged Wickersham out last night too on Sports Center as well. Seth? Yep. What'd he say? He's saying the same thing. He said Brady found out there was more than football to make money this year, basically. Oh, I had a lot of that too, a much smaller level. Wait, but... you think that's why he's retiring because he can make money off the field? Uh, he said he found happiness in other places other than ba than football for the first time in his life. Okay, and that makes he, sense. And I he also that. found out he can make money still. Mm -hmm. So I think Which those. He know, yeah. I mean, Tom's building an empire. Like he already has one, but you could tell like everything he's into. Like he's he's setting up for the next 10, 15, 50 years. I feel like so that's definitely true. But yeah, I don't know. It would be interesting to see exactly what Tom says. What made him finally pull the trigger if he does retire? Well, you know, like Peyton watching Peyton hustle right now. That guy's working harder now than he was yeah. whenever he was playing. He's on Saturday Night Live talking about <laughs> Emily in Paris. Yeah. yeah, crushed it. Oh, absolutely crushed it. Oh yeah, he's the best ever. The best ever athlete to do SNL. By far, I, I don't know any other athletes that have gone on there off the top of my head, but I concur completely. Absolutely. Tom, ba Tom Brady, JJ, they were all great, but Peyton just killed it. He kills it. Absolutely crushes it. He's, he, he has good time. He has good delivery. He's funny. Mm -hmm. But not just that. You know, he's got a whiskey he's selling. He had yeah. Monday Night Manning. He's got like six shows they're promoting uh, from Omaha Productions. I mean, he is hustling. He's going to own a football team here soon, probably. Well, that's yeah. what I think all of this is for. All of this is for to run up the numbers here. To get what if he and Tom do it together? Ooh. Well, that's that's what I'm like. There's teams, multiple teams now that are potentially going to be up for sale. They're friends. I think Peyton's trying to run up his value right now. Like, I honestly believe why else would he be working as hard? He is working his ass off right now. Yeah. Now, I know he's a busy bee and a worker and he wants to do that, but then once you hear his name's a part of two different groups that are going to maybe buy the Broncos, it all starts making sense. Like, oh, he's trying to run up the tab right now, he's trying to run up the money. You would think Tom is thinking similarly business-wise post-NFL, plus with how much fun he's probably having with Man in the Arena, Let's Go podcast, his family. Does he want to have to deal with the day-to-day -day of the NFL that is outside of just his control, all the other bullshit and decisions that happen? I'm not saying that Tampa Bay, but I'm saying as a whole, whether it's COVID protocols or everything else like that, you could see how somebody, even the greatest of all time, the best competitor of all time, maybe one of the most competitive humans to ever exist alongside the other humans that are in his world up there, it's just, you could see how you get to a point, I can make the money, there's more money to be made, I'll be able to hang out with my family, I won't have to deal with all the bullshit. I, I can easily see how he found fulfillment and happiness out, off the field, but he's not going to be happy with fucking Darlington for some time. I don't no. Know. no way. I think Darlington needs to start writing a little fucking piece about, hey, I am sorry for betraying everything you really thought I was, but... Also, you're retiring, so I don't give a fuck. I'm a newsbreaker in the NFL. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when you look at the Big Ben stuff. It's like, hey, everyone kind of everyone knew that Ben was going to be done, but that no one really announced it until he got to, you know, have that message where he talked about his entire career and said he's officially done. So, it's, like, you see that, and he, I'm sure he's thinking, like, oh, okay, great. Like, I'll be able to do a, a similar thing. And then, well and behold, you know, Ben's retirement kind of gets cucked by by Tom's alleged retirement right after that. How about how about the multiple sources maybe being somebody at ESPN Plus? Us that actually saw the final man in the yeah. arena. Yeah. And they sent a text. Like, hey, chef, do you know that this final one, he's doing his retirement in it? He's like, well, I'm going to text Darlington. Darlington, you know this is happening? Darlington's like, yeah, I've been told, but we're being told to hold off. By who? Tom Brady. Oh, I don't give a fuck. I got ESPN Plus fucking telling me. I want to resources. This guy's fucking retiring. I hate to break it to you. Watch Man in the Arena, also owned by the company that owns me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's probably going to be a surprise. Probably do pretty good numbers, but fuck that. This Twitter account is hot in the streets. Boom. Send that thing. Just like you did with the real sports with Brian Gumble. That was awesome. Uh -huh. He literally clipped every time Antonio Brown spoke, put it into a three-minute tweet, and I don't think anybody watched real sports no. other than just... <laughs> no. 
That's some real power, dude. That's some good power. Maybe this will go into his video. This whole maybe that's why it's taking longer. He's adding this another layer, like oh, misdirection in the video. Well, speculation popping off. There was some thoughts, I mean, on the internet that he might sign up one day with uh, New England. He was going to oh. do that, retire a Patriot after. And no, he also, fucking year. No, I mean, that's not like. Oh a yeah, people deal. were saying that. Also, nah, there's no, a 15 million dollar bonus for uh, Brady. He's going to get his bonus. Mm -hmm. They could ask for it back. They better. I hope they don't, but they could ask for it. Yeah, and even if they do, I mean, he's going to be remembered as a buck. All the photos were him as a Buccaneer mm -hmm. retiring. I told you it was going to happen. I told you <laughs> nah, it was going to happen. It, it won't happen. I told you it was going to happen. Peyton Manning was only in Broncos jerseys for like four years. Oh, you know, you know why though? Because the bum franchise in this city only won one Super Bowl with him, and he did the exact same thing in Denver and set all those records in Denver. That's why. Don't call Sorry, it, a bum franchise. <laughs> it is. They're spending money. Pay Manning, what a waste <laughs> of a career in Indianapolis if you only got one goddamn Super Bowl. Brady, is There's he, multiple Super Bowls coming here to Indianapolis. Yeah, right? it better be, or else people are going to be, you know, pitchforks and the whole entire thing outside Lucas Oil calling for Jim Mercer's team. That's Why? what's going to happen. Why? Because he already promised him that. What? Two Super Bowls this decade. People in Indy, I've heard, they're getting impatient. They're getting pissed. They're not They're not waiting around anymore with Carl Wentz at the helm. Why? Because they want parades. Yeah, they want parades. They want a winning franchise. They want to go to the goddamn playoffs, let alone the Super Bowl. I mean, shit, we got to walk before we can run, and here we are talking about Super Bowls. Give me a break. They're screwed. All right. Let's pivot away from people who are screwed to people that are in a good place. <laughs> The man who co-hosted the Flying Coach podcast alongside Sean McVay, who at 36 is back in the Super Bowl with a brand new team and a brand new mindset and attitude. The man who knows more about the Rams than anybody else in all of media. The man who is one of the hosts of Good Morning Football, which is nominated for all the awards. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Joining us right now on a text message, late text message, an absolute gem of a man, friend of the show, ladies and gentlemen, Peter Schrager. Yeah, baby, What's up, Gentlemen, I'm honored. I'm thrilled. AJ, I see you smirking over there during that last rant about the Colts. I love your facial reactions more than anything else on this show. You're the best. And Pat, I oh, love being on with you, dude. Fucking talk for three hours. Pretty good. <laughs> I appreciate you, Shrakes. I love that as well. I mean, it's one of my favorite things <laughs> of all time. AJ is the best. AJ is the dash of toxicity that this show needs every single day. But joining, well, every time you join us, it's a little professionalism. And we thank you for yeah. that. Award nominated, you know, insider of to the end. Insiders, whenever you think about Sean McVay getting back to the Super Bowl, how happy are you for him? The amount of pressure on his shoulders, his young shoulders this year, had to be vast whenever they bet the entire future of the franchise on Matthew Stafford, then Vaughn Miller. Give me Odell Beckham Jr. as well. Just everything the expectations were for them to have success. Here they are getting to the Super Bowl in their own stadium. He's got to be elated and pumped that they're back. Spoke to him Saturday night for a while, and uh, I said, are you going to sleep tonight? He says, I'm going to sleep just fine. The game plan is good. The guys are dialed in. We had a great week of practice. They wore pads on Thursday. They were hitting. Mm -hmm. They were ready for this thing. Thumping. And I texted wow. them this morning because last night I was texting them. I got nothing back, which is always humbling. Um, and then this morning <laughs> I, uh, I shot him one, and I'm like, hey, how's it feel? Congratulations. Let me uh, please – be a kiss ass here for you in this morning uh and he wrote back and he was like we got one more to go so i don't think it's mm -hmm. that hey this great relief of beating shanahan or i don't think it's this oh man well jo jo you know jolly willikers this was neat and did you see that dicaprio was there there wasn't i wanted that it i wanted to be able jolly to talk Willikers. about it uh jolly willikers um <laughs> but it, it doesn't seem that way i think he knows he's gotten to this point before and he knows that there's still more work to be done and as cliche as that is his mind is kind of wired that way, whereas I would be enjoying a couple of days, maybe three, four, five days this week of being like, I just, I just beat Shanahan. I, everyone told us we were, we were, we were done middle yeah. of the season. Nah, that's not him. He's not wired that way. That's awesome. Shregs, do you think I, I was mentioned to Pat earlier in the show when they showed McVay when the game was finished, he looked kind of relieved on the sideline. Obviously, very, very excited. Is he more relieved or excited the fact that he's in the Super Bowl? And I'm sure now he has to feel a little bit like the weight on his shoulders. Like, okay, man, I got to get this one. I don't want to lose too. I thought he was very candid last week in the in the media sessions. I believe it was Jordan Rodrique from the uh, from the Athletic who asked him, like, you know, how do you feel? Thirty six years old, it's your birthday. 
And he's like, I, you know, it's crazy that I've been a coach for five years. He's like, it feels like it's been dog years. And he said it with a smile, but this has been a toll on him this season. And, you know, the ups and the downs, the players missing because of COVID. They lose Robert Woods. Everyone is, is out on the Rams after they lost a few games. Everyone's out on Stafford after he throws a few pick sixes. And I don't think there's this, you know, F the world, us against the world mentality. But I would be lying if I, I don't think that there was a great feeling of triumph yesterday to finally beat Kyle, who he's six years younger than, who he worked under for four years in Washington, and who has they had, worked together. You know, <laughs> what? Yeah. Isn't that hilarious? I mean, when they went to that graphic yesterday, oh, I just kind of grinned. I'm like, All right, yeah, that, that is a fact. That is a fact. Did you know Matthew Stafford went and played high school baseball with Clayton Kershaw? Do you guys oh, know that? No. Um, now he's in the Super Bowl. You're lying. <laughs> there's a lot of those nuggets, but. I feel like, you know, for all of us on the outside, it's like, oh, what a great relief. He never has to answer about Shanahan again. He has a chance to avenge that Super Bowl loss. But the truth of the matter is, I, I don't know if he is, is as in tune with the outside noise. He's got enough pressure on himself. He's the kind of guy that is a sports history nut, and, like, he knows what was at stake the second they started playing in week one. Okay, so how do you think this – let's go big picture here for Sean McVay. He's 36. Happy birthday. We missed it. We should have sent him a gift, but their PR people yeah. stink, so who cares? <laughs> mm -hmm. So the, the Sean McVay is 36 <laughs> years old, massive amount of success. They literally leveraged the future of the franchise for him to kind of make a run right now. This is all eerily similar to a man I'm just learning about here as of late with the Madden documentary, right? I mean, they, wow. at some point, like the amount of energy and pressure and buy-in, does he has he already uh, like admitted to that? Does he understand that the amount of you know, success and pressure that he is in right now is a real thing? Or do you think he was like built for this and you don't think it's a big deal at all? I think it's a great question. And he hasn't even crossed that bridge with me. But like, if they were to win, I would not think he's stepping away from coaching just yet. But like, I, I, I wonder, like, you know, Madden was 42. He's 36. What could he do in the next six years? I don't know if Sean McVay is one of those guys like Belichick who's going to coach till 70. He is a really smart, ambitious guy. And I, I think he's got... Uh, great aspirations to make a difference in the world beyond just football too. So we'll see. But again, not married yet. He gets married this summer to his fiance for many years, Veronica, who's awesome. Congrats, no, guys. Guys. No kids, has no kids. He's completely invested in this coaching thing and he has given his life to this coaching thing. And I sure would like to think that, you know, that, that he has that greater perspective. But right now, he's focused in on football, and he only wants to talk about the Super Bowl and nothing more than that. Let's talk about Matthew Stafford getting to the Super Bowl. I thought it was a very cool moment when he was standing up there, oddly close to Terry Bradshaw, talking about the entire game. And, you know, the moment with the confetti behind him, and he was thanking the fans. And for years and years and years, everybody would talk shit on him. You know, Pad Stafford is the Bleacher Report gridiron thing. This guy could always throw the ball well, but he could never— Never win. He can never do this. This year, the Detroit Lions won the trade with McVay because they got golf and three picks and everything like that. How good does it have to be to be Matthew Stafford? And do you think there's any of those conversations between McVay and Stafford? Like, fuck everybody. Let's go ahead and get that. Do you think that is I the do. way McVay is? Or how do you think uh, Stafford's kind of handling this whole situation? I do. And I know you've got a Lions fan there in the building. And it's like, you know, he had to thread this needle where he didn't. He didn't piss off at the fan base. And then he also exited with somewhat fairly decent terms with Detroit, unlike how things unfortunately ended with Calvin and with Barry. And I think he did. And I don't know many Lions fans who are like, you know, F him. He got to like, I think everyone's kind of happy for him. You got to think about this, Pat. And 13 years, he never complained, never said a peep, just kind of went about his job while Breeze and Rogers Played with and a broken all these other back. contemporaries. They just went ahead and they did their thing and they won Super Bowls and they won and they got MVP talk and he had the, the arm and the demeanor of all those guys. The first year he gets a shot, the first year he gets a shot with all the pieces around him and the coach and everything. He's got them in the Super Bowl. And I get, I mean, look, this is a 32 year old guy. Great dude. I mean, all right. I worked sidelines for Fox for years. If you don't recognize my face from the games. It's because I did a lot of Lions games. All right, I wasn't on the A team. I wasn't Aaron Andrews. I wasn't Pam Oliver. Shit, I wasn't any of them. I was on a lot of fifth, sixth, seventh crews, which meant a lot of days in November and December doing Lions games. And I would do those production meetings, and Stafford could not have been a cooler dude. He understood the score. He got what was going on, held his head up high, and while other guys were playing for playoffs and Super Bowls, and he had his moments, sure. This guy just took it, injured, played tough, played hurt, always brought it. 
and for him to have this moment now, good on him. I, I don't think there's a single person with a soul or with a heart who can watch Matthew Stafford and be like, I don't like that guy. Shregs, what about you look at the other sideline, Zach Taylor, another young coach. Do you have a relationship with him? Have you had many interactions? And like, how oh, yeah. do you think uh, how do you think he's going to do oh, in yeah. this big stage? Oh, yeah. Zach's the man. Zach is one of the most understated dudes, and you know the story. When he went to the bar after they won that wild card round against the Raiders, he got carded. And I'm like, that's Zach Taylor in a nutshell. Like, the fact that they asked for his ID is great because that's him. Uh, when Cliff Kingsbury took Kyler Murray in that, or not Kyler Murray, took uh, Zaya Simmons in that draft, it was in that awesome palatial you know, sick house. The first pick was Zach Taylor, and he was in a room like I'm in right now. Nothing on the walls, and just like, oh, we'll take Joe Burrow. Like, that's Zach. There's no ego. There's no sizzle. There's no pizzazz. It's just ball. His, the, his father-in-law is Mike Sherman, which is interesting, the old NFL coach who you know very well, AJ, um, from his Packers days. And he's been in the coaching world for a long time. Ever since he left Nebraska, he's bounced around from Texas A&M to the Miami Dolphins for many Nebraska. years, and now has finally landed with McVay and then got his big jump up. And again, a, an awesome dude. Players love playing for him. And last year, after they lost to the Dallas Cowboys in week 14, his career record was 4-20-1. And he gets up in one of these media sessions, and he looks, and he's like, I know we're going to be great here. I know we're going to win a division. I know it. I'm asking you all just to believe in this team because it's there. And gosh, what a cool thing to check back in on now, about 14 months later and where they're going. Uh, and he's taking it in stride. Great dude, though. You guys would love him. Zach is awesome. Yeah, and if the owner wasn't so misery, they probably move on to a new coach so they don't have to pay multiple coaches. Yeah, exactly. But the patience pays off. And Zach Taylor, who you, four and 20, I mean, that would be fireable in any profession if you went out there 24 times and failed 20 of them. But that patience, that culture build, and Joey Burrow and that crew being so young, it feels magical over there. And, Pat, I would add to you, like, so you got the Rams, and last night it's Pachin it's you know De Niro's there, and it's Jamie Foxx is in the house, Jamie and they're Fox? showing all the celebrities. Oh, no. You know, and they've got everyone, and then you've also got cool Von Miller and Odell and McVeigh and Hollywood and every. Then there's like the Bengals, which if the Rams are number one on like the the let me tell you, let me explain, let me explain. If the Rams are like the poser, Johnny come lately, let me drop in, let me be famous, all that type of deal. These Bengals fans have been through it now. 33 years without a Super Bowl appearance. They were there. I was in Kansas City yesterday. So many Bengals fans and they all wanted to tell me, Pat, A, love you on the McAfee show. And B, oh, they wanted to tell me, I traveled 16 hours from North Carolina to be here. I traveled eight hours. Like, you couldn't get a two different polar opposite fan bases, stories, franchise. You go to the owners' meetings, Stan Kroenke's got, you know, here we got this giant, awesome new spaceship in L.A., and then you got Mike Brown in the back of the room, like, vetoing certain rules. He's like, is that economically, fiscally smart? Like, it is a fascinating <laughs> dichotomy of new NFL, like glitz and glamour L.A., and then old school NFL, smaller market. We build through the draft, and we sign veteran free agents like Mike Hilton and Eli Apple to take us there. Very different teams. Very cool. Yeah, I hate that. I mean, I love that the Bengals are having success, and I love that people are saying, hey, shout out to you for being on this show. I do feel like we have pretty good uh, contingency of Cincinnati fans. Who day? Who day? Who day? We appreciate you. Who day? Who day? Who day? I hate the Browns having success, though, because I don't want any other owners to think that this type of bullshit is actually a winning <laughs> recipe. I, I don't know if it's possible anywhere they else. They players this year, though. This year was different. They went and got Trey Hendrickson, paid him a pretty penny. Mm -hmm. Okay? They spent money on him. They went and spent Well, you have to. The CBA actually says you have to spend a certain <laughs> amount of money. Like, that is something yeah. you have to do. But I do yeah. like that that crew of guys that they have playing there, coaching there, they don't give a damn about anything. Like, hey, we're just going to go ball. And Joey Burrow seems to be the perfect human for the Cincinnati Bengals and lead him. Go ahead, Ty. Shregs, do you think yesterday was Jimmy uh, G's nail in his coffin in San Francisco? I mean, every, he's been taking it on the shins for the last several weeks here, and I feel like if they would have won, who knows, maybe he comes back. But do you think he's done, and if he is, where do you potentially see him going? Yeah, and I know, I mean, Lynch is one of my guys, and obviously I know mm. Kyle well, and I know Jed York, the owner, in a, in a fairly, you know, professional <laughs> manner. <laughs> name drop, name drop, name drop, name drop, name drop. Um, I don't know shit on what they're doing with Jimmy right now. Okay. That's basically what I'm saying. So, like, they wanted to get through the season for sure. If Trey Lance had blown them away, though, I, I don't see why Trey Lance wouldn't have been in the field. Like, let me give you a, an analogy here. When Mahomes was in... Kansas City, that whole season that Alex Smith was taking him to a division title and all that. 
everyone in Kansas City was telling me like, you gotta see this dude. Like, you gotta see this dude. He's lighting it up. No one was saying that to me on Trey Lance. That's something against Ooh, Trey whoa. Lance, but Ooh, but if Trey Lance, there, not a peep. If Trey Lance had been blowing everyone away in practice and blowing everyone in the games, like I don't think you you would have necessarily you know it wouldn't be that much of a question right now. Now they traded three first round picks. Jimmy's got a big contract. It's a nice easy rip of the band aid. But gosh, they got pretty close with Jimmy. And if Trey Lance isn't fully ready to go, I, I, I don't know. Like, do you, do you not do that and say, hey, let's run it back one more time until Trey is ready to go? Maybe then you can substitute Jimmy out for Trey Lance. It's, it's a really interesting decision. And I'm not sure that it's such a slam dunk that everyone else on Twitter thinks it is. Trey, you're saying a lot of muffled mouths over there about old mm, Trey Lance. Yeah. Maybe it's the masks. Oh, could oh be. probably. Maybe. Probably. Yeah. Maybe got to go down to LA. It's out of respect right. to Jimmy, I think. They wouldn't, they wouldn't do that to me. They wouldn't say, like, yeah, we got. Out of respect to Jimmy, they all love him there too. Okay. Well, Patrick Mahomes played in that last game against Denver, I believe, of that season in one. And everybody's like, ah, this is the guy. Trey Lance has not had many of those. No, no, no. no at no. all. Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, Shrakes, what can you tell us about Tim McVeigh, Sean's dad, not the oh, other he's one? The man. He is the yeah. man. Does he just crush yeah. beers in the gym? Why? That's what right. I love. Let me tell you. Let me tell you about this guy, Tim McVeigh. All right, who I who is not the Oklahoma City Tim McVeigh. There it is. Okay. Okay. Thank, uh, you. Thank, uh, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He's not a different guy. That's too All different. right. So his father, Tim McVeigh's father, is John McVeigh, who was the GM of the Niners and has five Super Bowl rings. Tim McVeigh played at Dayton with the Grudens and like is like part of the whole Gruden okay. family. He played for John Gruden's father, if I'm not mistaken. Um, doesn't go into professional football, instead goes into television and advertising and is one of like the most successful advertising guys in the Southeast, in Atlanta, of all places. This like, dude, like a big legend. damn ham guy? He was like the Mad Men? Yeah, he's the, dog yeah, he's the guy. Um, huge, what? huge personality, awesome guy, and is like oh, Sean's number one support system. But that shot of him yesterday, jacked in the Rams. So look at that picture. Tim this guy <laughs> is the dude, and his wife Cindy's awesome, and like they are just a cool family. But uh, Tim McVeigh was a player in college, and then went into the business world, and has had great success there. Kind of respected. They skipped a generation with the NFL, and then. You go with John McVay, five Super Bowl rings, and then the grandson is now in his second Super Bowl in four years. Sean McVay says, my father's father. That's yeah. right. <laughs> Has five. <laughs> my father just yoked selling advertising. Yeah, everywhere. that's right. That son of a bitch is placing ads all over the place. He's got one of these for ads. <laughs> advertising. He's got yeah. the Don Draper, uh -huh. big John right. Don yeah, yeah. Draper. Yeah. Exactly. Don Draper. He's not Pete Campbell. He's Don Draper. Yeah. That's right. Well, oh, well, I know a lot Pete about Campbell. him all of a sudden. I just learned the last week about Don Draper. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, go yeah. Ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, Tone. Uh, Tone. Sorry, bud. Trey, talking about dongs out here. Yeah. yeah. Trey, is there a point <laughs> in this? Uh, yeah. I'm toxic. Okay. What are you talking about dong ham? Yeah, I'm not talking about John Ham's dong. You're the one that talked the about ham it. I wasn't that's truth. No. Dude, it's not not toxic. I just learned it this the other guy day. Guy has an 18 inch penis. So when he <laughs> reported that's it. Fault. That's yeah. advertising. Yeah, that's advertising. Go ahead, Tom. Shregs, uh, is there a point in this hiring process where the Miami Dolphins go, "Oh shit, we fucked up," and, and hire Flores back? <laughs> no, I think that that bridge has been burned. That did not end pretty between the two. Uh, <laughs> But the finalists that you're hearing, it's really interesting. So, like, Mike McDaniel is a possibility, Let's who I go. saw last night. They show him in the booth, goes like this. And I told you guys about him a couple of weeks ago. One of my favorite guys in football. He's a finalist there. But Dayball, I thought they were hot on Dayball. He ends up going there, and now you're hearing Harbaugh's name again as a possibility. So they might be back at square one, but it'll all work out for all these teams. But I do not see Flores going back to Miami. Now, Flores, maybe New Orleans? Flores... Maybe Houston, Flores, maybe back to New England now that there are some departures on that staff. I don't know. But, okay. Uh, Brian Flores will be a head coach again in this league. I'm just not sure uh, Miami is the destination. Who wins the Super Bowl, Shregs? Good question. I've picked against the Bengals every single round. Like, I thought the Raiders would win. I thought the Titans would win. I thought the Chiefs would roll. Um, it would be disingenuous for me to go away from that right now, but gosh, is he scary. He was so good yesterday. He was better than Mahomes. Like, Burrow was unbelievable, unflappable. That's I took the Rams before this season. I'll probably roll with the Rams, but I got two weeks to marinate on that. Nice. Hey, Shregs, last one for me. Does uh, does McVay have any kind of hobbies outside of football? Does he does he know what's going on in the world, or is he just all football? No. He just goes to Mexico and gets drunk at pools? Mm -hmm. That's it. Uh, he... You know, it's interesting, like, I don't know if you saw, and it's, <laughs> he'd kill me for this. So, Josh Altman from, like, the real estate show, Million oh, yeah. Dollar Listing. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, that guy's hey, 
guy's that's, moving houses. Yeah, moving. Yeah. That's McVeigh's boy out in LA. And like, I think he was in the box yesterday. Like they're tight. Like oh. I think McVeigh likes like real a little st- reality TV, little oh, real estate, little sure business, he, but, okay. but he's not, he's not doing any book clubs uh, on your show anytime soon. I think he's pretty dialed into the X's and O's during the season. Imagine McVeigh, you know, having an open house. And I'm like, wow, how That's a great, you? great bit that we should do. McVeigh as the real estate broker would be fantastic. Look at this view of L.A. Look at this view of L.A. That's what he did to uh, Odell. That's what he did to uh, Jalen. That's yep. what mm-hmm. he did to uh, uh, Von Miller. Right. That's what he did to Matthew Stafford. Right. Right. He's just a real estate Go guy ahead. underneath all of it. That's amazing. We can't thank you enough for taking time out of your day late here to join us and chit-chat about everything that happened. Good morning football this morning was a home run. Oh, hey, yeah. home run this morning. I love it. I'll tell you what, guys. I, I wasn't, you know, I'm not kissing your ass. Not being like, I was walking around Arrowhead, and I think I'm hot shit from Good Morning Football, and I, you know, I'm kissing babies. I'll so many, so many people, Bengals, Chiefs fans, love you on McAfee. I've probably been on your show a dozen times, Pat. I, I mean, I, I love you on McAfee, so I can't thank you guys enough for the opportunity to come on. It's been cool for me, too, to be a part of this ride with you guys. Well, we appreciate your time. We appreciate all the people that watch. We understand that when they stop watching, it was us, not them. Uh, but thank you so much for joining us. Good luck on Good Morning Football. We'll see you down there radio. No, you're not going. Are you going to be a radio row? Not ready. I'll, I'll find my way to see you. Oh, guys. what? Right. Okay. And how does that work? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I don't need it. We Good. got these 8K studios. Yeah. Damn it. Oh. Bitch. I've got two. I've got two production assistants, four secretaries, oh, nice. five different people on my beck and call for Good Morning Football. <laughs> but at some point, I'll muddy the waters and I'll go and I'll go to Radio Row with you guys. Oh, oh, please, yeah. please, no, no, please, come see the peasants, the paupers, please. We'd be very yeah. thankful. We can't thank you enough for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, gr- not Grammy, Emmy. Yep. Oh, yeah. Sports Emmy. Emmy nominated host of Good Morning Football, Thank insider you. for the insiders, Peter Schrager. Thank you, Valerie. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we have to get to a break. Schrager's popping out of nowhere was awesome. That was very, very nice, and we appreciate him. On the other side, we got to get some overreactions from around Twitter, some phone calls, and wrap up this glorious overreaction Monday. We appreciate you, AJ. Appreciate the boys. Appreciate everybody watching. You're the best seeing for. Bye. Even in Nashville enough. What's going on, Steven? Hey, hello. Pat, you guys can hear me? the worst call we've ever had, Stephen. Oh, my God. <laughs> so mean. Stephen. Hello? Stephen. Yeah. Worst call we've ever had. So much dead air there. <laughs> Yo, Pat, can you hear me? Yeah, keep it going. <laughs> Hello? You know what you say? I was going to hit him again. What? Yo, Pat. No, Pat? Pat? Hey, Pat, can you hear me? Stephen does not deserve this. <laughs> Steven, what's going on, dude? How's it going on, Steven? Sorry, your phone would shut. Pat McAfee, can you hear me? Steven, Steven, you there? Pat, can you hear me? Hello? (laughs) Is there a cup of string? Steven! Yo, Pat. Pat, can you hear me? Hello? Steve! Pat! Hey, there you are. Hey, what's going on, Steve? Hey, Steven, sorry about that. I think we're having connection issues. What's going on, man? Hey, sorry, man. I I didn't know if that was me or if you were trying to talk to another guy. And then then I didn't hear you guys. Steve! Yeah. Hello? Oh, we lost him again, I think. Shit. Pat! Can you? No, I don't. Pat, can you hear me? Steve, Steve, Steve. hey, Steve, there you are, Steve. Pat! Steve! Hey! Steve, 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 Steve,
the system crashed out. God. Only one camera is of use at this moment. For those that are watching at home, we apologize. This must be Phil Go Friday. I can't believe that the cameras aren't working on today of all days. Yeah, well, I mean, if this, this is was... the universe. <laughs> Oh, hey, pal. How you doing? <laughs> Gobble go. Whoa! I need a nice cold Bud Light. What? Oh! Get your fucking ass! How's your fan? How's your fan? <laughs> Maybe a couple of whiskeys. What? Gobble <laughs> go. 80,000 individual eyes that are looking at these eyes right now. What the fuck are you doing? Two scotches. What? what? <laughs> are you kidding me? Okay, you know, right. 55, 56, 63. That's how many new wrinkles I'm gonna break with the office. <laughs> I get things done, Patty. Right. He said I was on meth. I ain't ever done meth. Dirty dressed up like Russell Wilson. Look at the bear. Here we go. Michaels. You're fucking out! More ice cold Bud Light. What? More ice cold Bud Light. What? More ice cold Bud Light. What? 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 Ice cold. What? 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 Cheers. Thanks Cheers. everybody for oh, watching. Oh. A little beat, yeah. Oh, yeah, very. We only have a select amount of uh beats here because the system has malfunctioned over here completely. There's some some wires blown out over here, so computer to system to mm. air, not possible. Phone lines, though, from back there, so that can go to the system. It's good. So, this computer is about halfway worth a fuck right now, yeah, Come on. is what I've learned from Zito, right? Yep, and it's half a Mac right now, too, because we're uh linked into a Mac, so yeah, so this <laughs> potentially is half an Apple. <laughs> and it's by the way, this newest iPhone needs to figure it out too. Yeah. I yeah. thought it was just oh me and my problem with Everyone. technology. No, no. This latest version of the iPhone is by far the worst that we've had in a long time. AJ, by far. Don't you? How think? long have you had it? Oh, a couple months, I think it is. Yeah. 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 And you still, you still have issues? Yeah. And I, uh, did you get the software update? I'm always told got software update. <laughs> Fuck it stinks. Yeah. No, I've yep. seen more triangle with exclamation point in it in FaceTimes than I had in any of the previous iPhones mm -hmm. ever. They all have 8K cameras. It's awesome. But I guess maybe the 5G, you're making 150 billion every quarter. Mm -hmm. Let's get some fucking, what are we doing? Figure it the fuck out. This goddamn 5G. I don't want to overreact because there is football to talk about, but, I mean, we just got on to the subject. We can't help but tell the truth. I mean, Mr. Jobs is mad right now. Well, Mr. Up Jobs top. will be rolling over right oh, now. Oh, yeah. If he knew what oh, yeah. the customer interface was right now with Apple is the only thing that matters. Yeah. Tim Cook doesn't believe that, though. He says, yeah, give him some shit. We'll sell it all. God damn it, Tim. Give him an AK camera. They won't think about anything else. Seriously. Tim Which, Apple better figure it out right well, now. Well, I'll let Tim Apple know that the cinematic version is absurd. Oh, yeah. It is Unbelievable. such a good camera. Foxy cut together an entire vlog. It looked like he was using an entire rig and everything like that. It is very nice, but when it came to being used as a phone, the no. fucking thing stinks. Where's Terrible. Steve Wozniak at? Oh, yeah, where is Woz? Well, Woz always well, does huh? kind of evade anything that yeah. negative about that, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's the hero. Remember, he got bullied by Steve Jobs, even he though did. he's a bazillionaire at this point. True. Yeah. <laughs> he should come out of his hole and make a new phone. Yeah, Steve, Whoa. why don't you get back in there and start rewiring, dude, like you did at the beginning? I know it was a lot of hours, but the fucking Apple cult needs you, dude. We need yeah. you. Now. We need you, Woz. We need something. We need to talk about this SeatGeek giveaway, dude. I cannot believe it's trending on Twitter right now. There were 75 steps to get this. <laughs> yeah. Do you know that, AJ? <laughs> you think it has to, uh, it's, I would like to see the age demo on who is entering. I feel like anyone, I, when you entered that, I'm like, oh, I, my dad and his friends would probably love to enter, but I'm like, there's no way they could figure it out. Never. They're too old. Pistol has no clue. Uh, no, what, Pistol, no, sorry, screen, what, huh? Yeah, dude, like Pistol it. actually is, <laughs> Pistol's actually pretty good with the phone, but I don't think he could put this many steps together. It's very easy. You download the SeatGeek app. You go to the promo code section. You type in the promo code line. Thank you. Seat Geek. No spaces. T-H-A-N-K-Y-E-W. Seat Geek. Then you screenshot that. Tweet it with a hashtag. Hashtag PMS. Thank you, Seat Geek. Same exact spelling. And it's trending number. You guys are the fucking best. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm going to try to talk them into maybe giving away more because they're giving away two tickets, airfare, a hotel, everything like that. Hey, let's go have a Super Bowl. Yeah. But I mean... 
you're giving away less tickets than there are steps to enter this thing. There you go. And that's you know, and it's the big game. And it's the big game. Oh yeah, did I say uh no. No, no big no, game, big game, big, big game. game, big game. You know it's better than two. All right, let's get some overreactions from around Twitter. What's that? Four. Five. What? Six. Three. One. Three. Five. 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 Ten. What? Twenty. Twenty. Why? Fifty. Why? What are we doing? Why? Hundred. Why? Why? You're out there. Why? Why? He's like, shut up, please, please. <laughs> Why are you guys doing this? No, we're doing a lot of good things here. We're giving away two tickets, flight, hotel, what? to the big game in Los Angeles. All you got to do is download the SeatGeek app, type in thank you, SeatGeek, and a promo, thank screenshot you. that tweet, hashtag PMS, thank you, SeatGeek, and then put that screenshot, and you'll be automatically entered into a random choosing, I'd assume, that they are doing on mm -hmm. us, which is good. It's not hard. It's not that hard. It's always there. <laughs> All right, let's go. Uh, let's go to some overreactions from around Twitter this morning. Hashtag PMS. I don't want to overreact, but what? Ty went through them and found some great ones. The West Coast Bangle at WC Bangle. Uh, Joey B going to finish his career with more rings than Josh Allen in Patty Mahomes. Deal with it. Patty Mahomes already got one. Josh Allen does not. But maybe Joey Burrow gets his first Super Bowl ring in his second year and says, excuse me, the conversation around the AFC and who goes where runs through Cincinnati for the next 10 years. I love it. I love the positions that he's in and I love the dude he is in these positions. Seems very comfortable, seems very confident and he's always risen to the occasion it feels like in his short career here. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see like okay, let's say the Bengals go ahead and win this Super Bowl then next year like it's all about managing expectations. I feel like when now, if they do win the Super Bowl, even if they don't, people are still going to look at the Bengals a lot differently than they have before over the last 30 years, basically. So managing those expectations on when, hey, you are expected every year to be a contender for the Super Bowl, can they keep it up? That's a lot to keep up. Obviously not the front office has to find a way to keep dudes around, keep coaches around, but as long as Joe Burrow's under center, I don't see them getting complacent or him letting anybody like feel comfortable if they do get a ring. Like, oh, we're good now. Let's just keep going. Uh, there is a lot. There's a lot of buzz. Man. There's yeah, a background yeah. sound there. Is that from you, AJ? Who's that from? Not me. It's gone. Huh. There was a lot of conversation whenever Jamar Chase was drafted over an offensive lineman because of how bad Joey Burrow got beat up last year. We even talked about it like, oh, these dudes do not care about Joey Burrow. I think that is still somewhere they should focus on, the offensive line going forward. But if Joey B is healthy, you'd assume automatically that the Cincinnati Bengals are going to have a shot. That AFC North, though, it's hot in the kitchen. Lamar Jackson had a down year, off year, didn't make the playoffs. Let's assume they're going to want to come back. Who knows what the Steelers look like next year legitimately who knows what the Steelers look like next year and the Cleveland Browns just are one year removed from winning a playoff game and turning everything around I just it's going to be tough in the AFC North but I do feel like there's a whole new conversation about the Bengals and good on them for figuring that out oh, yeah. let's go to the next overreaction here uh, Austin Hall at Austin underscore Hall 32 hashtag PMS I don't want to overreact but oh. this may oh sorry yeah. that was all me Hashtag PMS, I don't want to overreact. <laughs> AJ, I never hear you say it either. What's that all about? You don't like right. the segment? It mutes me. I say it. It mutes me. Oh, uh, okay. No, this no. may be the first weekend mm. in NFL history where the referees were not a deciding factor in any of the games. Hashtag stat that. I saw some fans being pissed off about some of the calls happening, but in these final two games, uh, there was the best refs of the season. So even though there was a lot of shit this year, just by pure volume bases, there was going to be the best of the best. Let's assume there was probably some wrong calls made out there, but they weren't the reason a team is going to the Super Bowl. And for that, we thank them. Thank Thank yeah. you, Thank you. Let's get some more of that. You know, it's good for the league. Yeah. It's good. Rogers got to love it. The league has to love that we're talking about the actual football being played on the field and not what the referees did to screw a team over or mess things up. So yeah, it's a it's a win. Are they getting better? Should we expect this going forward now, rolling into next year's uh, regular season? If they get to a point where there's only two games happening per day, I think we have a good shot of the refs not being a problem. But as soon as we get back into that 8 to 10 to 12 to yeah, 14 yeah. games happening, yeah. there's a chance you're going to end up with some shit crews out there with some whistles in hand. Yeah, it seems like this weekend and last weekend they let the boys play. Like mm -hmm. let them go out there, yeah. let them play. And maybe they'll be like, oh, we should do that next year. They won't, though, because there's referees who weren't in this weekend or last weekend who think the game's about them. And they'll be back next year. Yeah, they'll be back. And there'll be more of them mm -hmm. being created somehow. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I think there's some retiring as well. I'm not, I think there was some conversation I seen on the internet. Some of our best refs that were refing yesterday, oh, no. and probably, there's some retiring. It's like, uh, well, where's the no. pipeline? Is oh, there? Oh, uh, no. We got these. 
young stooges that want to get in. I just think technology can help them. Let's continue to utilize technology. Let's hopefully get better for the game. And let's make it easier for these guys and girls that are signing up for a terrible job in which there are zero fans for unless you fuck over another team. It's not a great position to be in. We understand why people wouldn't want to be refs. But it is nice whenever the great, you know, the greatest league on earth has the same type of expectation for the people that are refing it and potentially controlling it. Let's go to the next one. Hashtag PMS. I don't want to overreact, but says at Duro Joshua, Jimmy G is not the issue. He brought the 49ers to a Super Bowl and a conference championship game. So many teams would love that opportunity. The 49ers are going to see when Trey Lance takes over and struggles. Yeah, I think you asked Schrager about this and I got an interesting answer uh, from, we got an interesting answer from Schrager. Feels like Jimmy G is coming back next year. And then Trey Lance, another year of learning and do their thing but there's a lot of decisions to be made still at this point yeah they, i'm sure they don't know on trey lance it is a, a bit concerning the fact that we didn't hear much about him i feel like what he was doing during practice i know we're up against a hard out so i'll let you get to it but i'm excited for jimmy g whatever happens hey you just give your answer you know what i mean i, I listen i appreciate you looking out for it and we have batted a thousand thus far <laughs> on the hard outs but i, I don't want that to you know stifle you. an incredible thought from aj hawk yeah come on okay. you know i mean I appreciate that. I appreciate the freedom you're giving me. Thank you. No problem. Like now, do you have anything to say to the serious listeners uh, as we wrap up hour three here, and we're back tomorrow with <laughs> Tuesday? Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. Oh, no. On Aaron oh. Rodgers Tuesday. Why, yeah. why, why can't yeah. he come on? Well, actually, I have no update. idea where he is. Can we get Tim McVeigh, Sean's dad, maybe? Or maybe even the other. I don't know. Uh, no, no, he, Mad Dogs. No. Mad Dogs next. Cheers. Yeah. See, so much conversation can happen when you cut yourself off from it. Right. I thought you were. I thought you wanted to get the heart out. You're a thousand percent today. No, I just wanted Bad to make. A thousand. Well, we did, but we had so much time. We could have had two conversations in there. Come I was on. actually looking over here because I'm on a team viewer, which is a a little tiny picture inside of the big computer picture here to turn on the music because this this thing ain't worth a fuck anymore. Right. Yeah. So that's all I was looking at. I don't. And I apologize. That was you know you thinking I was cutting you off, but I was just trying to find something over here. That's bad You're hosting. Good. We're on two out of three. Two out of three, I think, today. No, because that one still hit. Oh, yeah. Was- yeah. yeah, but not really. Still you know, we, we power rated conversation, good conversation. Oh, tease, there's more on the other side. I mean, we stumbled at the end. I mean, so even if you don't hit it on the screws, it's still a double yeah. into the gap. That was, yeah. yeah. I think we did go on base there. And Diggs oh, had, yeah. Diggs's question to Shregs was one of my favorites of the year. No question when he asked if Miami's going to realize they messed up and they're going to rehire Brian Flores. And then he said, I thought that was a valid question. He said, no, there's some bridges burned down there. <laughs> yeah. That was, that was telling as well. That mm-hmm. was pretty telling about yeah. all of that. There's a lot of, put that graphic up that Dirty made of all the coaches. There's a lot of shit to be figured out. Byron Leftwich is not the head coach of the Jaguars. Yeah, that's no. crazy. So they haven't – what's the word there? Like We heard for a while that he was – like, absolutely, they're just waiting to name him, I feel like. Yeah, now Basachi is coming down for another interview. So you're interviewing more people just to get information. And I forget who it was. Ian Rappaport said today maybe. It's no, it's never a bad thing to interview more people and have more conversations with people. I'm like, well, it is kind of a bad thing if your fan base and everybody expects that a former quarterback in the place is already your head coach. Yeah. Because now it's like, oh, that wasn't the case at all. What does the internet know? Oh, fucking nothing, it feels like. We're back into the shell game of nobody knowing what the fuck they're talking about. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it, it seemed like it was a done deal that Byron, we were talking, acting like Byron Leftwich was the head coach and Adrian Wilson was the GM last week. Nailed it, by the way, Wilson. We yeah, got I, that know, I almost mm-hmm. said Adrian Phillips. Yeah, we said it like three <laughs> times. Yeah. Great player. We can't trust anything anymore, AJ. Honestly. Nobody knows anything, of course. Like, we don't, I don't know how long are they going to take. Are we going to wait? Are some of these teams not going to hire guys till after the Super Bowl? Oh. Is it possible? That's a long time. What, just to roll the dice? <laughs> no, no, like two weeks from now is a long time yeah. for... Oh, yeah. yeah, we got to do shows all the way up until then. You got to build your staff and stuff, too. I'm thinking of those guys that get the jobs. You, you want to build your staff. I'll be interested to see who goes where with what. Like Josh McDaniels, who's going to leave New England and go with him? I know they're talking about Ziggler being there and Josh McDaniels Patricia, being there. Right? And maybe we bring Bill O'Brien. But, like, yeah, who knows? Who else is he, is he friends with? Like, there's a photo of him that we have. I don't remember which one it is. Bubba Ventrone is standing right behind him. Bubba Ventrone is now the special teams coordinator for the Indianapolis Colts. And he makes plays for us. He's, that's him right over his shoulder right there. And I thought back to myself, not that Bubba would go because Bubba is a massive a part of this Colts coaching staff. I don't think they would let him go. But what other coaches has Josh McDaniels dabbled with who are currently at some other staffs that might pick up and decide to go to Vegas with him? And I'm not saying Bubba's going to do that. This was just what sparked my thought of that whole thing. You never know who's going where. And if it's after the Super Bowl 
getting in there. There's so many ripple effects that come from all of these decisions that get made. Who's who's the named D coordinator in New England? Is it Gerard Mayo or no, Steve Belichick? There's no named D coordinator. So can they block him for interviewing? Like, let's say he wants to interview or bring in Gerard Mayo to be his DC. If Gerard was the linebacker coach, can't he take that interview and they can't block him? Because it's going up a level. It's a or is it only they can only block you for head coaching positions? I think. No, he, I have no and idea. he's already done uh, head coaching interviews, so I don't see why they would block him for a D coordinator. Well, Josh, no, coordinator though they can, if it's not a head coaching opportunity. Oh, so you're saying there's stipulations and rules in this thing. Oh, yeah, like you can't – they can block – guys get blocked all the time from interview, interview for jobs. Yeah. By the way, I understand why people get blocked and why organizations and programs would not want to lose somebody, but I think that looks bad from the outside. It does, but it happens every year, always. Well, in Mayo, we talked to Rap Sheet about, like, maybe not this year for the head coaching carousel, but, like, next year is possibly when he would actually get a gig. So, like, if McDaniels was – you know, obviously starting in Vegas, would he want to bring a guy in who he knows is probably going to leave the year after? I mean, you, you're going to bring head coaches in, or you're going to bring good coaches in. All good coaches no matter, yeah. are probably going to end up, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I would just, I'll be excited to see the plucking of staffs that happens. Well, if b Flow doesn't get fi- uh, get hired and, you know, by one of those four teams, I wonder if he goes to Vegas and is the D coordinator over there. Yeah, because everybody's saying he's going back to New England. Yeah. yeah. Well, now there's one a- of those teams is hiring b Flow, I feel, I feel like. Yeah. You would have to with the success he's had. You just have to have great confidence that he will get along with whoever. Maybe Casario and he do have a good relationship down in Houston, even if Jack Easterby gives the okay from the Lords. You know, do that whole yeah. thing. Is it a worry, though, because of what happened with Tua in b or at least what was reported that happened, that a lot of those teams have young quarterbacks and they might not want to? So it would have to be somebody who knows them. Like, much like for players that have, like, a bad rap or whatever, for whatever reason, you'll hear – you know, coaches or teammates like endorse him. I would assume Beeflo going to a place where he knows the people is probably yeah. pretty good. Because he didn't hire the dude that he didn't get along with in Miami, right? No, I don't think so. Right. I, th- I thought that was a turnover from the last staff. Yeah, he was kind of like forced into this relationship. Yeah. And yeah. they're keeping him for uh, whoever gets hired next Who to is him, it? Who did he not get along with down there in Miami, Gumpy? Chris Greer. He was there before Beeflo got there. Yeah, he's been terrible for a very long time. See the GM? For the Dolphins. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Okay. So, but b was forced into that relationship with him, right? Yeah. So there's probably the Casarios or the McDanielses mm-hmm. or whoever's like, uh, I got along just fine with him because, you know, we we get, we want to win and make good decisions. But That's right. Also, would b want to go there if he gets put in a situation where it's like, oh, I got to fucking answer to this Easter B guy? Like, no, I'm not doing that. Yeah, I, that would be interesting. He knows him from New England, though, doesn't he? Right. Yeah, but he yeah was, but much different. Yeah, he, he, not the team chaplain anymore. That was the that was the thing that was interesting to me that when Rappaport said that Easter B does have a say in there, I'm like, I wonder what Nick Casario thinks. In all. what? What kind? Like a say in the personnel they bring in or get rid of? How's that work? Well, he said it was the type of character and the people in which he they were thinking about bringing in or what making the team. I love Casario just talking to McNair, and McNair's being like, you know, we have a. Um, a guy who's our senior Jesus guy. Mm-hmm. He's also a scout and a strategy <laughs> analyst. Yep. He, senior Jesus guy. <laughs> yeah, he was just a junior Jesus guy in New England when you were mm-hmm. around him. He was just doing classic FCA stuff, leading bi- <laughs> Bible groups, setting up things, answering questions. He has come down here. He has reinvented himself. Yes. Oh, yeah. What we learned is while he was dabbing up Jesus with folks, he was also watching film with Bill Belichick. Mm-hmm. So he makes a little bit more decisions down here, Nick. This is Easter B 3.0. 1.0, basic-ass pastor. Mm-hmm. 2.0, FCA guy at New England. 3.0, this dude's got Jesus on the automatic call list, and he's been making calls for us down here. So that is something that needs to be understood because Casario's like, cool, uh, can I call plays and coach and do all that? And they're like, yeah, yeah, no problem. He's like, Oh, and I'll do that. Uh, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Give me the fucking headset, dude. Well, and B-Flow is connected to Watson, too. Because that wasn't that where Watson wanted to go because you want to play for B-Flow? Yeah, and B-Flow wanted him to go down there. Right. Yeah. But haven't they already said that Watson is not going to be a Texan? Like they're He at- will never play another down for Houston. Yeah. Is he going to play anywhere? I don't know. That's a lot. That's coming Insane. up here, right? 2022. 20, yeah. February. I've heard, uh, who was Albert Bree? I heard him on some show say he thinks they'll, they will be settled here I don't know. He didn't give a time frame. He's like, I absolutely think it'll be settled. And I read some of those transcripts. Yeah, I read some week. of those transcripts. Those were like a key witness. Those, yeah, the questions are being asked by Busby, though. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, the more of those that happen, I don't. Think I need to check them out. 
I'm saying, you have. Are they recent? You, you are have. They recent? Yeah, you, know, you, know, you have. Yeah, it was probably yeah. your. From what? Hey, Axel, no, they, please. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to read from the book of Busby today. <laughs> <laughs> I, I assume that is what you did on Sunday before the championship games, dude. I'm assuming. I have not seen it. Did this just happen or did this happen a while ago? Uh, I think it's recent. The Deshaun oh. Watson camp does not want more of those out there, though. No. The, oh, it's bad for him. Okay. Please, the, the fifth was pled by. Um, I believe one of the accusers, a key witness, a key witness or something. The fifth was pled, but the questions that were being asked that I plead the fifth was answered to is very from Deshaun's guy. No, from the guy that doesn't like Tony, right? Tony right. Busby. Yeah, the defense. Busby, the other guy, the other Busby's from the other side. Oh yeah, yeah. He's he's representing the the accusers. Yes, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. He's asking questions to key witness, and key witness is pleading fifth for every question. But these questions just, as they went on, they got, I mean, more, I don't want to say accusatory, but also very, you know, picture painting. Like, yeah. They were very, it was interesting. Very, very interesting. So Albert Breer saying that, but you think that's like a, a thought he has? Like this would behoove Deshaun and his people? Or did it sound like he had an inside piece of information? I honestly, I don't know. I just heard him say like he thinks it'll, be, it'll get settled. He didn't say a time. Uh, but I don't know what, what he's basing that off of. Maybe he j just his opinion, he thinks it could happen. That's a lot of – 22 is – that's yeah, like, a lot of I figure, wouldn't I figure like settling with one is probably a ton of just leg work and back and forth and all of that, right, to do it all 22. It's crazy. And then once that happens, then there's the whole wave afterwards that yeah. comes too. Uh -huh. Whew. He put himself in this position. It's on him. But uh, we will cover it as we go. Uh, that's that's right. Hell of a football player. Hell of a football player. Football. Fucking great football player. Mm -hmm. And if that is the future down in Houston, I'll be intrigued to see how it all pans out. Let's go to another overreaction from around the Twitter world. Ty Schmidt dabbled through all the hashtag PMS. I don't want to overreact, but, but. and found Zach Strasser's at Zach underscore Strasser for what's the mug say? Have to know what the mug says. The Sit. last of us. The Last of Us. Last of Us. Is that part two? Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a video game, I think. This guy's fucking good on his sticks. That's Locked right. in. Yeah, yeah. Hey, when he plays The Last of Us, like part one, he was okay. Part two, though, is where Zach Strasser fucking really <laughs> rose to the top. Yeah. Joe Burrow's second year. Look, he wakes up and he drinks The Last of Us part two. Yeah. He's drinking it. That's he right. sleeps it, he eats it, he drinks it. What? Zach Strasser has little to no time to watch football, but when he does, he says, hashtag PMS, I don't want to overreact, but, but is the Chiefs Super Bowl window closing? Oh. Mahomes' contract kicking in and not enough money to spread around. Uh -oh. They kicked mm -hmm. the can down the road on a 10-year, half-a-billion-dollar contract that they gave to Patrick Mahomes. The first couple years, I don't even think he was in the top 10 for cap hits and quarterbacks. Now that money is going to have to catch up at some point. How will they be able to manipulate the roster and do cap gymnastics to keep all their superstars on the team for the long haul? I'm not sure about any of that. They'll figure it out. Veach has been able to do that. But the AFC is a fucking, hey, it's a murderer's row right now. Yeah. yeah. This AFC is young, very talented. And although Mahomes is at the head of that and has been, he's a Super Bowl champ, he's an MVP, highest paid guy, that Chief squad is always expected to be good. It's going to be a tough road every single year to get to the Super Bowl. The playoffs are going to be tough. I mean, nobody could have predicted that the Bengals would do what the Bengals have done through Wild Card Weekend, Divisional Round, now the championship. But every year there's going to be something like that. That is why what the Patriots did for 20 years is so fucking impressive. We Patrick Mahomes loses here in the AFC Championship game. They were up 18 at one point. And there's a lot of people saying, oh, this dynasty is dead. This thing's over. Maybe. Maybe they'll be able to continue to come back. But what New England did just gets spotlighted even more anytime you see any of these teams have any sort of failure. None of it makes sense to me. I still think the Chiefs are going to be good. But what the Patriots had done, fucking stupid and outerworldly. Yeah, the, the consistent success, yeah, just doesn't happen in the NFL like the Patriots did it. But I think the Chiefs, I mean, Going forward, if they want to be successful with all you know the cap hits they're going to have, yeah, that have worked out. They have to draft well. Like you have to get lucky on some of your draft picks. Some of your late round guys have to hit and become huge contributors, like things like that. And hey, Andy Reid seems like a pretty smart guy. I think he's all right at uh, evaluating personnel. I'm sure he gives his little uh, his input on when they're drafted and what they're doing, like what free agents they bring in. So 
I, I trust think, them. I think Andy will be able to do well. I think they'll continue to win, but man, it's not going to be easy any of those years. They not did, that it ever is. They did run out of plays to call. Happened in the second half. I it's, know. That Nick was telling me that this mm-hmm. morning. He said, you know, people are saying maybe Andy Reid's season kicked in here, not able to make it to the Super Bowl, and made it past 10 weeks, but here they are, not enough plays. Everybody used had them figured out. Plays. They used up all the good plays. That's what people were saying. To your point about the AFC, too, I think the Bengals have 60 mil in cap space next season. Yeah, and they'll be forced to spend, what, probably 30 of it? Yeah. Uh-huh. So they'll sit with. Well, and you always talk about the, you know, like (laughs) going all in on when your quarterback, especially if he's a guy, has a rookie contract. Like, I mean, I'm sure they they didn't think they were probably going to go to a Super Bowl this year, maybe, but you do. And then now you have all this money to spend next year to kind of fortify that offensive line. Like, they're set up for the next several years. And Josh Allen and the Bills ain't going anywhere. Yep. Lamar. Like you were just yeah. saying, they Lamar and Baltimore's got some shit to yeah. figure out. Chargers got sixty million to spend, yeah. and they got Chargers. Herbert. And yeah. I mean, they're in the Rams' town now. All of a sudden, Browns. Mm-hmm. What's no, going on with them? No, I think they're. Dead. I don't know. They're dead. Really? Well, the day. Browns have a solid team. They got. I mean, let's just. They is Baker going to be healthy? Is Bra- Baker going to be the guy? Like that's the biggest thing for them. They're, they're bringing Baker. Everybody seems to just be on. Like Baker's going to be the Browns' quarterback <laughs> yep, next yep. year. He's going to get healthy. He's going to go back to his normal self, which we can't wait for. By the way, we're very happy for. But that AFC North all of a sudden has become its own kitchen, and it's hot in there. It is hot in the kitchen in the AFC North. Well, and if you look around, just like every division in the AFC, really, aside from the Colts division, has like at least two stud young quarterbacks. Like it's absurd. Well, Trevor Lawrence is a fucking absolutely. Bad. But you know they were they, they were three and fourteen. Mills. Tannehill's in his were, but the uh, Bengals were four and twelve last year. So. Absolutely, but I, I mean, just I wait don't know. until you see Aaron Rodgers. Russell Wilson, uh-huh. Jimmy G, and the Colts next year. All you guys are getting all three. All three? Holy oh, shit! Jimmy ain't fucking around. <laughs> I sure <laughs> hope not. <laughs> Just in case the quarterback market's going to be interesting, AJ, because it feels as if Ian Rappaport uh, he tweeted and wrote a story at NFL.com about Aaron sticking around after the season and game planning for the future with Lafleur, uh, the Flower, and Gunta Kuntz and everything like that. I assume he doesn't just pick up and leave as soon as the game is over because there's meetings and stuff like that. But the conversation, Rappaport said, the conversation between he and the flower thinking ahead, I think that's that bodes very well for Packers fans to hear, right, AJ? Yeah, it definitely should. The fact that like, he didn't just take off and leave town right away and skip exit meetings and all that. Didn't uh, Mark Madden say that? About, about uh, one of our former guests that somebody skipped their exit meeting yeah. a couple years ago. Yeah, uh, why? Well, yeah, so that would have been if he would have here. If we would have heard like, "Hey, Aaron took off the next morning, skipped his exit meetings," then I think people would be very, very worried. So yeah, these the news that Ian said that. Yeah, it, or do you spend a couple? Shouldn't days, be a bad thing. Or do you spend a couple days saying goodbye to everybody and packing up a shit? Well, going in there and say, "Hey, one last hey to yeah, see what you if later, trainers." What if those conversations were terrible? With what if he's like, "I'm gonna stick around." You know, talk to the floor and Goody and everybody and make sure, this, hey, this is what we're, we got going forward. And then they just got in a big fight. What if they're, okay. This is what we're thinking. We got all the pieces now. We need everybody to take a 33% pay cut. We run <laughs> this thing right back. What if that, what if it did go terribly? What if, what if it was just a fucking horrible conversation <laughs> and now Aaron's going back to the Hawaiian waterfalls uh-huh. trying to figure out his entire life? Well, I think that is the big, is last year, it wasn't until we found out how pissed he was that they were like, hey, listen, we're, we're we're trying to do everything we can to bring this guy back this year. It's like, Hey, we want this guy back next year, no matter what. Whereas last year, it's not like they said they were going to get rid of him, but it was a lot more ambiguous as what they were going to do going forward. I think they saw enough this year to be, Hey, like our, our best chance to win a Super Bowl is still with this guy. I can't believe that was even a question. Yeah. No yeah. kidding. Pretty stupid. But what if it did go well and then they just don't do anything that he wants them to do? Over it, the next couple weeks, yeah, I think they've proved you know that they're he's gone. They're all in. Hey, whatever, Aaron, whatever you want, within reason, we will do for you. Now we are thirty million dollars over the cap, right? Uh-huh. So we're gonna have to what? figure this out, obviously. Yeah. But we got plans. a two-year, hundred million dollar deal. Who, Aaron? Guaranteed. Couldn't you do that? Put that on the ticker that Aaron's best friend, A.J. Hawks, has just given him a two-year, yeah, hundred million yeah. dollar deal. Two-year, yeah, hundred and ten million dollars guaranteed. That's what I would say. Hundred and ten. Throw that out. Okay, hundred and ten million. Good. Boom. I also saw Devontae Adams wearing all blue, like blue shoes, blue outfit. Just saying. Is he coming to the Colts? Just saying. No, not a chance. Giants? I have heard Devontae like, really wants to play with Carl Wentz. Yeah. No, you haven't. <laughs> really I'm not talking about Carl Wentz, dude. Connor, I've heard that rumor, too. No, I'm yeah. talking about Aaron. 
No, no. I'm talking about Aaron walking in this studio right here, Hell studio, yeah. Yeah. sitting down right there and saying, me and Devontae, tag team back again. Let's begin. Party now, party now. Make some noise. Ain't season in the house. Now jump and jump. Say party over here. Party in Indy now. That's really? what you're gonna say. Because I heard Devontae Takes, saw yeah. him sprain both his ankles, and he was like, "Holy fuck, I want to play with that guy right there." That people might be saying that. Let's not underestimate yeah. people respecting one of the toughest quarterbacks to ever play football. Mm-hmm. Would die on the field if it was possible. Yes, yeah. and what makes has tried numerous times. Yeah, what makes us so sure that the Colts don't love Carson Wentz, and they'd say, "Sorry, Aaron." We got our quarterback. And they did that to Tom Brady years ago, I was told, mm-hmm. allegedly. Yeah, yeah that was mm-hmm. Phil Rivers. I mean, he was spinning the pigskin that year. I, I understand. He was. <laughs> Not to mention he actually made it to the playoffs, unlike Carson Wentz. Nah. So, like, what is your problem? Dude. What? What is your problem? These things have to be addressed, or else how are they going to get fixed, Pat? I wonder if Concerns anybody's with... watching over there at the building and just being like... Turn TV off. They're right. I mean, yeah, God damn it. We are very upset. We like that Pat's having success. We know we like his show, being based out of Indy, but normally nobody talks about us. <laughs> yep. Nobody ever uh-huh. talks about anything that we do. Now, we got this tank top son of a bitch who punted balls for us right in our town talking about all of this. And it's not just him. He's got this asshole friend from Boston who's a Patriots guy who continues to run his fucking mouth, too, about the whole thing. I want the city to be booming. The way that it was during Peyton's, you know, wasted 12 or 15 years when he was here. This guy. Whoa, come on. That's what I want for Indiana. He okay. Won a Super Bowl, dude. Yeah, just one. Think Con- about that. Connor's like, if I'm going to be forced to live in this city, yeah. I would at least like it to be fucking booming. Yeah, I don't want it to be a loser city. I want it to be a winning. Bro, the Pacers are be- in the middle of a rebuild. Yeah. Okay. The Pacers oh, have been in a rebuild for the last oh, 15 no. years, Pat. What are we talking about? <laughs> Jesus they God. hired Jim Carrey's turning it around. Yeah. I wish. I wish that was the case. Indianapolis Indians have a good ball team. Yes. yes That's is. true. Good point. Do they? Yeah. Well, yeah, because it's like yeah, the Pirates, you know, get all these guys who, you know, stink pretty much. So, like, but you'll see, like, good guys when they're coming up play here. They get to the big show, Pirates trade them elsewhere. Yeah. Touch has been here. Yep. Mm-hmm. That blonde guy who just won a World Series somewhere else, Austin something. Austin Meadows. Mm-hmm. He was yeah. here. Yep, he was here. Yeah, but baseball stinks. And when we're going all the way down to AAA baseball is what we're falling back on. Give uh, me the Indy Fuel, dude. Break. The Indy Fuel. Indy Fuel, yeah. Fuel, no oh, thanks. Yeah. I did almost blow a tire out on two potholes downtown, too. The Jeez. streets are losing. The streets are terrible. <laughs> no. Well, salty now. I mean, the highway situation yeah. needs to be right. The highway's can't even get on that. Yeah. There's a lot of L's right now in Indy. It's highway's coming back, bad. though. Thanks, Hawks. Yeah. I hope so. I don't know if Hogsett's controlling the highways. There's a lot of other things. He's I heard St. Louis brunches are much better than brunches here. Oh, dude. That this is a brunch we won to in St. Louis, AJ. Oh, boom, boom. Holy shit. I did not know what we were walking in. I don't think any of us did. No, no we yeah. just thought we were going to a classic little brunch spot, nice and easy. We tried to go to three, four different brunch places, just lines packed out, all these brunch places downtown St. Louis. Interesting shaped city. You know, it was a nice city. Interesting, though. Very interesting how you got around it. The stadium was in there, but it was kind of on the... I mean, it was just... We were learning a lot. Anyways, we drive this one place called BLTs. We tried to get into line going all the way out this thing. There's this other place called Beffa's. that had no windows. Looked like it was down in a dungeon. They had a line of people who were like, all right, can't go in. Another place couldn't go. Yeah, very interesting. Couldn't Other place couldn't go to. So we're driving by. uh, We Google, like, brunch in the area. And there's this place called Wheelhaas. And we're like, okay, we're two minutes away from Wheelhouse. Let's go over to Wheelhouse. Wheelhouse, very close to where the St. Louis Blues play. So there's like $10 parking and a couple different things for the event. So we pay $10 parking. We go to Wheelhouse. Like, we'll just get a little, this is a nice little brunch spot, a little diner, a little cafe. We walk in. It's about 1230 in the afternoon order. It was 1 a.m., 2 a.m. in there. <laughs> oh. We're talking two DJs. We're talking two DJs. We're people on the dance floor with drinks like 2 a.m. bop. Oh, yeah. Like a 2 a.m. bop <laughs> is happening. There's people just making like videos in the middle of the dance. Shoulder to shoulder. Oh, yeah. Packed this place. Oh. Nightclub photographer. It's a, yeah, there was a photographer that was like, 
you know, burying my head in. It was as big as a warehouse. The place was fucking booming. Two was, stories. Yeah, upstairs, downstairs, outside, private patio. All of it had their own deep. It was. Is this a club that just has brunch on Sundays or what? Yes. Pretty so much. I guess it's the only place in St. Louis from what I've been told because people that we were talking to at the Royal Rumble, uh, they're like, hey, pal, what are you doing tonight? I'm like, oh, probably flying home or whatever. We got, oh, we got bottles at Wheelhouse. We're like, <laughs> we were fucking, we had a great brunch at that place. <laughs> yep. But they started like 10 a.m. This place was electrifying. Now, there was a Blues game there as well, so Tarasenko jerseys oh, yeah. were in yeah, abundance. There's a lot of Blues fans there. Uh, Foxy took a, uh, a shot stick yeah. a, a, with three other people. Shotsky. Nick, Nick and uh, yeah. Matt, I believe, Matt, were their names. Yeah, Very Nick good people. It wasn't a shot ski. It was a shot stick, though. Oh, it was Nick. a... Uh, oh, oh, gotcha. It what? was a spitting chicklets uh, pink uh, hockey stick, hockey stick oh, that sweet. they had. Oh, sweet. That Foxy and some others took a shot of. The brunch food, by the way, very so good. good. Like, was, it if good? They, if, was it a buffet? Uh, oh. No, no buffet. No, we we Many. we get there. The bouncer, by the way, this dude's, dude's like five five. Would <laughs> would like if something had, did not feel safe at all. That guy, <laughs> that guy's getting bodied so quick. So no cauliflower here. Andy was short. It's like negative. From this the guy's beginning. dead. Yeah, and he was. We show up. We're like, um, holy shit! For, literally, what we said first yeah. of all. Holy shit! Did not expect this. Is this a brunch place? We asked the guy. It's really loud. Yeah. Okay. Oh, thank you. All right. Is there is there tables? Is it open seating? Reservations normally. Bars open seating. Can I see your ID? I'm like, all right, guy, fucking business. Okay. <laughs> I understand. I guess we should have known this. Give him the ID. Grabs it out of the hand. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like, yeah, like one of those and looks at it. I'm good. Thanks. I was like, thank you, sir, or whatever. And I was looking at him. I'm like, you should not be acting the way you act. <laughs> Just I, uh, not that we are going to cause any problems, but I don't think you're Somebody the guy. Will. Yeah, I don't think you're the guy. So we go, we go in there. We go all the way to the back. We like kind of get eyes on the entire place. Oh yeah, the back was fucking. It was an actual dance floor bar, and there's no, there was no windows back there either, so it was a little dark. It felt like, literally, you walked into 1.30 a.m., <laughs> and people were fucking obliterated. Yeah. We're stumbling, a couple cowboy hats in there with a pat! Nice. The oh, pat yeah. yells and everything. I'm like, fucking, hey, I thought we were getting brunch. So we, there was no open tables, obviously, anywhere. So we mosey back. All of a sudden, three at the bar open up as we're getting there. It's like, all right, this it is destiny. Perfect. We sit here, we sit down, we experience it. It was a great time. I mean, it was... It was glorious. We were the only people in there. I mean, Foxy obviously took a shot and got yeah, boozed yeah. up. He yeah. couldn't help himself. Yeah. <laughs> surprise, surprise. But we were the only people anywhere near sober in that entire place. And I have nothing but respect for that wheelhouse. You need to go there if you go to St. Louis. told you, it's my main complaint about this city for years. They don't do brunch. They don't know how to do brunch. They also don't know how to do happy hour. What are we doing here? I'm with Connor. Happy, Thank hours, you, happy hour is actually illegal here. Yeah, it's absurd. Yeah. 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 Correctly, really? the, the wheelhouse had endless mimosas. Yeah, yeah. bottomless oh, mimosas. Yeah. And then they had that uh, big beer boot. They had, the, they had this awesome. big beer tower. It's a beer tower. Yeah. It was a beer yes. tower, but it was uh, <laughs> it was shaped like a fucking uh, like a tornado almost. Like yeah. it went out. It was wild. Vortex. Yeah. I, it was very difficult. I'm not a big boozer. Everybody knows I don't booze much anymore. Used to. Mm. It was almost impossible to sit there. And oh not, my god! Yeah. I wanted to have I mean, twenty beers. In twenty of them. Yeah. Oh <laughs> my god! Dude. I, had I, go, I had to go do the rumble in a couple hours, and I was almost like, "Yeah, we Man, should be." Let's yeah. get <laughs> up. Feel, let's feel a little good. It was hard. We had to get out of there. Like literally, can I get the check, please? Let's get it. This place was too much fun. Mm. Too much fun. Is it closed for like what two hours a night? Like when is it ever closed? I think it goes ten a.m. all the way to three. I think it goes Jesus. all the way. People were literally like, "Oh, we got bottles at Wheelhouse." I think is the place. Yeah. That place has been going all. They got to make every dollar that is had out and about in oh St. Louis. The place was awesome. Great service too. Quick. Yeah. Upbeat. Other than that little tiny bouncer guy, sure. uh, the, the place was. It was awesome, dude. It was. But he he was talking to us as if we were idiots and we didn't know about the wheelhouse. Yeah, exactly. Come on. And it was like, I apologize. We're from out of town. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's from St. Louis, pal. Everybody there, I think, was though. Yeah, they were. I feel like that was a very much a local spot, and they're all there all the time. Mm -hmm. That place was fucking awesome, dude. Well, so it's a block away from Bush Stadium, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's all in that area. Damn. Yeah. So if I wanted to take my kids to brunch, would they let them in? Oh yeah, dude. I need for the Hawks. Uh, I remember the guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. IDs yeah, you guys got ID. Although it sounds like Axel will be standing eye to eye with this guy and you'll probably take him back. <laughs> Axel so. smacks him in the mouth. It was a little smaller than I thought. I mean, Axel's I, like three feet tall. I had not been in a <laughs> for now. I mean, I had not been in a club setting in a long time. Long, long Especially at noon. 
Well, that's what I'm saying. But <laughs> that whole interaction, I was like, oh, the bouncers have gotten smaller. Could you hear? Like, could you hear to their talk or was it like being in a Vegas club? You had to yell. Yeah, it was a yell. It was a yell. Zito was on the left side and there was conversation happening here on the right. He had no idea what was going on. Yeah. I had to update him on everything that was going <laughs> sure. on. Zito yeah. food on the left yeah. side. Yeah, it was, <laughs> a, it was a full on. <laughs> It was. We had direct eye contact to the DJ, though. <laughs> on the other, we we're like a hundred <laughs> yards away from the DJ in the back, and for whatever reason, there was either a window or a door, yeah. and it was just me and Zito staring right at the, <laughs> right at the. DJ. Every time we had a good song, he just gave us a little head nod. Yeah, we're because we, we. By the way, you have to <laughs> yeah. at some point if yeah, heaters come. Really. Dude, it was fucking wild. It was Sounds awesome. awesome. Sounds pretty sweet. Yeah, it does. great brunch. The food was good, too. Food like, was good. It wasn't I, just some bullshit I've food. never wanted to get drunk more in my life being there. Me, too. Oh, my God. And then go to the hockey game. That sounded like a great Saturday. Yeah, yeah the game was at 2 or something. Two one o'clock. Two o'clock game. <laughs> so they all get there at, like, 11, oh, I guess. Dude. They have reservations there. Then they walk into that game, the barn, and mm. then Royal Rumble was at the end of the night. Yeah. I don't know if any stragglers made their way into the thing, but you're right, Foxy. We had to get out of there. I literally yeah, had to get out of there. I was like, all right, we got to go. Cause Foxy, you should take your dad. He would have loved it. He would have drank that place dry. 100%. Yeah, plus he'd never go back to Michigan, it sounds like, if he found this place. Hey, it was sweet. They deserve a lot of respect and credit, but bouncers were a little small. Yeah. I guess that's a Matt and version. Would you rather yeah. be big old, like, 400-pound guys? You think they would do a better job protecting you? I'm not worried about protecting me. I'm just thinking, like, I've seen some... You know, I know, but you know when people have like is that wheelhouse security. That's wheelhouse. That's, that's fucking wheelhouse. That's this wheelhouse. might be noon. It might I mean, be twelve thirty in the are afternoon. These people eating food, or <laughs> there's still another food? half of this place Dude, too. Yeah, this is the back area that we walked into. There's tables at the back of this thing where people are ordering brunch at this exact time. <laughs> I am not shitting you. It. We walked in there. It felt like it was one thirty in the morning that's in the back. It awesome. was awesome. <laughs> there was specials at the bar along like this side over here. I think has a bar along the side of it. Yeah. If I had to, I'm sorry. Yeah, it was the right. Far side. My screen's right has yeah. like a bar right down the back side of it. It was. Damn. Was it a younger crowd? I'm, I'm guessing it was like young professionals. Like how yep. old? Young that? professional. A lot of law school students are in that area. I guess like uh. St. Louis Law or yeah. St. Louis, something hmm. like that. There was like two colleges that was right there. Yeah. It was fucking unbelievable, though. That was mind blowing. A lot of people who listen to the show watch the show right there. <laughs> yeah. That was very nice uh -huh. of them. A lot of seat in their privacy, but. Everybody and her mom wanted to send seven shots over. Oh, yeah, it's like, I got to do something. I appreciate it. <laughs> and then, hey, I won't buy you a beer. It is St. Louis. You don't know. You don't know if there's roofies in there. I mean, I think my body would handle that well. I just didn't want to. I shouldn't. Uh, you know, Royal Rumble was about to yeah. happen. Yeah, you got a job to do. But I did not know we were walking in while we were walking No in. way. Jeez, Luis. That's awesome. Did you see Brock Lesnar body slam we man? Oh, yeah, I did. That, that looked like legit, like just a spur of the moment thing, too. It looked like Johnny Knoxville was egging him on. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah, do this. So I was about to say, my source, I don't know if you heard this, my sources have told me, like, the bar that was at did not know that was going to happen. Uh, the jackass folks did not know that was happening. I'm not 100%. I don't think Brock knew that was going to happen. It was just it literally all just kind of happened in the middle. And I, the thought of the other patrons at the bar seeing this Viking walk out, you know, what? Pick up a fucking wee man from jackass and dump him through a table and then just walk out and nobody expected it, knew it, and there was no follow-up. That is awesome. That's why life is, is so great. Yeah. yeah. That's why you got to go live your life. You never know when fucking Brock Lesnar is going to walk out, pick up wee man, body slam him through a table, and then walk away as if nothing happened. You never know if that's going to happen. That's life. You don't. And then wee man's lucky that, you know, Knoxville got eliminated when he did. On Saturday night, because I'm guessing if Brock would have came out and Wee Man would have been around there, wow. shit, he might have launched him into the upper deck. Let the bodies hit the floor. <laughs> yeah. How about Johnny Knoxville getting out there? Yeah. Kicked right in the mouth. Mm -hmm. He's punched, slapped, kicked. Mm -hmm. Not a bad fit. You think? No, yeah, with the cape and everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. Could See, use I, some work, I thought. I personally believe Wee Man should have came out with a neck brace. Yeah. Yes. Just, I know he's fighting yeah, through it. They so. should have shot Knoxville into the ring with a cannon. That should have. That would have been sweet. That would have been awesome. Yeah, it would have. Just put a big net up there to catch him and mm -hmm. then dump his body into the ring. Yeah, or do the cart thing that uh, oh. Sami Zayn was trying to do. If he showed up and did into it. Into the ring. Into the ring. Hey, that was a long show, AJ. Did you watch that? Did you watch that whole Royal Rumble? I did watch some of that. I, w I was texting you throughout some of it. I can't say I uh, stayed up till the end, but I did watch some. Come on. I got some text messages from AJ that was rather early in the night, but I think yeah. it was already 9.45, 10 p.m. Eastern. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. And there was still like, I don't know, five, six matches to go before the Royal mm -hmm. Rumble. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
he said, uh, he said, I'm not staying up for this. Said, what? <laughs> That's what AJ said. AJ no, said, I didn't. I said, I turned it on. I saw a, it looked like an all female Royal Rumble, right? And so I was like, is this the only Rumble? Are they, is this a co ed Rumble? Are we having dudes and girls run in? And he said, no. The girls' rumble will finish in two or three hours, and then there's nine more matches, and then the men's rumble will start. That was, said, it, okay. by the way, accurate yeah, depiction pretty, of how the night went. Pretty spot on. At home. And I watched a good chunk of it. I watched a lot. I saw Ronda come out. Ronda's back. That was sweet. She won, by yep. the way. No spoilers. Becky almost burned it down. Becky uh, almost burnt down to WrestleMania, son. I mean, fucking, how you doing? Keep it moving. How's Becky doing? Burning things down. <laughs> I think Becky's good. What do you mean? It's a tough match. She's champ. She it was a tough that match. Was a tough good show. Match. It was a great part. It was a great fight out there. Great fight out there. Good. Battle. I thought you were talking about the fire that she started. I think yeah. she's good. She's she's okay. She's good. That thing was long, dude. I, I hate those premium live events. I fucking hate them. <laughs> I won't go on the record as a commentator and say I hate them. <laughs> I, I'd rather, I'd well, start rather, to finish. How long was it? Start to finish. I, I don't know, dude. Ten hours. I had the first match, and then I had the last one. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Started at seven, and I think it ended at what, like twelve thirty, twelve forty-five. And I had the Sounds first. Right. The first match was fifteen, I think, twenty minutes, and then I had a long time. Yeah. I'm not good at that. I'm not good at the whole. Hey, just do nothing for. Two and a half, three hours. And I will say it was really cool. That stadium was packed. It was huge. <laughs> Forty-four thousand people in there. Yeah. Saint, uh, uh, the America, uh, the America's Ooh. Dome in St. Louis. Center. Is that where the Rams? Where the Rams played? Battle, Battle Hawks. Hawks yeah, but also where the Rams played. I played a game in there. Actually, the yeah. last season the Rams were there. I played over there. Okay. Yeah, I've played in there. I, I was wondering what they. So they. That's good. They're. You can still use that stadium, the arena. Or it's not an arena; it's a stadium. Yeah, Monster Jam also. Yeah. Oh yeah, Ooh, Monster friend. Jam. Sweet. Yeah, it was a long night though. Those things, those yeah. premium live events. It seemed like it. Pretty <laughs> diesel. <laughs> I was fucking snoozing. Dude. I literally, I'm not a coffee guy. I was chugging a coffee during the beginning of that Royal Rumble. Like, yeah. what is happening? This is a dream come true. Being here, let me fucking wakey wakey. You're, you're, you're sitting there for a second. You're yawning. You're like, I need coffee right I now. Need, I'm, not, <laughs> I need I coffee. Not be, I'm not a yawner either. I'm normally a. <laughs> A pretty upbeat person, but before we were we're sitting there, I think it was like maybe two hours, forty five minutes into the sit <laughs> on the outside. I, I started like yawning a little bit. I was like, "Oh no, this never happens." Normally, the yawn for me is straight into the sleep. As soon as the yawn shows up, I'm out. That's when the body tells me, "Hey, we we're done here, pal. There is no more to be had in this particular day." I had to fight against it. I was lucky to do it. It was an honor to call the Royal Rumble, especially with Brock Lesnar winning. And I did find the energy, but I. I am not. I'm not good at getting in, getting out, getting in, getting out. Well, you spent the whole yeah. morning dancing at Wheelhouse. <laughs> True. Sure Your legs are tired. Longer, maybe at Wheelhouse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. You should have gone to Wheelhouse in between the matches you called. There was a, Zito smart. was like, we should go back to Airbnb, catch a little nap, maybe Wheelhouse, maybe too. watch the show, <laughs> and then come back. It was crazy. That was a long time in between those things. Oh, yeah. Long time. Shout out to Jimmy, Corey, and Byron calling a nice. Three four hour set. Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> it was a great show. Royal Rumble was a great show, though. AJ, a lot of things happened. Brock Lesnar got screwed by Paul Heyman, that son of a bitch. And then Brock Lesnar came back and said, "I'm gonna win the Royal Rumble. I'm gonna be in the main event of WrestleMania, whether you like it or not." And I guess tonight he'll be at Raw. Maybe here we go. Okay, I think tonight he'll be at Raw. Check that out. I'm not 100 percent sure. I think so. It's in Cincinnati. Are you going? Yep. Nice. Nice. You're gonna take one of these. I'll have to see. I don't know. I don't think I'm gonna make the trip, but maybe, maybe I will. Why don't you go and tell Bobby Lashley? Fucking, he got he he conned his way into the win. Yeah, come on, that's what you. Were Congrats saying. to Bobby. He so, but they, it's like they both won, right? Because he won, and then Brock came back and won the Rumble. Well, Brock got screwed, but yeah, he had to come back, and you know everybody else had to pay for it. But you're right. Congrats to Bobby. Congrats, Congrats Bobby. Bobby. It's not his fault. Roman did what Roman no, did. No. Not Congrats, to Bobby, winning that championship. He deserves it. Nice yeah. job, Bob. Thank you, Captain. Thank you. Did uh did Dewdrop win? No, she, she lost Lynch. to Becky Lynch. Um, yeah. Okay, I saw Ariel talking about Dewdrop. Oh yeah, we saw Ariel. It's Dewdrop. You did? Mm -hmm. It's Dewdrop. It's Dewdrop, please. Okay, I mean, it's use the accent it's when you know. Dewdrop. Have some respect. Dewdrop is very nice, very okay. hilarious. I've got a chance to chat with her at a couple of these premium live events. Very, very awesome human. Mm -hmm. The um, Ariel Hawani, we saw. I saw him out there. Where at? At the Rumble. Did you say hi? He was all upset last time he didn't say hi. I know. And that's like, I do feel bad about certain things.
you know, but also. He was working, right? Yes. And so was I. I got a thousand things. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I feel bad that he has not been on the show as of late. hundred percent on me as somebody that does send text messages to people to have them on the show. He gave me this whole song and dance immediately upon seeing him about how like I, we have heat, we have beef and all this stuff. And I'm like, Ariel, no offense. I fucking love you, but I do have like, I don't know. 2,000 things going on at the same time. I, I, I genuinely apologize to Ariel Hawani for missing him and not chatting with him for a while, but we got a chance to see each other, took a photo together. He looked great. He looked awesome. He looked fantastic. Here he is telling the phone, the video that I cut about how I have, <laughs> you know, cut him out of the life and I what? choose I choose the corporation and Dana over him and blah, blah, blah. Oh, oh, my God. God. That's God. absurd. I don't really know. We love Ariel. And then he saw Booker T coming in the hallway and he ran. Well, that, that potentially did happen smart. but i mean that's a smart move by him yeah, yeah. i would have done the same thing but yeah nothing but love it was good to see him you know it's good to see him those days there's a lot of shit going on you know especially with life i can know? imagine ariel's good man didn't he, did he interview him after people wrestled or what was he doing i saw him doing some interviews with people i'm not 100 sure i saw him in between matches he was yeah. in the back about to go do something for bt sport mm -hmm. so okay. i'm not sure i think it's after the matches he does the follow-up interviews Okay. Yeah, Ariel's a pro. You know that. He is pro. I mean, he was saying stuff that I I didn't feel was accurate about us like banning him off the show right, and stuff I was like that. Off guard as well. Me too. I didn't know. I was like excited to see him. I'm like, Ariel, what's up, dude? And it was like a bombardment of like, like you son of a bitch. Not really, but uh, it was I like, apologize to him for the New Year's video. I said, that's on not on purpose. Yeah, oh yeah, these oh, well, things aren't on purpose. Made it quick. But I can see from his side how he could feel as if maybe something was going on. For sure. But also, Ariel, we got a hundred things going on over here. Playoff football right now. Yeah, it's football, yeah. bro. And also conversations with a lot of people going on. You know, Come on. we're building a fucking igloo. I mean, there's just a lot going on. Mm -hmm. We apologize. Can't wait to have Ariel back. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. If he'll join us. If he'll yeah. join yeah. us. Yeah. Uh, big thanks to Shregs, Darius Butler, Ian Rappaport, all of you for watching. Boys, had a great day. You guys crushed it today. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, you Pat. Pat. Thank you. Thank you, AJ. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. I got to sign that. You. I need I need to send the uh, yeah, baby go. belt to you. So. Yeah, we like to get things accomplished. And we don't know about the final score thing. Somebody will go through that today to see if anybody got it right in the Feel Good Friday. I assume somebody got it right. That yeah. was a pretty basic score there at the end of that. Uh, those games. We can't thank... The fine people who spend their day-to-day -day with us, enough. I mean, you're really good folks. We have the opportunity to do the dumbest things of all time. For instance, we gave away a couple Super Bowl tickets, oh. a flight, and a hotel today because Ticket Stooge came through. Let's yeah. go. I mean, how thank cool you, is that? Stooge. That's very, very cool that we get to do that. That's very awesome. Now, to yeah, thank you, Stooge. You're right. Thank you, Stooge. <laughs> to, get the, to get this whole thing and to potentially win two big game tickets – uh, flights to ho uh, and hotels to Los Angeles. All you got to do is download the SeatGeek app. Mm -hmm. Right. That's right. one step. Download the SeatGeek app. Go to the promo code section of the app. Type in, thank you, SeatGeek. T-H-A-N-K-Y-E-W-S-E-A-T-G-E-E-K. Screenshot once you've typed that in. Then you tweet that screenshot with the hashtag PMS. Thank you, SeatGeek. No spaces. You automatically be entered to potentially win the two tickets to the big game, the flight, and the hotel. I can't thank you all enough. You're the fucking best humans on earth. We'll be back manana with a Tuesday. Uh, I have you talked to Aaron? Yeah, about what? Life. Like if he's coming on tomorrow? No, no, just life. Yeah, I've chatted with him more. He has an answer in my text. I mean, I didn't sit there and yeah. I'm not. Oh, no. It means no, anything on my calendar. Is he coming on tomorrow? I don't know. I haven't heard. Should I ask him? Yeah, you should ask him. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would. Maybe ask. he wants to come on. We don't know. Maybe that's what I'm saying. Maybe you just send a little. Can't hurt to ask. You're right. Steve yeah. Jobs said that. Yeah, he did. Mm -hmm. He also yeah. said, "Hey Tim, let's fucking keep up the yeah. legacy of Apple not sucking, please." Tim said, "Nope, I'm going to take all the ports out and make you buy dongles and make your phone not work." <laughs> and I'm also going to get 149 billion in revenue every yeah. quarter, and your phone's going to work worse than it did before we made all this money. How's that even happen? Figure it. Camera's out. sweet though. Camera is sweet. Camera Cinematic is, sweet. is sick. Dude. Hell yeah. yeah. God, it's so sick. Just like who's blurry? Mm, you? Yeah. No. No. Edit. Uh -uh. Me. Oh. Yeah. I know Steve made the camera. Jobs? Yeah. Well, On yeah. his last day? Yeah. He yeah. said 8K. Thank you. <laughs> we need 8K. <laughs> Make it now. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> yep. Well, thank you to him for doing that. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you, you Jobs. Thank you, Steve. <laughs>
Why does this? Fa- we'll talk more about it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know what Great you think. Tease. Let us know what Aaron Rodgers is thinking for tomorrow. We do not expect him to come on. It is a Tuesday. Football is still happening, but we would never expect him to because he's no longer playing and it is his offseason. And he has a lot of decisions he has to make. Mm. He has a life to live. Yeah. That has rippling effects on a lot of other people. So he's got to do what he's got to do. And maybe you send a text and just see what's up. Okay, yeah. Might as well. Might as well. Might as well. Yeah. Come on, we'll see. You want to do that now or? Just see what's up. No, not right now. I'm, you know, I'm solely focused on the show. Well, oh. that's what, that would be the show, though. Yeah, that's part of it. Yeah. To see if he says anything. Okay. Uh, I'll mute your mic. There, I sent it. I just sent it. You're no, you didn't. Just on my call. computer. I typed it up. You got one of those Palisero oh, things? Oh, nice. Neuralink. What's that? Neuralink. What does Palisero have? Neuralink. 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 You know. Oh, yeah. They cut a huge chunk out of my skull and mm-hmm. implanted it and then put the chunk of skull back on. Who's they? Elon Musk. Okay, at least it has a name. I got a call from somebody who left me a voicemail. That oh, oh God, I assume you get these types of voicemails all the time. <laughs> what? I don't know. I, would, I don't listen. I would not listen to a voicemail. I like this one. I don't listen to a lot of voicemails. I leave them there. Like, hey, text me if I didn't answer. Don't leave me a voicemail. This one is right up your alley. Right oh up. yeah. I got four missed calls at one time from an unknown number. My phone sends them all to the voicemail. I left one voicemail, and it is a piece of work. I'll say. Send it to me. Can I do that? Can you yeah, forward you it? Can. Yeah, you can oh, yeah. screenshot oh, yeah. the transcript. So I'll send no, you. It's an actual voicemail. I'll right? send it to you. Uh, I forward a lot of voicemails to people. What if I it? get, like, you know. It, not as, not as my much privacy. Recent. This guy. Not leaving him a voicemail. Yeah. I'm not looking yeah, at anything don't. illegal. Absolutely. Do not leave me a voicemail because I don't want to have to listen. All right. Let's get out of here, dude. <laughs> the Rock stands with Joe Rogan. Oh, says Sager and okay. Jetty. Okay. Oh, okay. DJ. Great stuff here, brother. Was Perfectly that? articulated. Look forward to coming on one day and breaking out the tequila with you, says what? The Rock, the future president of the United States. Uh, oh, he's a kid rock. To you? Well, we know. He said that to we Rogan. Know, we know kid does. Yeah, oh, to Rogan. Kid stands. Yeah, because Rogan, you know. Oh, shit. This is breaking news here from Rovell. Hmm. How come, like, pomps are. Ticket stooge and breaking this news. Ravel, the OG in the business uh, Twitter game, says FanDuel Sportsbooks announced it will open up a two story sports book inside Chicago's United Center, home of the Bulls oh, and the Black. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, here go. Here we go. Let's go. Shout Let's out, go. FanDuel. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Congrats to FanDuel there. And Chicago. That's big. And Chicago. I mean, Blackhawks stink at hockey, no, no. Uh-huh. so at least you can go gamble on yeah. other teams. What do you there. Mean? The Bulls are amazing right now. They Bingo. Are. That's yeah. what I was about to say. But <laughs> yeah. the Bulls all oh, the way yeah. back. Hell yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Smart thought doing in that new Bears stadium. What do you yeah, mean? Arlington? Arlington yeah. Park. Yeah. Yeah. Did you hear Eberflus said uh, it's he, already to you. T- he already told his, told his players, bring your running shoes, boys. Oh, yeah. We're going to work. Ooh. Hell yeah. We're going to run a lot. That's why he has a G-Wagon. Hell yeah. That's right. And you don't. <laughs> Mm. Those are very don't. hard to find these days, by the way. Yeah. Well, and the Chiefs. Bears just have five and six of those just hanging out. Yeah, like Eberflus has one for Monday, one for Tuesday. What? What? One for Victory Monday. So what? One, one for, oh, shit, we're getting fired Tuesday. So no. What? No. Yeah, that, that one's a tough one. That one's a tough one. That one kind of bleh, 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 rattles around a little mm. bit. All right, f- Hammer Down da. is in 15 minutes. Uh, 20 minutes, probably. How? 4 o'clock? 20, 341? 20. Yeah, I can only schedule. 4 o'clock Eastern, YouTube.com forward slash Hammer Down. Hey, AJ, somebody wanted us to put a live event on our show, or on our page for 10 days at the top of our YouTube page. We did some research. Nobody has ever done that in the history of YouTube, <laughs> and it's not something we will do, but... That's groundbreaking stuff, though. Well, if the ground is bad advice. Shinigami? Who? <laughs> See, that is that is something. If it, if Shinigami was involved, maybe I'd Ten this, days. That'd be one thing. Ten days of Shinigami up at the top of our YouTube page. I mean, that is that would do the numbers or whatever. Hmm. We have something sweet happening Super Bowl weekend, but it's not necessarily just with us. There is, you know, a collab of sorts. Mm-hmm. You know, that we're here every day and they are not. They seem to have all the answers. Interesting how that works. <laughs> that's always... That's well, always I can't wait. I can't yeah. wait to hear the details of that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good at these conversations, too. You know, these are things that I'm really good at, you know? <laughs> yeah, you've proven that I should listen to you, for sure. So I'll do that. I'll treat you with the same respect I would treat somebody that actually knows the place. But, yeah, I'm good at that. I'm sure we'll work again together at some point. Yeah, at some yeah. point. I doubt it. Maybe. Maybe not. 
write it down. Let's get out of here. <laughs> See you tomorrow. <laughs>